All right, this should be working. Ah, so for all the uh, recording watchers later on, uh, this is a little bit late. This is about two hours late, but technically speaking, it's only about one hour, 30 minutes later than I expected because I, I ended up staying up super late to get the prep work for this stuff done, among other things. Uh, so I played poker with my guild last night until like literally four in the morning. And then, uh, I did like a decent amount of prep and Noxorama's farming while I was getting that done. And then, you know, I had some other things I needed to get done and it ended up being like 8am or 9am by the time I actually managed to, uh, like go to sleep. So I'm still like relatively low on sleep, but I got, you know, three, four hours, which I suppose isn't the end of the world. And then I... Uh, had to make the thumbnail, because I did, I forgot to make the thumbnail before I uh, went to sleep, which I forgot about. So that took me like an extra hour longer than I planned, but you know, not too bad overall, especially considering all of the prep work for this run is already done. Don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, once, you know, people join in, we can start pretty quickly. Oh my goodness, you're 30 seconds late. Yeah, you joined really fast. A bunch of people just joined really fast. Uh... I piss my pants said good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Nice name. Um, I'm checking. Uh, I sold Yusa's Hardy Stay. I'm checking mail on these characters. Um, one thing though for for Guild Poker last night because that's something that I've talked about before. Um, I, like the first time that I joined it last weekend. I think it was during my. Was it during my Rep Pally run where I talked about uh, poker? I'm pretty sure it was, because that was, like, the first run that I did. This is the warrior that we'll be using. So I still need to mail stuff over, which we'll do in a second. Um, but, yeah, I think it was during the Rep Pally run where I talked about that. And the first time I played poker last weekend, I lost 600k. Um, and I, I had been up at one point, but then I just... You know, I kept getting into bad hands and just kind of overplaying and stuff like that. And I just made a lot of mistakes. But I continued doing research. And I did, I spent a ton of time this past week, you know, studying poker theory and stuff like that. And understanding, like, you know, how to improve, like, which hands are good and whatnot. And I'll, uh, I'll hop on my Demon Hunter. Unpel said, glad to see you live. Love your content. Thanks for your good work. Uh, glad to hear you enjoy it. Uh, you've used my 10 to 60 guide over four times now, and you can't thank me enough for it. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear that it's been helpful for you guys. Hmm. I drank this coffee way too fast. Oh my god, I like burned the shit out of my throat. Okay. I'm still... I made my coffee, right? But I haven't um, finished drinking it, so... Still trying to get that done and get like the, the mailing and stuff over. But, reason I'm on my Demon Hunter is I have unread mail from Void Poker, and Void is uh, the name of my guild that I joined, right? So they they have an entire bank alt, or one of the officers is a bank alt, called Void Poker that he specifically uses to do, like, payouts and stuff. And I made... Uh, well, technically, I the buy-in is 200k. So I am getting mailed 500k, but I, I made, like, roughly 300k because... 200k of this was my initial buy-in, which I sent. Um, but overall, I am uh, one of three people that actually came out positive. So I think I am improving, right? You know, 300k, considering somebody else made like 2 million <laughs> that night. Uh, I don't know exactly how, how much one of the officers made. I forget how uh, like much he... I think he made like at least like 300k or something like that. Uh, but one person made something like 2 mil, 2.5 mil. Um, so in comparison, my 300k doesn't seem like a lot. But you know what? It's an improvement. I didn't lose money. I actually won a little bit. So I've gotten a lot better. And I'm still like, obviously, you know, there's so much to learn about poker as I found. I am far away from being like perfect at it there's a lot of stuff i still need to learn and there were a lot of times like even last night where i could clearly like see i made a mistake and you know either i i folded a hand that i probably could have won 
or, you know, I bet too much on a hand that, like, I probably couldn't have won, statistically speaking. But I think across the entire night, obviously, I played significantly better. So I am really happy with myself for that, because I feel like I definitely, like, all of my studying actually paid off there. And it, you know, it's just satisfying when that happens, when you, like, spend a ton of time learning something, then it actually all comes together. Once again, I same disclaimer as I gave last weekend, this is, we're playing poker for gold with my guild it's completely fun you know just guild shenanigans i do not recommend ever gambling with real money gambling is obviously really bad don't want to encourage that at all this is just you know something fun that i've been doing with my guild so do want to throw that disclaimer out there again hello ben morgan uh, Matthew said, by this time, since leveling is pretty much the only thing you do, following my guide tends to be the default unless you want to chillax. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people I know like to spice it up with different zones, which is why on my guide I have a few, like, bonus zone suggestions. So, you know, if you really don't want to do Gorgron for, like, the 20th time over, I can understand that. But definitely a lot of times when I'm just trying to get a character leveled up, I mean, I follow my own guide, right? It is fast. Leap Year Kurt said, happy leveling. Uh, thank you. And Infinix said, yo man, how you doing? I'm doing good. I hope you're doing good as well, Infinix. Also, why did I get pinged? Oh, my mom messaged me and said she's watching the stream. So, hi mom. Uh, let me hop over to my bank alt. We can start mailing everything over. So, also as usual, uh, we are going to be starting the run with Prot Warrior. So for like dungeons and stuff, that's like pretty standard. Uh, eventually I will swap to Fury, but I'm probably not going to swap to Fury till like late 20s, early 30s, because that's how it always goes. You know, we did that with Demon Hunter, uh, did that with uh, Paladin and whatnot. And that's just the reality of leveling, right? At low levels, no matter what class you're playing, if you have the ability to play a tank or healer, play a tank or healer for dungeons. Uh, just honestly... Even for low-level scaling, I, I I would say Vengeance DH and Blood Decay are probably the only two tanks that at very low levels don't scale well enough to out-DPS the actual DPS, provided you're not, like, doing, you know, Twink setups, Biskier. Uh, but as we saw, like, even Holy Priest outscale Shadow at low levels. Like, it just... Healer and tank scaling is kind of ridiculous. The only reason why Vengeance and Blood Decay just don't really is because Blood Decay doesn't really have anything damage-wise. Just in general, uh, they, they're they not the best for leveling. And Vengeance is really good when you get its kit online, but you don't get its kit online until much later on in the leveling process. So low levels, you're just kind of starved for any resources, and Havoc is just so much more reliable. But of course, we saw that recently with the Vengeance run anyway. Um... Spamming Whirlwind and being permanently at 100 Rage without Rampage is the only allowed way to stream. Yeah. That's the other nice thing. So, I can actually... I'll hop over to my Warrior real quick and explain the build that I plan on using. So, I... This time, it, I don't always have the ability to do this. Like, a lot of times, you know, when I'm setting up a run, I either... Like, my friends aren't around and I can't ask them questions. Or, like, in certain cases... Uh, they'll, I'll be speedrunning a spec where I just don't know anyone who actually plays it, right? Like, when I was doing the Survival Hunter run, I don't actually have any friends who play Survival Hunter. So, I, that said, I actually kind of know a little bit, so I kind of figured out what I wanted to run completely on my own for that one. Um, and then, you know, sometimes with the mage runs, like, I ask chat and stuff like that. Uh, but for Fury Warrior, uh, my main warrior I'll swap specs... I actually, uh, last night, one of the things that I was doing uh, that kept me up so late is I was talking to the two warriors in our guilds, um, who both play Fury, and basically asking them for their opinions. And uh, I explained to them, like, generally speaking, while leveling, like, the kind of stuff that you want to prioritize, you know, in terms of survivability, movement speed, and, like, heavy burst stuff. And the other thing that, like, the most important thing for me to figure out, right, is... What talents do I prioritize? Because if I look at generally like what talents people are running on Warcraft logs, or if I look at like a generic, um, 
if I look at like a generic leveling build, the problem that a lot of them have is they don't tell you the order in which you should be picking the talents, which in many cases is the most important thing. Knowing which talent points give you the most bang for your buck and where you should like beeline for, that is really crucial and a lot of times you don't get that information. But talking to the warriors in my guild and, you know, explaining this to them and then like picking their brain about like which talents are the best, uh, they gave me a lot of really good advice on which talents I should go for. So this is like roughly the build I'm going to take. Let me see if I can... Uh, I know one of them sent me the tree and then I, I generally speaking, I remember the order that he recommended. So for the class tree, uh, this is obviously a max level, right? So we're going to be using... Let me just figure out how many points I can spend to simulate this. Uh, I can spend 25 points, so I should have 6 points available uh, to simulate a 10-60 to 60 run. And on the Fury side of things, I should have, once again, 5 points available. So 6 points left here, 5 points left here. That would simulate my options for a 10-60 to 60 run. So... Top of the warrior tree, this is pretty standard. A lot of the stuff you're just going to use no matter what you're playing. Uh, so defensive stance, rallying cry, mostly to get second wind. Uh, now there's like a few options here. So the first thing that I want to take. What is the first thing that I want to take? Um, Furious Blows isn't bad. I would say the mobility of Bounding Stride in double time is probably the most important thing to prioritize here. And then I'm probably going to want to go Furious Blows, Sidearm, Barbaric Training, roughly. Uh, like these are all, there's a lot of points obviously that they recommended, um, but I'm trying to figure out the right order to pick it all in. Then Pain and Gain. Uh, after that, I can really go either way with Overwhelming Rage and Bitter Immunity. I don't really think I'll need the healing that early on, so I'll just take two points into Overwhelming Rage, one point into Bitter Immunity, and now I have three points left to access the bottom of the tree here. So, I have a lot of options. I think, um, one of the, like, go-to obvious picks is, uh, Reinforced Plates. That's just bonus armor, and I'm gonna need to take it to access Avatar, which I'll want to pick up. Um, I think Seismic Reverb is probably going to be useful enough that I'll want to take this. You know, there's a decent amount of times, or even if Whirlwind isn't your main source of damage, it's still, you know, this is free damage, right? And anytime you can get free damage out of a point in the class tree, you're usually going to want to take that. Provided it's, like, actually significant and will actually make a difference in terms of your damage output. And then... Between Spell Reflection and Leeching Strikes, uh, I would say overall Leeching Strikes is probably going to be better. I mean, there's a lot of points that I could spend here because it's just kind of a whatever throwaway point just so I can get to the bottom of the tree. Personally, I'm going to put a point into Leeching Strikes just because while leveling, I mean, you don't really need Spell Reflect too much. And then for the bottom section, pretty straightforward. They said Armor to the Teeth, uh, Berserker's Torment, and Dual Wield Specialization. Uh, I'm not sure which one I want to take first between Berserker's Torment and Dual Wield Spec. Probably Berserker's Torment and then just 5% damage. Uh, but that is what we'll be going with for the class tree. And that's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, Cheeky donated BAM2 uh, said, Can't watch right now, but good luck. Can't wait for the VOD. Awesome. Thank you so much for the donation, Cheeky. I appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy watching the VOD in the future. Uh, let me catch up and chat real quick before... Before I go over what I'm going to be taking for the Fury side of things, I'll just make sure I read everything in chat. Uh, Nizal said, Evening, Harlden. I hope you won't have to watch your words more than usual now that my mother is watching. My mom's always watching the stream, for the record. Uh, a lot of times, she'll, like, say something in chat, but most of the time, she just lurks. And, like, on one of the streams, like, early... Um, like, it's, it wasn't an early stream. It was, like, one of the first streams when I returned to streaming about a month ago. Uh, my mom was watching it, and she accidentally deleted somebody's message. And then, you know, you can't undelete a message, so she was panicking, and she messaged me on Discord, like, I think I accidentally deleted somebody's message, is that bad? Because she has, like, moderator status in the chat. So, uh, you know, she's usually watching, but a lot of times she'll just, like, leave it running on her second monitor while she's doing other stuff. My dad, too, a lot of times he'll do that. Stick your ground waiting for the talents. Awesome. Yeah, I'll get into that in a second. 
you think you met someone who watched my priest run? He was just spamming Holy Nova. I mean, hey, that is the way to play Holy Priest at low levels. You know, can't go wrong with that. Uh, Toonie Toon said, I wish I could play this game, but you're so overwhelmed every time you open the game nowadays. I think the thing about World of Warcraft, right, is obviously it's it, any MMO, right? But especially WoW, a game that's like this old, has a shit ton of depth to it. So if you try to figure everything out all at once, yeah, it's going to be overwhelming. I think with when I like, so I'll, I'll explain to you the way that I approach other games, because obviously World of Warcraft, I can't give a one to one comparison because I have been playing this game for a while. But whenever I'm playing like a different game, like when I was starting to learn classic or, you know, when I wanted to get into raiding in Final Fantasy or when I was learning Guild Wars, I like pick one thing at a time. And then I just spend a lot of time researching that one topic, making sure I fully understand that, right? And exactly how to do that. And then I, like, I ignore everything else. And a lot of times, yeah, I, I may be making slight mistakes in other areas. But when you're brand new to a game, that, especially a game like WoW, that has so much to learn, just focus on learning little bits and pieces of information one at a time. So I guess, let's say, if you're playing a Fury Warrior, First off, get your character to max level. You know, focus early on on leveling, general, just good leveling builds and stuff like that. And just get your character to max level. See if you enjoy the core gameplay loop, because obviously, you know, it's not for everybody, MMOs. And then once you get to max level, take things one step at a time. Like first, make sure you understand the core play style of your class. Like what talents do you want to run? Find a good build online, copy that. And more importantly, make sure you understand what the different talents do and why you want to run each one. And there's like a lot of great resources on that. Then you can start worrying about like your rotation, making sure you're pressing the buttons in the right order while you get some like gear up on the side. And then once you really have a feel for your class, then focus on getting more gear for your character and just focus early on just item level. That's all that matters. Get like higher item level so you can get into like slightly higher stuff. And then eventually you can start researching like, you know, what actual items are good like you know what do i want to focus on for stats uh what trinkets do i want to get are there any special things like you know uh this particular bonus ring like i guess seal of dearn is chosen for a lot of people is really good even at low item level weird quirks like that and i'm of course just scratching the surface here and giving a few different examples but just one thing at a time make sure you master like little tidbits before you move on to something else that's how you learn anything well Master one thing at a time and then move on to the next thing. Don't try to spread yourself too thin and try to learn everything at once because then you will always get overwhelmed and just say, there's no way I can do this, you know, and then give up. You're you're never going to be perfect at something right out of the gate, right? So you're, you're going to learn one or two things and then you're going to fuck up on something else and be like, ah, damn, I wish I knew that. But at the end of the day, it's impossible to know everything. And then all that you need to do is basically recognize, hey, I didn't know this. Uh, I should probably study more about XYZ thing, then study more in XYZ thing and get better at it for the next time. That's how it goes with all stuff. Uh, Kriva said, finished leveling Fury Warrior this week, super fun spec. Yeah, I've definitely heard very good things about it. I played it a little bit in the past. I haven't played Fury fairly recently, but a lot of people say it's very fun to level, so looking forward to it. Uh, isn't Spell Reflection better as you as it increases your damage? I mean, you are you are correct. Don't get me wrong. Spell Reflection in some cases can give you a damage increase, but not really. It's like, how often are there going to be mobs casting spells at me where it's worth the GCD for me to press Spell Reflection? Because, for the record, right, uh, Seismic Reverb, this is just free damage. If we happen to be in a situation where we're hitting three or more enemies, I don't do anything else that's special. I just get free damage. Spell Reflection is an ability, right? So you do need to sacrifice at least one global cooldown to use it compared to, I don't remember exactly what Fury Warrior's rotation is, but instead of using Whirlwind, Raging Glow, Bloodthirst, which I'm sure that you'll be able to find, especially while leveling, situations to press all of these. You're almost never going to be in a situation where you can just like press Spell Reflection and you have absolutely no other abilities up. And... The thing about, like, low-level mobs is even if you can Spell Reflect something, which, you know, like I said, probably not super common for a lot of leveling mobs that you'll get really high-value Spell Reflects, it's probably going to be a generic, like, Shadow Bolt that does no damage. And at that point, was it really worth Spell Reflecting? Eh, probably not. 
Like, you know, it's going to do barely any damage. It's going to, you know, not really save you that much health. This is all while leveling, for the record. Obviously, Spell Reflect has insane value, both in terms of survivability, damage, and utility in higher-end content. Um, but, you know, it's... Uh, is Spell Reflect in the GCD? Is, oh, it, it actually isn't on the GCD, huh? Okay, fair enough. I stand corrected, right? Um, spell Reflect is... Yeah, so a few people are putting that up. That That is a very fair point. I actually did not realize it was off GCD. Uh, in that case, yes, it actually has more merit. Um, I would say in that case, though, specifically, you're probably going to get more survivability out of Leeching Strikes, like a decent amount more, definitely, than Spell Reflect. So if I was leveling in an area that had like a lot of very dangerous casts, I could absolutely see Spell Reflect being important. But I think, you know, if we're arguing between these two, then I still think Leeching Strikes is better. Definitely a good point, though, that it is off GCD. This gives it a lot more uh, value compared to what I thought. You're late, but Spell Reflect is off GCD. Yes, yes. I, I am aware now. Thank you guys uh, for pointing that out. Uh, Let's see. Go Worgen for the Furry Fury. Uh, it'll be Void Elf. I pulled this yesterday's stream. Obviously, it would have been an allied race regardless, so Worgen would have been out of the running. Uh, but I did a poll at the end of yesterday's stream on what race I should pick, and Void Elf won by a fairly small margin. Uh, but Void Elf did win, so that's what we'll be playing. Hello, Gyro. Good to see you. Hello, Shalestorm. Unrelated, but I noticed you put Mage as the third best leveling class. Why is that? Uh... There's a few reasons. I mean, Mage is very good. So I've received some absolutely cooked takes in comments before from people saying that Mage is one of the worst leveling classes. And Mage is very hard to play properly while leveling, so it's definitely not a good beginner leveling class compared to something like Druid or Paladin or whatever. But, I mean, just go watch my Mage speedruns the past few weeks. Like, the, the Fire Mage run, I think, was really eye-opening. Uh, Fire Mage, Arcane Mage, we haven't done a Frost Mage run yet, but both Fire and Arcane, you know, when played properly, they really, really, really can level efficiently. Because Mage has very poor survivability, but Mage also has ridiculous kiting tools and can effectively do damage while moving. So, as a Mage, a lot of times you are going to be playing at, like, really low HP and just kiting around and trying to avoid taking damage. And yeah, if you sit there and face tank mobs like you would on a Guardian Druid or a Monk, obviously you're going to get your shit pushed in. But you just don't play Mage that way. You play it differently. You kite, you, like, as fire, you constantly, like, run around mobs, group them up, and then hit them with, like, a flame strike and stuff. And on single target, you get, like, multiple chain pyroblasts. Right? In Arcane, you just spam kite them with endless slows with Arcane Explosion and Arcane Barrage and just do massive burst damage. And Mage can just do a ridiculous amount of damage, and because of its kiting potential, it really doesn't need to worry about survivability that much. And in the like off chance that you're in a situation like Yetimus, where you are forced to face tank, Mage actually has a decent amount of tools um, within its kit to survive, like, single target damage. Like, if you watch the Arcane Mage run, I actually fought Yetimus in that run, and we just completely erased him in the burst window and had, like, barrier and stuff up, so I was completely safe. Relative to other classes that maybe aren't as bursty and still don't have great survivability. So Mage has a lot of really powerful tools. Uh, the other, the reason why I would say Mage, like, I've ranked Mage as, at least in my... Uh, the unofficial ranking, I guess, is kind of what I have in the description. So what did I put uh, in my Q&A in the description? I have Druid, Monk, Mage. I would actually move DK down uh, in hindsight. So let me edit the Q&A uh, to account for that. I would actually put Paladin in fourth place now. There's a few different contenders for after uh, Mage, but I think Paladin is pretty a, a safe fourth. Um... There's a lot of good options, I could see. And I actually, I think DK probably goes down even lower, especially nowadays with um, just some of the slight issues. It's not bad, but yeah, I would even actually put Warrior ahead. Let me just go Warrior. What are the other options? Uh, let me just quickly look at, uh, just jog my memory on what all the classes are. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm happy with this TLDR ranking. I also it's hard to rank Demon Hunter because of um yeah, here I'll update this. 
but yeah, so the reason that I say Mage is third, so obviously, like, we already know Druid and Monk are ridiculously good. All of my world records have, uh, with the exception of my first ever world record, which I did with a Hunter, um, but I beat it my world record very quickly after that with a Druid. Ever since then, all of my world records have either been with a Druid, specifically Guardian, or with a Monk playing a mix of Windwalker Brewmaster. So, those are two very clearly the best uh, leveling classes and specs in the game. Uh, they just have so much that they bring to the table. But I would say Mage, in terms of, like, survivability, mobility, and, like, overall damage, is on par with, like, Paladins, Warriors, other stuff. The thing that Mage has going for it is Portals. So Mage is, like, up there with a lot of those other really good classes. But Mages have, like, the Portals and Teleports and stuff, which is this massive utility for leveling that a lot of other classes just don't have access to. So Paladins are good. Paladins can't die, they have okay mobility, not the best, um, but they have ridiculous damage. But Paladins have literally nothing special as part of their class. Whereas Mages have all of that, and then they have this entire bonus feature of being able to teleport to major cities and not have to worry about travel time, which that is something you do need to take into account when it comes to leveling speed. So Mages are very, very good for leveling if they're played properly. Uh, thanks for the insight, no problem. You're watching, or you're leveling a mage now, and it makes you want to watch my VOD FOMO on live. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, for you, that's M plus and raid. Still haven't broken out of just playing M plus and raid. I mean, I mostly play M plus and raid. So, yeah. Uh, after the 10 to 60 talents, can you drop the 60 to 70 talents too? Well, I would say for 60 to 70, if you are spending these last few points, that much is fairly straightforward. You just take Thunderous or... And then I guess put one point on the Cruel Strikes. So yeah, if you were leveling up to 70, you would just go down the Thunderous War thing. That's uh, pretty straightforward for leveling. Uh, but obviously, while doing 10 to 60, we won't have enough points to take this. But yeah, that's a good point. I, I should probably at least elaborate on that for anyone looking to get the entire thing. How do you eat in an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. Don't be afraid to try everything because you might find something you weren't expecting to like. Definitely good advice. Yeah. The advice of chunking has saved your life? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Oxy said, I'm still trying to relearn everything after quitting before Kata. The game has changed a lot since then, so yeah, it's going to take you some time. But I think it's worth it, learning all of the stuff. Personally, I think World of Warcraft's a fun game, even still. Though, if you read some of like the absolutely deranged takes in some of my YouTube comment sections, maybe people will convince you that the game is absolutely dead and is just like, you know, the people playing it are idiots. I You get some weird people in the comment sections who are just diehard classic players and feel the need to like yell at people for enjoying retail. It's weird. But personally, I still think the game's fun, obviously. Uh, Fury goes very hard in M+, right now. Very underrated. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hello, Taro Thurius. With the right talents, Fury moves like crazy. There's a PvP talent that allows you to reuse Heroic Leap three seconds after jumping. Yeah, I should note, for PvP talents, I'm going to take... Um, let me check what level you get these at, because I need to figure out the order in which I'll take all this stuff. Um, so, Death Wish is at 20, so that's what I'll be taking first. Then... the check Wowhead. Uh, yeah, then I'll be taking... Battle Trance, actually, or no, no, that's not the right one. Blood Rage, I think. And then Barbarian. Unfortunately, this one you don't get until level 33. So, in theory, I could swap to it the moment I hit 33, but it won't be available when I unlock the second PvP talent slot. So, I might just wait until level 40, the, that talent slot, to pick it. But that's definitely a really good one. Death Wish, obviously, you just get free damage. Um, it's at the cost of your health, but if you're playing correctly... You should theoretically be able to heal back the damage you're spending on this, and stacking 10% damage increase is just good, right? You know, can't complain about that. Uh, this is weird. You logged off in Rogue and got a prompt to accept the WoW social contract. Yeah, that happens sometimes. I don't think they changed anything. I think randomly you'll just be prompted to accept the social contract. That happened to me yesterday. What were the other race options? Uh, I think Maghar Orc... Uh, I asked in chat, I basically said, chat, give me four different allied races, and then the first four that people typed, I just threw in a poll. Uh, so Void Elf was one of them, Dark Iron was another, oh yeah, it was, uh, Void Elf, Dark Iron, Volpera, and Maghar were the first four that people typed, so those were the options. 
And Maghar was in second place, but Void Elf won. You love mage leveling, been playing mage since 2004, arcane for leveling? Yeah. At low levels, arcane is the very clear winner. So up to level 30, arcane is far and away the best mage leveling spec. I haven't tested frost yet. I've heard mixed things about frost at lower levels, but having tested fire at higher levels, when you actually get fire's kit online, it is as good, if not better, than arcane. The only issue is it requires you to get a lot of the other talents, whereas arcane is literally just spam two buttons, and that's it. And you get those at, like, level 11. So, yeah, arcane is very, very, very strong at low levels. Have you done a warlock leveling speedrun yet? If not, do you have plans to do one? I have. So, I did... I did a Affliction Warlock run during the Dragonflight pre-patch, so it was a while ago, uh, but I did do that one Warlock run. That was actually the first time I leveled up a Warlock to max level ever. I had not played a Warlock before then. I have, I, I mean, I've been trying to do a Warlock run, or at least I've put the option out there. Uh, in the poll for this stream, which if you don't know, I usually poll these streams, if you haven't seen that. Uh, it'll be on my YouTube channel, um, so I'll also post about it in my Discord. So if you check my community posts, like every week, there'll usually be a poll for the next stream. Or you can just, you know, if you join my Discord, I'll include a link to it there whenever I post it. Uh, so this past week, the options were Fury Warrior, Subtlety Rogue, Destruction Warlock, and Balance Druid. Uh, we're down to just those four options. And obviously Fury won that, uh, but Sub Rogue was close behind. I actually think, unfortunately, Destruction Warlock came in last, I'm pretty sure. So I will be doing a Destruction Warlock run eventually, but at this rate, it may end up being the last of those four options that I do because people just aren't voting for it. Uh, so I have a feeling that when I post the poll for next week, which is going to be the same thing, uh, minus Fury Warrior, of course, it'll be between Balance Druid, uh, Destro Lock, and Sub Rogue. Sub is probably going to win because it was very close this week as well. Uh, who knows, though? I mean, I've seen some upsets like that before. Uh, but then, at that point, I guess between Destro Lock and Balance, it'll be a toss-up, and whichever loses will still get a run eventually, it just, it'll end up being the last one that I do. Because I will eventually do a run with every single spec. Uh, my plan for Demonology is Demonology will get a 40-60 to 60 run, so I've been doing a lot of 40-60 to 60 speed runs as a way to, like, test similar specs at low levels that then really come into their own once you get all of their talents. Uh, so, Demo will be tested. It just it won't get a full 10 to 60 run. It'll get a specifically 40 to 60 run to test its unique stuff at higher levels. Um Arcanosphere is the sauce while leveling. Yeah, Arcanosphere is very nice. Uh leveling a mage. Oh yeah, I read that already. Uh hello Nako, good to see you. What's my IO and M plus? Um I haven't pushed keys in a very long time. Like I pushed keys a little bit for, like, the first few weeks of the season, just for fun. And I got all of my portals, and then I stopped. So, my IO is 2,759. Which, you know, not terrible, but also not good. You know, like I said, I haven't pushed in a while. I got plus 20 for every dungeon, I got all of my portals, and then I just stopped. I... I don't know, I haven't, like, loved this M plus season. I also didn't hate it. I personally think i enjoyed this more than season one of dragonfly that's just my opinion but one of the other things is a lot of my friends that i usually push keys with have not been enjoying the season at all so i'm not just gonna like randomly pug io if i ever push score it's usually because a lot of my friends want to push score and they want me to tank and then i'll be like yeah fuck it why not uh, but that has not been the case this season so i got my portals and i just haven't had a reason to push at all uh, Eins Marcel said, good evening. I don't know who you are or what this game is, but you saw me on your recommended, so hey. Uh, well, I appreciate you stopping by regardless. I am playing World of Warcraft, and I'm doing a leveling speedrun. Or I, I will be when I get the setup done. Uh, random question, what are your thoughts on furry fury warriors like Worgen? Uh, no strong opinion, I guess. Um, I think the naming idea of furry fury is fun. So, you know, I suppose that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, no strong opinions. Bloodhoof is a dead server. Is that European? I don't recognize the name Bloodhoof as a server. Retail is super fun. Just got into it. Uh, it was a lot of stuff to do blocking you from the endgame, but after that, certainly recommend it. Yeah, it definitely takes time to get used to. 
Uh, Late Boy said, Hey, Harlden, what class do you think is the fastest level? Probably Druid. Uh, the casting speed reduction on Seed of Corruption should increase the speed dramatically. Yeah, Affliction is very, very good. I don't know if I would really, like, rate it above some of the other specs. Because Affliction is, like, it's good for a caster, but at the same time, like, a lot of the other casters that historically were weak, like Shadow Priest and stuff, have gotten very, very, very good uh, with the new talent tree revamp. So, I don't know. I honestly may, like, I probably won't stream it because I already did stream an Affliction Warlock run, but I think in my own time, I may do, like, a little bit of Affliction testing just to see how it's holding up now because I haven't played it in, like, at least six months. Uh, but it felt pretty good the last time I ran it. I just don't know exactly how it would compare one-to-one -one with the other specs we've been playing recently. Sub Rogue is fun. Yeah, I know a lot of people really enjoy Sub. It's, from what I've been told, it's the best rogue leveling spec. A lot of rogue mains seem to think, but it's still not great when compared to a lot of other stuff. You really wanted Fury? Awesome. Uh, Nicholas Harris said, uh, yes, I get to see you live. Love your content. High five from Denmark. Awesome. Uh, glad you can make it to the stream. Alexander Santos said, I play Frost from 30 onward and the CC is great. Feels easier to manage. Yeah, that's completely fair. Drop the talents. All right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I've been... I guess, uh, delaying the talents long enough, right? So, I will catch up on the rest of chat, but fair enough. Uh, I will go through the Fury talents. Did I already level to 60? No, I have not started yet. Uh, the stream only started 30 minutes ago. Basically, what I'm doing now is I'm going over the talents that I will be picking within the run. That way, I don't need to stop in the middle and explain my choices. I'm explaining it all now, ahead of time. Um, and then within the run itself, I'm just going to quickly spend my talent points and not worry about that. Uh, so, for the Fury tree. Going to be, obviously, there's a lot of no-brainer picks here. Enraged Regen, War Paints, uh, Improved Execute, because you need to get all the way down here. So that's pretty standard points, right? Um, I guess the only real options you have here are, like, this row. So picking between War Paint or Invigorating Fury, uh, I would say overall 10% uh, DR most of the time is going to be better. I think most people take that. Uh, Bloodthirst always enrages you the first time you strike a target, and it has a 15% chance to trigger enrage versus just flat 10% damage. Uh, this is one of those where personally I'm not knowledgeable enough on Fury to say which one, but like I said, my Fury friends told me Improved Bloodthirst is better, so I will take their word on it. Uh, and then Improved Raging Blow, this one they also of course recommended, but I would say it's a no-brainer. Anything that has charges is always going to be very, very nice for leveling. Just having uh, multiple charges on an ability is very useful. So for the midsection of the tree, this is where it gets interesting. Obviously, first you want to take Rampage. Rampage is just like a core rotational ability. You absolutely want to take that. After that, my friends recommended going to Improved Whirlwinds right out of the gate because this is apparently very, very good for AoE. Um, it's like it makes your single target abilities do AoE, which definitely sounds good. Then... The next thing you want to take is Recklessness, but you have three different options here, and they said ultimately you'll want to take all three of these points in the middle. But as for which one you want to go with first, my friends recommended Hack and Slash. And then after Hack and Slash, take Recklessness. And then they said from here, then go to the left side of the tree, then go down to Cold Steel Hot Blood because apparently that's really good for rage gen, and obviously getting free healing for leveling is really nice. So if that is good damage and free bonus healing, can't complain about that. And then they said from here, you have like basically five points that you can spend on a few different things until you get to the bottom section. So I think my friend said like Wrath and Fury, uh, he would go then Meat Cleaver, then he would take like these two points in the middle, and finally end with Bloodborne was what they suggested. Uh, there's like some decent ones here, obviously single-minded fury, you know, wouldn't want to take because it requires you to use one-handed weapons, even if it does give you movement speed, that like, no. Uh, execute type stuff I don't think is really good, uh, this one I don't really think is good enough to use. You're not going to be chaining executes enough to make Ashen Juggernaut worth. Um, Massacre is one of those where I can maybe see, but you know, they said there were a bunch of other uh, fairly good ones. And then I guess Raging Blow gains an extra charge. I could see, like like I said before, getting extra charges is better. But I feel like 
this section of the tree with the stuff it's competing against, like massive stacking haste, um, increased damage of rampage, which from what I've heard is like a huge source of your damage. I just really don't think at this point, compared to the other options, you can justify just one additional raging blow charge. In fact, yeah, there's like, I don't understand this talent, come to think of it, because this just gives you another charge, whereas this one gives you another charge and then has something on top of it, and it's earlier in the tree. That seems like kind of weird. Um, and then for the final section, pretty straightforward, they said uh, Critical Thinking, Ravager, uh, and then they said either Tailwind or Onslaught first. Both of these are pretty good. I think I'll probably pick Onslaught first just because if I don't take it at this point, I'm not going to pick it up until level 59, at which point I'll barely get to use it. But then Onslaught, Tailwind, and then that is everything from 10 to 60 specifically. Uh, now, since people were asking earlier, if you were leveling up to 70, what would you pick? Two points into Swift Strikes, Anger Management, and then I believe you would take the two points down here. I think uh, they didn't go over that in super detail because I said I was specifically doing a uh, 10 to 60 run, so I didn't need information on those. I do know for sure they said take Anger Management, and I'm pretty sure they said to take, you know, if you were going up to 70, take these two points down below. Uh, but I don't know the last two points for sure. So you could probably go a few different directions with that. Um, but that's what I'll be doing for the Fury Talents, which I think is pretty straightforward. It's essentially Havoc for Warrior, yeah. For um, Improved Whirlwind and Meat Cleaver, definitely. Um, you feel like your server is dying. I've been trying to get some boots crafted since last night. Yeah. I mean, some servers, especially crafting, if it's dead, it's just really hard to consistently get stuff. It... I don't know, Blizzard keeps designing things like the crafting system, which basically punish you for not being on a mega server, and then they just kind of perpetuate the problem of forcing people to go onto these mega servers to get anything done in the game by designing the systems in the way that they do. So, yeah, uh, I feel that. This is your first M plus season. As an H pal, it's been super stressful, but fun to learn everything. I mean, you picked a good spec to learn Mythic Plus with. H pal is definitely very strong at the moment, but... I have heard that healing is very, very, very stressful at the moment, so definitely going to be a difficult season to learn. What's the MOG on the thumbnail? Um, the MOG on the thumbnail is... Uh, if I go to sets... This is one of the sets I use in my Warrior, by the way. I really like this one, actually. I was quite happy with it. Um, I wanted to make, like, a panda warrior-themed set, because obviously my warrior is a panda, and I've mostly been using, like, generic ones, but I kind of like this set. Uh, but the one on the thumbnail is this. Uh, obviously minus the stuff. And then the weapon I used, uh, so this is the Mage Tower set, by the way, it's, uh, for the new... The new Mage Tower. It's the, the original, obviously, was the Artifact Appearances. Now, if you beat the Mage Tower on a Warrior, you get this set, which, mind you, looks amazing. I absolutely love this set, the color scheme in general. Uh, and the Tomb of Sargeras armor set, you know, of course, is awesome. And then for the weapons that I used in that transmog and the thumbnail, uh, where is my appearance collection? Uh, Two-handed swords. This one. Uh, Triumphant Blademaster's Greatsword. I don't know where this is from. I think it's a PvP weapon, but I could be wrong in that. I'm not entirely sure. I think, actually, wait, is this from the Trading Post? This might be one of the Trading Post ones. I think it is, actually. Uh, no War Swords of the Valajar make Odin mad. It, it was a toss-up, right? I was considering going with Valajar in that transmog, but I really like the Blademaster sword. That, the whole Blademaster, like, kind of curved sword design i love that so i just i had to use it i really like it oh. do i have any advice for people to get past that dreaded pug hump where all the bad players seem to be because it's too hard to brute force but too unrewarding for skilled players without pre-mades i mean my advice quite honestly would be to join pre-mades it would be to find a guild and find people to run with because there really is no great option of getting past that pug hump you either run with friends or a guild and basically form pre-mades to get enough score to get into higher groups on your own, or you sit there getting declined from keys for a few hours, which is going to be rough. Or, of course, you just grind through the pug hump, which sucks, I know. Uh, but the reality is there 
aren't many great options. Uh, your best option, the one that will be the easiest and most time effective for you, join a guild, find a group of players who also want to do M+, run with them. That's, I mean, really the only good advice because it's the only actual good way to get through there. There's a reason why, you know, it gets that reputation, you know, that mid-range uh, key levels where it's just absolute misery because a lot of people just get stuck there because they don't have people to run with, so, yeah. Uh, you notice the description only after your question. Hope you're not tired of the same questions. You're good. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Um, uh, hey, Rox. Uh, good to see you with Google doxing your full name. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it does that usually because if you just sign into your regular Google account without ch like changing it or making a YouTube one. Um, but good to see you. I know you said you were going to stop by the stream. Uh, Cheeky said thanks for the talents. No problem. Uh, Mythic Castle Nathria full set and Venthyr two-hander is Biss. Yeah, true. That's definitely a good appearance as well. Um, and once again, Rox, by the way, thank you for, uh, your help with the warrior talents. That made my life so much easier, being able to figure this stuff out ahead of time instead of having to do all the research. Definitely saved me a lot of time there. Uh, most important question that nobody seems to be asking is when leveling as a Fury Warrior, what transmog are you going to be using and what weapons? Oh, yeah, <laughs> literally just talked about that. Perfect timing. Uh, now that we've discussed the talents, I'm going to swap over to my bank alt and start mailing everything over. And then uh, we can probably start the run relatively soon, because like I said, I've already done all the prep. It's very strong with CDs. Without CDs, you feel like you're patting people in the back with your heels, so it forces you to learn to manage your CDs rather than never using them. Yeah, exactly. Knowing when to use your cooldowns, like how to get the most use out of it, is definitely one of the most important parts of learning like Mythic Plus in this game. Because with raids, it's kind of straightforward. You know, you at least with damage and tanks and stuff, or, with anything damage related on DPS or tanks, you basically send it on pull, use it whenever it's up. It's pretty easy to figure that out. Uh, obviously, it gets a little bit trickier with healing CDs or like with tank defensive CDs, right? Knowing when best to use that can still be tricky even on a, you know, in a raiding environment. But in Mythic Plus, a lot of times people are too worried about getting the maximum value out of their CDs. They're like, well, this is only a pull of three mobs, so I'm not going to use my three minute cooldown because, you know, what if I could use this on five mobs? And then they end up waiting three minutes to use their three minute cooldown. And at that point, you could have just gotten an extra use. So definitely being proactive with using your abilities in dungeons is one of the hardest like mental blocks for people to overcome. But if you can figure that out, very, very important. Um, how to do the Mage Tower? Uh, Mage Tower, you go to uh, Broken Isles, the Broken Shore, and it's right here in Deliverance Point. So it should be unlocked for everybody. You might need to do the... Uh, introduction quest line for it, which you start in Dalaran. Um, that much, I don't know the exact details, right? So if you Google uh, Mage Tower or Broken Shore Unlock, then you should be able to find like a Wowhead article that goes over it. My memory on that is probably going to be fuzzy. Uh, but yeah, it once you have Broken Shore Unlocked, you go to this area, Deliverance Point, uh, you talk to an NPC, at, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of players crowded around it, it's pretty popular all the time. Uh, talk to one of the NPCs, challenge the Mage Tower, and it's like a really difficult fight, right? So, it's not easy, right? If you're brand new to the game, I wouldn't even recommend doing the Mage Tower yet. Uh, you need to understand a lot of like fundamentals of your class and spec before you can realistically do it. There are ways to cheese it, like with time locking sets, but it still requires you to understand what you're doing. Uh, pretty well and if you beat the challenge you get a special armor set so pretty cool um the tos mythic version looks cool as well yeah absolutely i love the set in general and i think the the mythic version looks cool in some cases but i think personally i am a much bigger fan of just the red and gold color red and gold in general a lot of my favorite transmogs are red and gold so the fact that one of my favorite sets, the TOS Warrior one, now has a red and gold recolor. Uh, I really like that. The only unfortunate thing is it doesn't look great on a panda. So the reason I don't have that mogged on my max level warrior is because my max level warrior is a panda. And a lot of sets that look good on everything else don't necessarily look good on Pandaren. So I usually try to make my own different sets. Add dies to WoW when? Yeah, that would be awesome. I would love for them to do that. 
probably not going to happen. I think there's too many things they'd have to do to make us imp or to make it implemented, but it would be awesome if they could do that. Uh, spend your dragon riding glyphs. Your OCD is going bonkers. I, I mean it. Okay. I don't use this character. <laughs> This is my banking character, if you can't tell by the name. But there you go, I hope you're happy. Uh, Dragon Riding Glyphs from the last two patches. Since, you know, I haven't played this character since then. Um, there you go. Dragon Riding Glyphs have been spent. Um, I don't know when the Pug Hump ends 20s. You've seen Toxic and or Bad Players at 18s. Yeah, I mean, you're always going to get, you know, shitty Pugs, right? But I think by the time you get close to 20s, you can consistently get, like, somewhat better groups. It also depends on what time in the season it is. Like, early in the season, if you're doing 20s, you know, first few weeks, really only good players are doing 20s, like, in the first few weeks. So, you're probably going to have a better time at that point. Late season 20s, they're a mixed bag. It's hard to say. Uh, fifth week of Heroic Sark by and no Lego Sag. Ah, that sucks. Uh, our final evoker got their legendary on our mythic Sark kill this past week, so we finally have all of that set up. So that's good. Um, Rock said, my recommendation on DPS Warrior, always full send your CDs, never hold it because um, it'll be up for everything. I think the person that you're responding to was playing Holy Paladin. I Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. Uh, I might be losing track of who said what in chat. Uh, it's trial and error and comes with experience you won't learn if you don't fail. Um, I'd say it probably ends when you have a dedicated group to run with. Your friend is going for 3k as Augavoker, pugging into 23s all day. Think he has timed one key out of about 35. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's just, it's like that in pugs. Uh, every key he did, he had people with 3k score dying to avoidable stuff, not interrupting things or stunning things. Yeah. Hey, Naomi, good to see you. You can read the prior messages, no problem. Uh, okay, so now I've caught up on chat real quick, so I can start mailing stuff over. Fuck, what it? I completely forgot what I named my warrior. Uh, Varisteria. I kind of just, like, YOLO'd a name that I thought sounded kind of good, and that's what I came up with. So whenever people ask me how I name my characters, like I said, I just pull it out of my ass. This warrior's name? Definition of an ass pull. I just thought, what is something that sounds somewhat cool? Varisteria, fuck it. That's what we're going with. So, that is what I've named the warrior for today. Let me see if I can pronounce that right. I'm tempted to mail over the heirlooms first. Just because... Oh, fuck. I, you know what? I'm going to write this down because I don't want to mail over, like, all of my leveling items to the wrong character. Okay, let me jot this down. Make sure I have the exact spelling. Okay. There we go. I have it written down. So now I won't accidentally spell it wrong. I think I had it spelled correctly there, but when you're mailing over 50,000 gold worth of consumables, you don't want to take any chances. That's the kind of thing where you don't want to mail that over to a random person with, like, one letter difference. Alright. Vera, steer... Yeah, there we go. Uh, so, as usual, we mail over the bags first, and I'll mail over just 25,000 golds. Uh, then we get all of this stuff. So, actually, reverse order. Right, I want to do this, this, gliders, gun shoes, ticket, anvil, that. Uh, then, what am I going to use the next amount? Um, I would say, yeah, at this point I can go with consumables, so... Do this, then go backwards from here, mail over all this stuff, and then all of the Shadowlands items. Uh, what next? Next I'd say probably the BOEs. Um... Then I can go with these two heirlooms, because I'll be starting as Prot, so I won't be using my two-handed weapons super early. Uh, then I can go with Sanguine Hibiscus. 
then Dark Moon quest items. Uh, then we go with heirlooms. Then barding. Then minor speed. And then finally the Dark Moon profession items. So, alright, everything is mailed over. Let me make sure I've caught up in chat before I start. A bunch of messages really quick in that time. Uh, don't stack too many of them. That is a trap you've fallen into. Yeah. Uh, 20s to 21s are the worst keys to do right now. I could see that for sure. <laughs> Full sending in and ripping threat. Yeah. Uh, would be funny if he sends the items to someone else. No. Thankfully, I got it to the right character. I did it correctly. Uh, is it an add-on that would make it autocomplete in your mailbox if you're using an alt? I believe that is Postal, yes. I think Postal is the add-on I have that makes it autocomplete, the character name, which is definitely very nice for something like this. So casual about 25k gold. I mean, that said, I'm not going to be spending all of this. At most, I'm going to be spending like 5 to 7k or something, but I'd rather send over 15k more than I need than only mail over exactly 7k and I, I may not even spend that there are some speed runs i finish and i end up with more gold because i just didn't need to use the gold for anything you never know it's one of those things where i'll always say better safe than sorry like i mailed over right now about like probably 50 to 75k worth of like materials and gold and stuff like that but i'm not going to use all of it in this run i may be going to use like 10 to 15k worth of consumables and then everything that i don't use i just send back and i use in a future run so I just, I over prepare because I'd rather have too many items than run out mid run. You always mail over one BOE item with the uh, first bit of mail when sending large quantities of stuff or very valuable stuff. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. For like a speed run, I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to clutter my inventory. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure I had it all like in the right order. But as a rule of thumb, you know, if you're not doing a speedrun, you're just trying to play it safe, that I think is a very good uh, word of advice there. Uh, <laughs> I just saw what Rox said. Jesus. Um, usually mail an heirloom to make sure, but in your case, I suppose it would, it would mess with your item order. Yeah, exactly. I did consider sending heirlooms first or something like that, but exactly like you said and, and like I pointed out, I just don't want to fuck with my inventory. Uh, did I see the data mined SOO heirlooms on Wowhead? Uh, is this new information or is this like old information? Yeah, it's old information. So I know what you're referring to. Um, I saw that. It, it's not official. Look, if they bring back Garrosh heirlooms, I will be very happy. I would absolutely love for them to do that, for them to do SOO time walking, bring back Garrosh heirlooms, all that fun stuff. Absolutely would be a huge fan of that. I've been saying for a while now that they should bring back Garrosh heirlooms somehow. So if the data mining is what people seem to think it is, great. But that said, I would take any sort of wowhead data mining with a grain of salt. Sometimes they find stuff really early and sometimes, you know, the classic example recently is the Fortnite shit, right? They had that uh, post about, no, new boss mechanics based on Fortnite coming to World of Warcraft because they found some data mined abilities called like drink a chug jug or whatever the fuck and then people started losing their minds over like oh blizzard's cashing out and doing a Fortnite crossover because wowhead wrote some like shitty clickbait article so while i would be excited take everything you see on wowhead with a massive grain of salt i don't know for sure if that's going to actually be a thing but i am i'm hopeful my website says it doesn't support https uh it should um, oh, yeah, no, I see what you mean. Yeah, um, look, I, I'm getting, I'm working on getting all of that stuff sorted out. Your browser flagged it. Yeah, it's, my website is definitely still a work in progress. It's not like super fancy. That's one of those things where, you know, my dad did a lot of the setup because, you know, he's big into like web, web development stuff. So, I mean, okay, my dad is in chat. I'm sure he can elaborate more on it. Um, but, you know, he's the one who got all of that stuff set up on, on AWS, uh, I don't really know exactly how to do that. Uh, one thing I know is, ideally, I'd like to make the URL look a bit cleaner, so it's not just, like, the entire web address, but I don't know exactly 
You're not entering any personal information? Yeah, so I don't know. I am not knowledgeable on that side of things, unfortunately, so I can't say for sure. Void Elf and No Tentacles? Yeah, I, I like the regular elf, like, you know, I guess, what would this be? The, um, Iborn Elves? Uh, without, like, any of the Void stuff? I think this is just a cool appearance. I mean, it's basically like playing an Alliance, uh, Alliance Blood Elf, right? So, I like it. Hi, Elf, yeah. Hello, Spicy Knife, good to see you. You do some web dev donation? I, it's not really donation, right? Like, I mean, I, I guess, um... Well, obviously, donations are appreciated. Donating money isn't necessarily going to, like, automatically make the website better. I think that's one of those things where it's more just about the time, right? The website at the moment, I still keep it updated, and I try to keep the leveling guide up to date. But in terms of, like, actual fancy website stuff, that definitely takes a backseat to, you know, more important things like doing testing, getting videos out, etc. Uh, so eventually, I'd love to... Um, you know, make it better and learn how to make it better. Uh, but it's one of those things, just time constraints, right? Uh, would love more content brought back with new additions, like Throne of Thunder with Throne of Thunder heirlooms. That could be cool, yeah. Um, free SSL certificate organization. Is there a reason for it not being HTTPS? Yeah, that's, uh, that is not a question for me, unfortunately. But I don't know if my dad knows the setup stuff, maybe he can explain. It's a static HTML site, no real need for HTTPS, but since browsers warn users, some non-technical users may shy away. Yeah, that's fair. What do I think of doing a speedrun with zero preps and no pots, no heirlooms, no enchants? I've done that before. It's not fun. I get that question like once per stream. Yeah, uh, I've done that multiple times before. It's not fun to run. People don't enjoy watching it, despite what some people may say. And, you know, I'm sure maybe some people think they would want to watch it, but... What a lot of people don't realize is that doing runs with no potions, no heirlooms, no enchants, it's the same run. It's just slower, right? It's like you're going to do all of the exact same things because the routing does not change whatsoever. So it's not like there's a special guide for like, you know, oh, you need this potion to do X, Y, Z thing. No, you do the exact same zones. You do everything in the exact same order. You just take longer to kill stuff and take longer to travel from point A to point B. Does that mean that the guide isn't still fast? No, you still do the exact same stuff. It just takes longer and it's just more boring, right? Uh, that has always been the case ever since Shadowlands, but a lot of people still think that, oh, this seems like it requires so much prep to be good. No, the, the routing itself, the zones, the order in which you do them, that has nothing to do with the consumables. That is just fast, no matter how you slice it. The consumables are just for speed running. Right? That just makes the existing route even faster. How much gold do I sink into each run? Eh, give or take 10 to 15k. For runs like this, I would say around 10 to 15k. Not a lot. Uh, for world record attempts, I will usually go a bit more. And I will maybe spend like, I don't know, upwards of like 50 to 100k. If I'm really, really trying to set a world record, right? Uh, but... I'm not going to spend that much just for, like, a generic testing run for, like, Fury Warrior, right? Uh, it's also kind of weird because right now I have, like, hundreds of thousands of gold worth of leveling uh, consumables. So, a lot of times when I do runs these days, I don't actually need to spend any money because I already have a shit ton of stuff already stockpiled from the runs I've been doing for the past, like, three years. So... When I was first getting into speedrunning, it was a lot more expensive because obviously buying all of the stuff and, you know, upgrading your heirlooms is very expensive. But at this point, all of my heirlooms are already upgraded, so I wouldn't really factor that into the cost. But, you know, initially investing in speedrunning early on can be a bit expensive, but later on, it really not that much. And you could go way cheaper than I am going, even for this casual run. Like, you could probably get away with spending 5k or less uh, in terms of consumables per run, and you would get, like, almost the entire time save that I get for my consumes. I still buy a lot of, like, fairly trivial things that is specifically for testing purposes that does not actually matter for saving time. Uh, it's interesting to see a little bit, but, like, by the time you get level 20 to 30, you realize it's the exact same, exact same shit with just a longer timer. Yeah. It's one of those things that I might do again just for fun, like, once. If only to get people to stop asking, just so people can see, yeah, maybe this isn't fun. But if I were to do another run like that with, like, no 
consumables, whatever, I'd probably put, like, a bit of a spin on it. Like, a few people in my Discord have recommended different, like, little challenges that I could do. So, I might do one of those, you know, and then kind of, once again, do no potions or anything. Just to show people what I mean when I say it does not matter with the consumables. Uh, but, I don't know. It probably wouldn't be for a little while. I heard you once say 90% of the time save is from 10% of the consumes. Yep, that's absolutely correct. Definitely still stand by that statement. Uh, Raphael Urqueda said, Hi, Holden. How is your Sunday or Saturday going in general? It's going good. Hope yours is going good as well. Uh, David Thomas said, Recently found your channel while preparing for a speed leveling challenge. Thanks to your vids, you're going to smoke your guilty now. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to hear it. That's the best reason to get into speed leveling, to beat one of your friends. Uh, but watching you suffer is entertainment. That's why you voted Subrogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like... Subrogue is more entertaining. Like, if I'm struggling with Subrogue, even with all the prep, that's, like, fun to watch. But s watching me sit there and just take forever to kill a mob, I don't know. That's, like, the boring type of suffering. There's, like, boring suffering and interesting suffering, for sure. Nothing changes. If you actually hampered yourself in more interesting ways, such as RP walk or having zones be randomized, one could argue it would at least be different. Yeah. RP walking, I don't know about that one being fun, but randomized zones is something that I will eventually start doing that is part of the challenge run format that I'm working on, so whenever I finish that, uh, that'll be part of it. Um, Blizzard said the same thing about vanilla, yeah. Um, Naomi said, will this be a PTR or semi-PTR run? No. Uh, the only stuff that's changing in the PTR for 10.1.7 is 60 to 70 stuff. It's specifically the Dream Surges. Technically speaking, you could argue that the time walking potion, whenever it gets added, could be used in 10 to 60, but you can't even obtain that right now in the PTR. So even if I wanted to, there would be nothing to test. So this is going to be 100% on live servers, uh, not PTR at all. Uh, my dad said pretty much what Alexander said. I know it can be done. Uh, my dad teaches this for a living. True. Uh, he didn't want to invest any more time than you need on this because, you know, he has his own job. Yeah. Biggest chunk of change for most people's already gone mount riding cost? Definitely. Um, yeah, it might scare away some less tech-savvy people, for sure. You're going to RP walk challenge personally at one point or another? Hey, Godspeed, you know, if you want to do it. Uh, wouldn't be cool to see if there's, like, tournaments people speed leveling to 60? I mean, yeah, I, I suppose that could be cool. Not something I'm personally interested in, uh, but I know a lot of guilds do stuff like that. Though, I, like, <laughs> a few of the guilds that I was in during Shadowlands actually had mini leveling tournaments, and I was banned from them. <laughs> so, every single time they would have leveling competitions, they're like, everyone's welcome to join, except Harlden, because, you know, that wouldn't be fair. And it's like, well, come on! <laughs> like, I spend all this time getting good at leveling, and then when I could potentially join a contest to win gold, I can't even compete, because everybody knows I'm already gonna win. So... Yeah, that's kind of one of the unfortunate parts about being known as a speedrunner. Whenever guilds do little competitions like that, you're automatically ruled out. People are like, yeah, you don't count because you already do this for a living. So it's like, fuck it, whatever. Kriva donated CZK49. Thank you very much. What a great way to spend your night shift. Awesome. I appreciate you being here, Kriva. And this time you actually made it early. So I think uh, yesterday you said you were never going to make it early to a stream and you were here in like the first 10 minutes. Uh, but thank you for the donation, and I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Um, it's good practice to listen to warning signs. Yeah, for sure. One thing you kind of enjoyed, but will never do again. Back in Wrath, when you were when it was current, you got a level 17 priest, the Explorer chief. It. Oh dear lord. Yeah, that sounds difficult. Uh, my dad said you all have a valid point on scaring people. We'll keep that in mind if you ever have a little free time. And yeah, knowing my dad, he's never going to have free time. If I get free time, I'll try to work on it as well. But I would probably need to ask my dad for advice on how to solve that anyways. So, Are they fixing dungeon quests in 10.1.7? Who knows? Uh, I don't believe they are. I think they still somehow don't realize they fucked it up. I hope that they eventually realize and fix it. It's just at this point, I don't fucking know, man. They still haven't finished the changes. It's just a pain in the ass. Aro said, you really love my positivity. I definitely deserve more subscribers. I appreciate it. 
I, I'm surprised you say I'm positive. I mean, I'm positive about some stuff, but I'm also, like, really negative and pessimistic about a lot of other things. Like, I mean, whenever it comes to, like, Blizzard doing dumb shit, I am, like, the most pessimistic person ever. Like, the moment the trading post came out, right, I immediately said they are eventually going to start selling traders tender for money. And a lot of people got mad at me, and they were like, ah, you're such a pessimist, you're always trying to see the worst in everything, and I'm like, just... Calling it right now, Trader's Tender will eventually be sold in the store, knowing Blizzard, it's going to happen. And I mean, I was fucking right, but, you know, a lot of times I will complain about shit like that, and people are like, oh, you're too negative all the time. So I'm always surprised when people say I'm positive. I'm positive about some things, negative about other things. I guess it balances out, right? Uh, you also got pushed out of a speedrun competition once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, will I do Hardcore Classic? Uh, yes. So I think I actually missed a message earlier that I meant to read and then skimmed over it saying, will I play Official Hardcore? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Uh, when it comes out, I will be streaming uh, the launch, probably. Assuming that like we don't take three days to re-clear, which at this point we're already re-clearing in one to two days. So as long as I'm not raiding on Thursday, I will be streaming uh, for the Official Hardcore launch. So we'll see. Um... But yeah, I've been really enjoying Hardcore. It's been a lot of fun. Today, you finally made it after many streams. Awesome. Uh, Guild is rewarding Discord roll plus 500k. Damn, that's a lot. The first and second level 60s in the Guild and Shadow Alliance, you entered your name and they said, no, you can't join. Yeah. Or you can join, but you aren't getting the rewards. Oh, that's lame. Congrats on my sick Demon Hunter parses. Thank you. I am very happy about that. I'm still rank one days later. It still hasn't been beat. So I'm probably going to hold that for at least the rest of this week, which I am very happy about. Would be surprised if they even fix 60 to 61 in 10.1.7? Yeah. You're being too hard in a small indie company. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I'm an optimist. I'm not an optimist or a pessimist. I'm a realist. That is, yeah, the perfect way to describe it. <laughs> uh, by this point, you're calling me a pes pessimist. I call it paying basic attention. Mad season. Yeah. Really like a lot of the stuff that mad season would call out for sure. Traders tender or or the traders post thing is sad. Yeah, I mean personally, like I said, I saw it coming, but it does suck for people that were really looking forward to that being an actual gesture of goodwill by Blizzard, which unfortunately I saw through from the get go. Uh, you've tried retail PvP, played for two days, and played healer. Have to admit that you're not a good healer. Did sixteen hundred and got suspended for three days because solo shuffle mates reported you. Wait, really? Wow, that is so fucking toxic that that can happen. Yeah. Well, that sucks. I mean, just another reason to not like WoW PvP, unfortunately. Uh, got into WoW a few weeks ago as a Fury Warrior. Glad to see you're speedrunning it. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of people have been looking forward to it. Um, that's stupid. Yeah, that is really dumb. That's not pessimism. That's the ability to think like an average Homo sapien. Unfortunately, idi idiocracy is real and they get to decide since they are majority. Yeah, absolutely. I love how you read every comment and actually make an effort to scroll back if you miss some comment. Yeah, I mean, that's the main enjoyment out of streaming is uh, talking to everybody and responding to stuff. Unfortunately, I know a lot of people are probably sitting here like, start the run already. Um, and at this point, I have caught up to chat, right? So I will go ahead and start the run. And as usual, so uh, like Late Boy said, I will be scrolling back and reading any messages that I miss. So for the first like 10, 15 minutes of the run, I'll be trying to at least somewhat focus because the initial routing can be like a little bit intensive, right? Um, but then once I get through all of that and we're, you know, coasting along, I will scroll back and I will catch up on any messages that I missed. So if I don't read what you said immediately, just know that I will get to it. Just we'll, we'll take a little bit of time so we can enter world here. Uh, you ignored everyone and still got suspended. I guess the reporting system's not well thought out. Yeah, the automated report system in WoW and I mean in any game for the record is just terrible. I don't think that should be a thing. You should have actual oversight for sure. All right. So close. And then before I interact with anything, you go ahead, start the timer, and then I can go ahead and pick up the Lyria quest. My Leatrix Plus does not seem to have auto accept enabled. So I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, Leatrix Plus, automate quests. I'll just turn that in. And... Okay. So now I can equip bags. Let's just get rid of this stuff. 
now I can loot everything. So, while I'm getting stuff out of my bags, oh, before I forget, real quick, edit mode. Uh, there we go. Uh, I don't have... I forgot to put stuff on my bars. Um, I'll play it by ear. Okay. Shrink this a little bit. Put this in the corner. Um, okay. That's everything. Fix my camera. I also don't have action bars enabled. Six. Uh, the one issue with um, doing all this stuff at the start is so I'm going to pick Portal to Outlands. I need to kind of get everything set up before I. Where is uh, mounts? Tell masters. I need to get everything set up before I actually queue for dungeons, especially as a tank. You know, that's how it usually goes. Pick up tailoring and cooking. Right. Then we're going to head over here and pick up blacksmithing and then use gun shoes. Use gun shoes. Uh, put that on F. Yeah, seven works. Uh, I have no idea where I want to put all of these things. I probably won't be using them at low levels. Uh, oh wait, I need to go mission board first, then take this quest. Fuck, the stupid profession thing is blocking my ability to click that. Like Legion, okay. Now, before I forget anything, use my XP pot. That's important. I'll definitely want to get heirlooms equipped. Um, and yeah, I, I just glanced at chat and saw Naomi saying I'm not going to be on Fury right away. So I don't know if somebody asked that. But yeah, we're going to be playing Brat Warrior for the first few levels. By few, I mean first 20 or so during dungeons. I mean, that's what I do with everything. Fury is going to be for questing later on. So we will get to it eventually, but as usual, for like dungeons and stuff, you always play tanker healer. Just how it goes. That's got that. Do I have a time estimate? No idea for sure. Heroes Callboard, smart idea? Yeah. Wonder who came up with that one. Uh, appreciate it, by the way, Azero. That was definitely a good suggestion. Very, uh, very big time save there. Okay, I got maximum buff stacked up. I can go in here, put this on my bars, also put the XP pots. Put this stuff, lemon herb filet, put that on control three. I already got swiftness potions set up. Perfect. I would say if I... If I get sub four hours, I'll be happy. If I get sub four and a half hours, that's like roughly what I would expect. So, I mean, I'll still be happy with sub four and a half hours. Um, but if this ends up being sub four hours, that's like very, very, very good. That would be above my expectations. But I think at around four hours is usually like a time estimate for this. That's how long it tends to take. Uh, what else do I need to put on my bars? I could put Lesser Healing Potion. I'll probably need that. At this point, I can probably start queuing for dungeons. I've gotten most everything set up. So if anyone wants to try and snipe me, you're welcome to do so. Pick Rot. Yes. Why am I not queuing? Yeah, for that exact reason that Naomi said. If I go into a dungeon and I have absolutely nothing set up, like none of my abilities are on my bars, I'm not really going to be able to effectively tank. So I'm trying to like get everything done while I go through the route, and that uh, that takes time. It's not the easiest thing to do. So... Check this. 
I have everything there. I can head over here and buy my Darkman Top Hats. Almost bought the wrong thing. Uh, Darkman Top Hat, there we go. I have a lot of tickets, so I can afford all of these. Throw that on my bar so I can very easily refresh it. Uh, I'll put Major Strength on here because I will be using that semi soon. Put Thermal Anvil because I'll need to use that in a moment. I got everything. So we talked to Sage. Ready to discover where my fortune lies. First two options. This gives you a 6% damage buff, by the way. That's why you do the Sage fortune. It's the first two options that gives damage. Jump over here. Drop a Thermal Anvil. And then we make four horseshoes and apply it. Make sure you abandon the Burning Crusade quest. Yeah. I usually remember to do that before talking to the Thralmar Mage, or in this case the Honorhold Mage, but uh, you're probably right that it can't hurt to do that right now. There's no downside to doing it early. And then can head over to uh, outside. Now, ideally, we get a Q-pop soon because I want I don't really want to start doing quests until I finish my first dungeon, because I want to make sure that I get two dungeons in before hitting level 15. That way I have a higher chance of dodging. Um, there we go. Okay, perfect. So all of the dungeons at this level are good. There's no chance of hitting a bad one. Uh, oh, fuck. I have... I don't have class colors turned on, so that's something that I will absolutely need to fix ASAP. Options, interface, voice show nameplates. I also still don't have like thunderclap and stuff on my bars because it's not talented. Um, but last colors. Let me actually take talent points into that stuff. Uh, I assume thunderclap is part of like the base thing. Devastate, I have on control T. I haven't done Louisville Dungeons on... Do I not get Thunderclap until later? It has to be on here, right? Or no, I guess Whirlwind is all I have right now. Right, whatever, it's still... Decent for AoE threat at this point. Uh, put Taunt on my bars. Somebody... Well, they actually didn't pull that somehow. Uh, heroic throw goes there. I will show on zero. I also just realized because it's a warrior run, I actually didn't need to mail over uh, War Scrolls of Battle Shout, but don't forget to pick Stance. Good call. Definitely going with um, Battle Stance and then probably Berserker Stance when I eventually take it. I forget which one's better for damage. I think Battle Stance is better for damage these days, right? So we'll stick with that. But at this point, whatever gives the most damage, that's what I'll be taking. Uh, everything else... We're good. What level do I get Thunderclap? It must be a talent, right? I think it's um it's in the warrior tree. Yeah, it's like right middle in the warrior tree. So Battle stance for pot, you don't even get berserker stance, gotcha. Um yeah, I would want to go down there to get thunderclap ASAP. So I think one more level and I could take thunderclap if I change up my talent points. And that is going to be absolutely crucial for being able to do effective damage on AoE. And the first couple dungeons of my healer is good. I mean, I'm still getting everything set up, right? So obviously, like, I could be doing more. You're not wrong. But... Uh, let me just change this real quick. Take revenge. I'm just gonna put devastate on six. Revenge goes on two. Spot flight goes there. So... Obviously, if I'm pulling more mobs and I can't actually hold threat because I'm not pressing any buttons, then that would be bad, right? So that's why I wasn't doing that just yet. But now that I've gotten, I think, everything set up on my bars, you know, I could pull more. 
in queue before the 10, 10 minute mark? Well, I mean, uh, you want to go in like as early as possible. The only reason I don't queue immediately is you're probably going to get like a anywhere from instant to two minute queue as a tank. So if I were to queue like right off the gate, which I could, uh, I probably wouldn't have anything set up and then I would be effectively trolling. So really don't want to do that. But 10 minute mark, I mean, I had most stuff set up by that point. Obviously, you can see here the dungeon has gone fine at this point. Just gonna run over here. Uh, if you cancel it and then queue again... I, I mean, I could, right? But... I also, I think the timing was fine. I maybe could have queued like 30 seconds earlier, but I mean, to be honest, that queue popped exactly when I wanted it to pop. So if I have a general idea on how long it's going to take me to, you know, get my setup done, then there's absolutely no reason to queue so early when there's no chance whatsoever my setup will be done by the time I realistically get a queue pop. I could, but I mean, it usually takes only about two three minutes and i timed it honestly perfectly i would say also here you want to press shimmer scale diving suit and stupid um boss is just i've never seen it take this much of a detour oh my god the scaling is terrible on these what is happening they do that much damage Holy shit, I've actually never seen that. Okay. Uh, that just happened. I did not know the, um... I did not know those mobs did that much. Restart? I'm not restarting. This isn't uh, a restart angle, it's still a testing run. That obviously really sucks, but... Hey, now we know. We have the information, so... Those fish do insane damage, never pull them. I mean, I've also never seen that boss patrol like that. I mean, I've done this dungeon a million times, and that boss has never taken that long loop all the way around the pool. So, that was just really unlucky. They also hit you on the Z-axis? Yeah. Uh, that is unfortunate. Uh, let's see... Probably set up something in settings to not auto-accept. Yeah. Probably. Doesn't matter too much. Do need to get my buffs back up. But... Look at Shimmer Scale Diving Suit. Yeah, that fucking sucks, man. Uh, let's see. What I miss with the fish, yeah. Um, also, at this level, of course, my mobility is shit. So that is, uh, that is just unfortunate. Boss was doing some laps around the water to warm up for the fight. Yeah. Unlucky. Probably need a key binding out on like my slot to restore your key bindings. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, oh, somebody pulled the boss all the way back here. Okay. Uh, that works, I suppose. Yeah. People have suggested doing something like that for, you know, speed runs in the future. I think for actual world record attempts, I'll probably look into that, but it's not the type of thing that I think really matters for some of these, you know, casual testing runs. But it's a good suggestion for sure. Leveling Fury or Prot? Uh, Fury at higher levels, Prot at low levels. You always play tanks or healers for the low levels for fast dungeon queues. That's just how it goes. At this point, so all the fish despawn after the fact. Or maybe we just killed them all? I think they all despawn, it looks like. And now that I have, you know, actual, uh, you know, the ability to swim without instantly dying. Man, I never knew the fish hit that hard. Uh, I think now I can catch up and chat a little bit. It's at least a bit more chill, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Uh, deleted message because of a mode again? Yeah. That YouTube bug still exists, unfortunately. 
Recently got into healing PvP. You really like it. Sorry that people were jerks. Yeah, it definitely sucks. Um, as toxic as it sounds, the community isn't dead, but a large amount of the WoW community is brain dead. <laughs> yeah, that's probably fair. Let's see. I'm trying to read chat while I do this poll, because at this point... I know I'm definitely far ahead of the healer, but I don't really think there's much that can kill me. I also, I mean, with Victory Rush, I'm pretty safe, right? So, even without a healer, if I'm ever in danger, just Victory Rush and we're good. Yeah, should be fine. Uh... Void Elf actually won the poll? Yeah, Void Elf won the poll. It was close at the end, but Void Elf won by a few votes. Not a ton. Uh, one of the largest costs in these runs is probably the Darkman Fair items. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially like Moonfang's Pelt and some of those are the most expensive items in the run by far. That's not even close. Um, you had a friend who was constantly enraged at Blizzard and you grew tired of it, so one day you just told him, how long are you going to expect Blizzard to adapt to your wishes? Yeah. I mean, I don't expect anything good from Blizzard, but I will still get annoyed and call them out on bad decisions. So. I don't really expect much from them, but that doesn't mean I I won't, like, keep talking about it. I think I've refreshed all my buffs since I died. I'm trying to double check to make sure. Well, hopefully, considering how unlucky I got with... I I guess it's kind of a mixture of bad luck and, like, poor planning. Because I got really bad luck with the boss uh, patrols. And then, you know, I didn't know about the fish. So, poor planning there. So, I guess partially skill issue, right? Um, but definitely kind of sucked that that happens. So, hopefully, we just dodge escape from Durnhold. Because if that happens and then I get escape from Durnhold like three times in a row this run... That's gonna really suck. That would feel pretty fucking awful. Uh, are you kidding me? Um, phone is getting called. I need to mute this. Here we go. All right, my phone has been muted. I always forget to mute my phone, and like the last few uh, streams, I haven't gotten any calls or whatever in the middle of it. Uh, but this time, of course, I forget. And, uh, yeah. I also think that barely got me to 15, right? Turning in those quests? Fuck. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Barely 15, which means, unfortunately, there is a decently high chance that I hit Escape from Durnhold. So, who knows? I hope it doesn't happen, but I would not rule it out. Uh, stuff like the level 61 chromie time and dungeon quest stuff still not working is, yeah, definitely really bad. I'm gonna be trying to get some weekly stuff done on DH Monk and maybe some 25 to 26 keys in Druid, so we'll be in and out of chat. Uh, but saying it now since it's still early, good luck, thank you. Uh, Chanderson said, the man, the myth, the legend that has saved hours of my life, Harlden, glad to hear it. Uh, do we get a pinned forum thread message again? At this point, I've given up on the forum thread. You know, I tried. I bumped that forum thread for, like, weeks on end. And, I mean, no, it, it didn't gain traction. Blizzard didn't notice. Whatever. I I fucking give up. Uh, how do you claim a quest automatically? It's an add-on called Leotrix Plus. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And take whirlwind off bars and use revenge at this point. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, I'm mostly caught up in chat. Also, I should be spending talent points here. So now I have thunderclap. Uh, I can also take devastator, thankfully. So I can finally take devastate off my bars. And now I think I have most of my core abilities as prot, which is nice. So we're going to XP buff. Oh, did I forget to refresh that? Fuck. Oh no. Fucking... Kashvi's fucking trolling me, man. 
Yeah. Well, there goes a draft of 10 lands. I already had my XP buff up. I don't know why you're spamming XP buff in Darkmoon. I have Darkmoon. I have XP pot. And please don't spam like that. Like, I get it. But, unfortunately, you did kind of bait me there. So, sucks. Um, I don't think it'll matter too much. I think three more drafts is still more than enough. But, yeah, I should have checked before I pressed it. I'm just so used to forgetting that I figured if somebody was saying multiple times, don't forget XP pot, that I had forgotten it. It does go away, but I did. I, I remembered to refresh it. I shouldn't have second-guessed myself there. That's why I was surprised. I was like, wait, I thought I refreshed it, but yeah. Chad Troll versus the Virgin Speedrunner. I think it's because I was on the, like, Stormwind Charger, and when you're on the Stormwind Charger, it doesn't show your buffs. So I would imagine... I, I don't think they were intentionally trolling. I think they just got confused, which, understandable, right? Um, but yeah, I did. I did have it. Uh, all my buffs are active, yeah. So we're good to go. <laughs> Don't forget to hydrate. Yes, I have a mug of coffee and water, so uh, I am good to go, but I appreciate it. How's the add-on coming along? Don't expect it anytime soon. Uh, I know people are going to keep asking for the add-on. The To be clear, I will say this right now. I've, I've said this a few times, but I want to repeat it to make it abundantly clear. The add-on for me at the moment is very, very low priority. Do not expect it anytime soon. Because people are going to keep saying, how's the add-on? How's the add-on? It's not going to happen anytime soon, right? I am working on it. It'll happen eventually. Uh, but at least in the immediate moment, there, like right now, there's a lot of stuff that I, I'm busy doing. Uh, so the add-on will take priority when I have less stuff going on. I missed two fins. No, I didn't. I, I know what you're saying. I didn't finish the quest. I'm not finishing the quest there intentionally. There's um, multiple areas where you can kill murlocs after this. So I pulled all of the murlocs within the area. I interacted with the quest objective. And then I went over here to pick up these quests. Because i got to get that done at some point. And ideally I'll be killing James Clark here. But somebody killed it before me. Uh, but there is plenty of opportunities to pick up the murloc fins after. Also, what is this queue time? Four minute tank queue? There's like no healers today? Kind of sucks. Chat, please. This is not his first time. Yeah. There, I, I'm gonna, I usually am not too picky, but I will say there's a, a decent amount of backseating today. Please chill, <laughs> right? Um, generally, like, I, I understand that, you know, sometimes I'll forget things, right? But it's been a lot. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll get the add-on done eventually. It is something that I plan on doing, um, but I think a lot of people... that That's the problem. I want to be able to talk about the add-on, like, entertain discussions. Like, sometimes I'll discuss, like, you know, something that I... An idea that I had for it. But then, because I start talking about it, people assume it's something that's coming very soon. And it's like, I don't want to just, like, stop discussing the add-on at all. But... Every time I bring it up, then people keep saying, oh, are you almost done with it? It's like, no, I'm nowhere near close to being done with it. I'm just talking about it, like, in the future, right? What is this add-on I'm making? It's a, a leveling guide add-on, right? It would basically be an add-on version of my guide. Uh, <laughs> you took two steps too far to the left on the first bundle of wood, yeah. Uh, how could I? Classic blunder. Oh, fuck. Oh, well, that was a well-timed level up right there. <laughs> I was uh, starting to panic a little bit. I think the healer probably had me covered, though. Also, I fully accept an I have I, and no idea yet answer to this, but am I considering auto-accept features in the add-on? Um, that's something I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I'll probably, if it's easy enough to implement, I'll do that. It's one of those things where, like, Obviously, I think Leatrix Plus is just a nice add-on to have for the functionality, so I think people should be using it regardless, alongside any other leveling add-on. I always did. Uh, so, I probably won't care too much about making all of like that special functionality, because there's already dedicated add-ons like Leatrix Plus and stuff for that. I will probably, at the very least, try to figure out how to do basic things like auto-quest accept and turn in. 
because that's the type of thing that, you know, for people who don't really care too much about speed leveling, they probably still will want an option to do that, just entirely in-house. So I think having something basic like that, functional, probably good. Uh, I don't really think I'll go too crazy beyond that, considering there's a lot of, like, add-ons specifically for things of that nature. I have the 10% Darkman buff. It's the Darkman top hat. Different icons. Uh, it's the same buff, right? Uh, both the carousel and the top hat, but it's the same one. Um, let's see. Pray for no um, escape from Durenhold? Yeah. I mean, so far, we had a chance to hit escape from Durenhold here, and I didn't get it. So, so far, so good. Uh, let me scroll up, because I missed a few messages while I was reading all that stuff. You've been trolled many times by people pulling the fish thinking it's easy XP and wiping the group? Yeah. I don't know how I've gotten this far and never seen the fish get pulled at all, but, hey, live and learn, right? Uh, hit 70 for the first time and you have no idea what to do. You have great vids. Uh, do you have one on fresh max level? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's... One of those things where the nature of an MMO, right, is that there is no one set thing that you need to do, right? So it kind of depends on what you're interested in doing. Uh, if you are looking for a guide on how to gear for, like, raids and dungeons at max level, like, basically how to get starting item level to hop into stuff like that, that I have a guide for, which is uh, made for new players, like, people brand new. Also for people gearing their alts, but, like, I... I designed the guide in such a way that it'll be helpful for brand new players, and then people gearing up alts will still find it useful, but I included some tips that, like, specifically new players will find helpful. So, uh, you can find that on my channel fairly easily. It was, like, one of the last five videos that I made, so if you just go to my channel and find, um, like, alt catch-up, or I forget exactly what I called it, something like how to get caught up on gear in Dragonflight or something, um, that should help you out. Also, did I... I opened the bag that I got, and I think it gave me garbage, so... Yeah. Uh, what can I spend for talent points? Heroic Leap will be very nice to have. It's all I can spend for now, and then I put that on, so... Uh... Yeah. How much on average does a run cost? I've answered that a few times already. TLDR, uh, 10 to 15k. That, that's all I'll say on it. If you want the slightly more detailed answers, it's already been asked in stream a few times, actually. Um, let's see. Blizzard is leaking employees like a sieve. I don't know if they have that much free employee hours to fix minor leveling. I, but he, So the problem with the leveling things is it has nothing to do with, like, I don't give a shit what Blizzard's situation is with their employees. Like... And that's what I got like a response on the forums, basically saying something like that, like, oh, you expect Blizzard to dedicate time to trivial issues like fixing leveling? That's not the problem. When you fucking put something in your patch notes, it better be fucking working. That's just like basic common sense. Like if you say in your patch notes, we have added these two features and you didn't because they have been broken since the very first iteration of the PTR. It's like, at that point, just what the fuck are you doing as a company? Like, it's one thing to not really have a lot of spare resources to allocate to different things, but they literally announce these changes for leveling, put them on the PTR in a completely broken state, did not fix them whatsoever for the entirety of the PTR despite me testing it on stream and then submitting bug reports saying this does not work. Then they released it to live servers. It's still included in their official patch notes that they were making these changes that still do not work. And then now it has been like, at this point, I think over a month that the stuff has been on live servers completely broken and they just haven't fixed it. Like that goes beyond not having dev resources to allocate. They clearly had enough resources to start the idea process behind saying, let's make these changes. And then somewhere along the way, they just forgot to finish it, but then kept it in the patch notes. Like, I mean, if they put in the patch notes that like they didn't have time to finish like the, the leveling changes and they were going to do it in like 10.1.7, fine, whatever. That's like understandable. But 
you know, making stuff like that, throwing it in your patch notes, saying that it's happening, and then just doing literally zero due diligence, blah, blah, due diligence to make sure that it's implemented properly. I mean, that is, I think, pretty fucking bad. It's it's one of those things where that is just that is like the standard level of Blizzard polish that we've come to expect these days of just complete incompetence, putting non-functioning features in your patch notes and ignoring it for months on end. That's just like fucking egregious, I would say. But what do I know? Uh, just submitted another bug report for heirloom scaling. <laughs> I mean, that too, right? Like, don't even get me started on that. Obviously, they can't even fix things that are in their patch notes, right? And then, then there's multiple things that have been broken undocumented since Dragonflight launch and they still haven't fixed it. That It sucks, but I mean, at this point, I I don't fucking expect much from this company. So, Do I have a list of add-ons I use? Uh, probably in the FAQ in the description. I think I've put most of the main ones. There's not a lot. I don't really use many add-ons. A lot of times I'll get comments asking, like, what is the add-on that I use for XYZ? And I would say vast majority of the time, the answer to that is it's a feature in the default UI. A lot of people say, like, how does he get, like, this bar, right? The health bar with the resources in the middle of my screen. I get that question a lot, and that is default UI. It is, um, I forget what it's called. It's, like, personal resource display uh, in the default UI. Uh, forget exactly which section it's in. It might be comp. Yeah, personal resource display, right? It's literally, like, the first option in combat. But surprisingly, I get a lot of people asking, how uh, what add-on is that little bar? And it's like literally just a default UI feature. Uh, been playing since BFA. What's the best way to get caught up in Dragonflight? I guess I technically answered that question. But yeah, I literally have a video covering that. So, Who has faster queues, heals or tank? I mean, it depends on the time of day. I would say on average, tanks have a faster queue. But as we can see today, my queues have not been amazing. So by the looks of it right now, healers probably have a faster queue. But... I think, like, if you run it back, like, nine times out of ten, tanks will be slightly faster than healers. Um, keep scrolling a little bit. Missed a few messages, so I'm trying to get caught up. Uh, your BC tank queues can hit five to ten minutes sometimes. Yeah. Like I said, time of day, sometimes you get, like, really shitty tank queues. A lot of times it's fairly good for me, but not always. So I feel like somebody just came through here because there's not a lot of Defias mobs alive. I need one more linen scrap. Um, there's one over there, one over there. I mean, there's a few over here, so I'll kill these guys. Head on ETA near Void expansion release. I mean, unironically, that is actually probably realistic. If I get the add-on done before the next expansion, I will be happy with that time, right? Uh, the add-on is a long-term project. My, like, I will say, I plan to have it done by the next expansion, which I know is probably not what everybody wants to hear, but I have a lot of stuff that I need to work on, and making an add-on like that to my level of, like, or standard of quality is going to, you know, take time, right? It's not going to be easy, so... I want to make sure that I actually invest the time required to make it good. Uh, the absolute latest that it will come out is probably right before the next expansion, or at least during the pre-patch or whatever, whenever leveling really pops off, right? Because the reality is, I get it, a lot of you guys want to level characters right now. Leveling is in like a slump right now. Um, leveling tends to pick up around the start of new expansions or right before it, or... Um, Whenever they do Winds of Wisdom, that's when, like, a lot of people are interested in the leveling stuff. So that, like, is my main target deadline for getting the add-on done. In the meantime, there's a lot of better things that I can be doing with my time. And hey, like, you know, I'm not saying that I will keep kicking the can down the road all the way until then. If I happen to have a lot of free time, if there's, like, an entire month where absolutely nothing is going on in, like, retail, classic, or, or anything else that I have doing, that I'm doing, uh, I don't know. In that case, sure, I'll probably work in the add-on. We'll see. Uh, but I just don't want to promise anything when I don't exactly know what my schedule is going to look like for the next few months. Um, please tell me it's not... Okay, nice. Slave pens. 
Uh, so far, so good, then. I've gotten relatively good RNG here. Uh, hello, Garrick the Great. Good to see you. Side note, you worked with the guy who created Auctioneer at Carvana, and he made a pretty good amount of money doing it, but it's a huge add-on. I mean, I assume, did he make it off donations? Because, I mean, you, technically speaking, you can't charge for add-ons. I know a lot of people do. And I should note, I am not doing the add-on for money. Which, I will say, right? I've said before, the add-on will not be paid. So, the reality is, I probably won't make a ton of money off the add-on, if at all. Because any money that I would make off the add-on would probably be from donations. Because I would not actually accept payment. Uh, if I do anything bonus with it, like if I decide to add bonus features that are like quality of life shit later on that I don't think is integral, I don't know, maybe. Uh, but I think anything core crucial to the leveling guide itself or the leveling add-on that would actually help people out, that's the type of stuff that, you know, I would want to make completely free. Which means I probably wouldn't be making a ton of money off that. I still want to get it done, but considering, you know... It's not like I'm completely financially afloat at the moment, so it, I can't just be, like, investing a shit ton of resources into passion projects that I'm probably not going to see, like, much, if at all, returns on. Uh, so that that is, like, very much a, in my free time when I have nothing else going on, I work on the add-on, right? But um, there's a reason why it's probably not going to come out for a little while. I, at the moment, don't have a lot of free time where I, there's nothing else that I could be doing. Um... Let's see. Uh, do I have a list of add-ons? Oh, yeah, I think it asked that question already. If I don't read your question, by the way, I will probably get back to it again. Just, you know, give me time. I'm still scrolling through chat, reading older messages, right? Uh, time for keys. Uh, got stream and second monitor. Hope for no escape from Durnholder Architraz. Yeah, definitely no Architraz. Uh, but you know, that one I usually manage to dodge. And the nice thing about Architraz, at least... Technically, it's not the worst option to see because the first boss is very early on. The stupid worms are really annoying because if they burrow into you, you're just fucked. But I actually don't mind rolling Architraz compared to rolling like Black Morass because rolling Architraz, it's a 15 minute penalty. Rolling Black Morass or Escape from Durnhold, that's a 30 minute penalty. So that really sucks whenever it happens. Um, to the fresh max level guide, you can look at guides at such. Harald Dimension is gearing one, but you may just want to explore the game at first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, up to you how you do stuff. Get straight into the content and gear faster. Just go for enjoying the new things the game has to offer. Yeah, that's why I said, in terms of getting into the game, it really depends on what you're going for. Like, if you have your eyes set on raiding and Mythic Plus, then definitely, I guess, focus on that. You know, uh, my guide will probably be helpful for anyone interested in that, but... If you're just interested in, you know, trying out new features in the game, then kind of like Naomi said, just throw a wide net, try a bunch of different things, see what sticks with you, and then, you know, spend more time looking into that, I would say. So everybody is, like, really far behind right now. I guess I did use a Swiftness Potion to get further ahead. Having good dungeon RNG so far, yeah. Obviously, the whole thing with the... Fish really sucked, but, you know, that's... kind of only have myself to blame there. Uh, oh. This guy cast Levitate on me. Uh, alright. I would have picked a different angle if I knew that I had Levitate. And probably would have gone straight for here. But I still was able to heroic leap to this platform, so it worked out. I'm gonna talk to that NPC, and then down here... Uh, will Blizzard increase the price of subscriptions due to inflation in the future? I mean, yeah, probably. They've done that with a lot of countries. Whether they'll do that in the U.S., I have no idea. I would say knowing Blizzard, that seems like the type of thing they would do, considering they've already increased the price of subscriptions in a lot of other countries that had, like, you know, I don't know, economy stuff. Who knows, though? Uh, leveling a monk in Feralist because it has a ton of quest items that you don't have for transmog, and the first mob you kill gives you a sprite darter hatchling. Ooh, fuck yeah. That pet I remember, so I remember that being very, very, very nice. That is huge. Uh, hello, Miss Millie 321 Am I talking about the chromie time at level 61 thing? Yes. Uh, that was one of the changes that they promised that they just did not implement. 
that and the um the dungeons for Dragonflight being automatically ac accepted. The Dragonflight Dungeon One is a little bit more understandable because that is, I, it still should be working, mind you. Like it's there's no excuse for doing bare minimum testing and just saying, "Yep, looks good, ship it." And then of course they missed a lot of stuff, right? That still sucks. But I can understand how somebody might reasonably think that they correctly implemented the Dragonflight Dungeons without realizing their mistake. Because the Dragonflight Dungeons thing, for anyone who hasn't heard it before, it's supposed to be that you can just pick up the quest within the dungeon. And they made it so there are NPCs at the start of the dungeon who offer the quests. The problem is, those NPCs only show up if you uh, meet the prerequisites for those dungeon quests. Which means nothing has changed, because the entire point of adding the quest to the dungeons is to let people do all of that without having to specifically hunt down the dungeon quests out in the open world, and to make it, like, easier to actually get access to that. Because a lot of times, you know, certain dungeon quests were just locked behind, like, really long, non-efficient quest chains, so it just became not worth it to do that at all. But because they forgot to remove the prereqs from the quests within the dungeon, it effectively has changed nothing, because anyone who wants to pick up the dungeon quests will still need to do the quest line up until the point where you unlock the dungeon quest. And the quest that you're being offered for that dungeon is the exact same one that you would get from the actual open world like campaign. So you're not getting anything extra, you're just gaining the ability to pick up the quest within the dungeon that you would have already been able to pick up before entering the dungeon itself. It offers absolutely nothing. The only maybe slight benefit is it um, lets you turn in the quest inside the dungeon. Also, hello? Heal me? Am I seriously not going to get any healing? Just one fucking heal. Thank you. I don't know what he was doing. Um, I get that this poison seems to be ticking hard, but he just did not cast a single one on me. Also, fairly shit RNG so far with... Um, the uh, dungeon bags. Doesn't really matter a ton. It's just nice quality of life to get upgrades from these, but I have whiffed on all of them so far. Leave. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find where I was in chat. Okay, there we go. I found it. Uh, did I? Yeah, I forgot to open one bag. Fuck me, another necklace? Ah. It's, um, kind of dog shit RNG, but no, such is life. Such is life happens. Okay. Should also spend my points when I can. Um... If it had been a small company delivering a product with not much history, people would be livid and lambasting it for months. I mean, if it was a small company, I think minor errors like that would be a little bit more understandable, but the fact that Blizzard's, like, openly advertising, like, leveling improvements and just not fucking testing them is just a bit of a slap in the face. So for people who were actually hoping for those leveling changes, it just feels a little bit insulting to know that they are so far down on Blizzard's priority list that Blizzard is willing to advertise changes that they have not even made. That just kind of stings a little bit. What else can I use at this level? I think the only new thing I get at 20 would be the Elixir of Major Strength. So I can drink that now, refresh my food buff. And those are all the quests for that. Um... What do I want to do now? I could set my Hearthstone to... You know what? I'm just going to use the Dalaran. I'm going to get the Dalaran Hearthstone. I'm going to use this, turn on more mode. And then I think I'm going to do Duskwood to make up a little bit of the extra experience. I don't really feel like Red Ridge at this point is worth doing. Red Ridge usually gets cut out if you do dungeons. Just tends to not be super worth uh, oh yeah, talents for, at this point, won't matter much. Uh, strategists, demo shout, best serve colds, uh, fast footwork. There we go. Yeah, that's probably the best thing for me to get at the moment.
And fingers crossed for something good. No escape from Dernholtz. If we see the Caverns of Time thing, we cry. I can also use Glider and Gun Shoes here, because assuming I don't get fucked, the healer may take it at any second, so... Okay, the healer cancelled. In that case, I'm going to use Gun Shoes here, because even if I get another instant Q pop, when the dungeon queues, I will be able to then get Gun Shoes again right after. So the cooldown will be up by the time I finish with the dungeon. Uh... Let's see. Oh, nice. Threaded the needle there. And then my uh, Heard this Tale Before. Skip to the Legion intro. Hey, love. Hi, Dad. Only fans at 50k. Jesus fucking Christ. Face reveal for 25k subs. I'm. I will eventually. I, I mean, I've done a face reveal already, right? I think a lot of people missed it, but I did a mini face reveal. Though that said, I guess. Does a face reveal really count if you aren't, like, then consistently using the camera? Probably not, so. I'll eventually start using a camera at some point in the future. Who fucking knows exactly when? Um, I'm not gonna put a sub goal on it. Because I don't want there to be, like, a certain pressure of, Oh, well, I hit this number, therefore I must do the face reveal. Because it's, I've said before, it is absolutely not something that I'm trying to, like, build towards or build hype or whatever. It is just anxiety, right? So... I will do the face reveal when I am ready to do the face reveal. No later, no sooner. Um, I'm not going to, like, delay it to hit a sub goal or whatever. I'm not going to uh, push it up because I hit a sub goal or whatever. It's going to happen when it happens. I generally speaking, I, I mean, I don't, I don't love the idea of sub milestones. You'll notice, like, I don't, uh, I didn't make posts when I hit 10k or 20k or whatever. I, I don't like say, oh, if you sub now and get me to whatever number, I'll do XYZ thing. I just, I don't know. I feel like that shit's kind of grimy. I hate that. You know, I, I want to focus on what I think is most worth focusing on, and I don't want to do, like, the, um, you know, the kind of effectively baiting people into subbing for shit like that. Uh, I've, like, jokingly said that 100k subs, I think it was 100k subs, I said I'll do a Mechanome run, but that's, like, more of a meme than anything. Like, I don't really care that much, so... Uh, that's the kind of thing that, like, whatever. I I'll do, like, joke sub-goals like that, but nothing serious. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it anyway. The unfortunate reality, though, is stuff like that, I know, it's, like, it's an effective way to get subs, right? There's a lot of stuff that I know I could be doing. Like, I know that there are good strategies to getting, like, more viewership, more subs, and a lot of it I just don't feel entirely comfortable doing, so I just don't fucking do it. Am I putting it on GitHub? Uh, no, I don't plan on that. I At this point, it's too early to say, um, but one thing I will say is I don't plan on... I think the main reason to put something like that on GitHub would be, like you said, for people to contribute. Uh, in that case, no, absolutely not. I don't plan on letting anybody contribute. It's going to be my add-on through and through. If I wanted to collaborate with other people, I've already gotten offers for people saying, you know, oh, I, I will, you know, host my, or your leveling guide on my add-on, and I always say no. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it myself. Um, I may, like, say that, like, if somebody wants to help, like, with mapping out the route or getting coordinates, like, that's the type of stuff that maybe, but all of the coding, all of the design, all of the actual, like, writing of the route itself, I will do 100% of that work on my own. I don't want to outsource that at all. Otherwise, like I said, I've already received offers for people to do that, and I have to turn them down because I want to do it all on my own. Um, I will be completely honest. I am very much a control freak when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, I I mean, I feel like I've been burned a few too many times in the past with trusting other people with, like, work that has my name on it. Not even necessarily just with YouTube stuff, but, like, school projects, right? Like, there's just amount of times when I would, like, put in all of the effort in a school project... And I know my dad's going to sit here and chat and be like, yeah, you've never put in any effort in school. But like for actual group projects, I actually did put in a shit ton of effort because I didn't want to let other people down. But what ended up happening is a lot of times in group projects, I would put in most of the effort, right? And then everybody else just fucking leeches. And I, I'm going to be honest, maybe that's like, you know, a bad habit to develop. But as a result, I trust fucking nobody. Uh, I am going to do all of the work myself because the only person who I can actually trust to do things up to my standard of quality is myself. Uh, so I will be doing all of it. 
unless it's easy things like, you know, um, finding like coordinates, right? So if I need somebody to like, I, this is what I said, I might post in discord. If somebody wants to go and get me the coordinates of like, what is this quest objective, right? That is just like a number. And then I can obviously go back and I would, of course, double check that to make sure it's correct. But it would save me time of having to go do all of it myself. So maybe I'll do that. If so, I would probably in the future post about it on my Discord if somebody wanted to help, which I'm sure there'd probably be a few people who'd be willing to help with that. Um, but yeah, no, all the other in-house stuff, 100% would want to do it on my own. And that's like no offense to you. I don't know how good you are at coding or not. I'm sure you probably are pretty good. Uh, it is 100%, I will admit, I am very much a control freak about stuff like that. It's why I have done zero collabs, zero work with anybody else. Literally, everything that has ever been done on my channel, website guides, etc. has been done by me and me alone. The only exception to that rule is my dad has helped me set up the website. That's it. Uh, is Leatrix Plus the one that lets you have the UI for your portrait i don't i don't understand the question about ui for your portrait not sure what that means uh let's see do i think the next expansion will be announced at blizzcon it, definitely i they've already been hinting at it for the record if you haven't seen it they've already said we're excited to announce the future of warcraft at the next expansion which like <laughs> i've seen some there is like a post in the classic wow subreddit where somebody read the thing of, uh, I forget who it was, I think it was Quick, who said the thing about, you know, we're excited to announce the future of World of Warcraft. And they unironically said that, or read that and said, this means that Classic Plus is confirmed. It doesn't even mention the word Classic in his tweet where he says that. It's just the future of Warcraft. And somehow there are Classic players who read that and go, yup, this must be Classic Plus confirmed. It's like, come on, guys. Like, you gotta stop doing that to yourselves. It's obviously them just teasing the next World of Warcraft expansion. Like, they always do that. And just because they gave a cryptic tweet about, you know, the future of Warcraft, it, it's always just... Uh, like, I'm pretty sure they've used that exact terminology about expansion launches before. Excited to talk about the future of Warcraft or, uh, you know, where World of Warcraft will take us next or all of those generic, like, marketing buzzword shit. So, yeah. Uh, I... I will eat a shoe if they don't announce the next World of Warcraft expansion at BlizzCon. That is, like, almost a sure thing. Uh, just popped in, what's the add-on, a leveling route? Yeah, I'm basically working on an add-on. And by working on, just to repeat for anyone just coming in now who's like, oh, is it almost done? Long-term working on making a leveling add-on to go with my route, my guide, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of guides that pay well, for sure. And I definitely don't want to pay well. You, uh, you have to develop a healthy contempt for annoying questions from viewers. Yeah, I try not to get too annoyed by certain questions, but I mean, look. At a certain point, I think if anyone gets asked the same thing, like, five times in the span of one hour, you're probably going to be a little bit annoyed by it. And, like... I know that, like, the people who are asking it aren't doing it maliciously or doing it uh, because, you know, they're trying to get on my nerves. A lot of them just genuinely only just joined in the stream, didn't hear when it was brought up the first three times, and then they asked the question again. And, I mean, it's why I have an FAQ, so a lot of times if I get questions like that, I can just be like, hey, check the FAQ that's already covered. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's whatever, right? The only time, like, I, for example, there was one time, like, a few streams ago where somebody, oh, fuck, I'm Alliance, I can't take that. Uh, a few streams ago, somebody joined the stream and asked me, is World of Warcraft worth playing? And I, I basically said offhandedly, like, what a stupid question, <laughs> you know, like, what do you want me to say? Yes, you know, I'm playing World of Warcraft. I've been playing World of Warcraft for years. I make World of Warcraft videos. You're asking the World of Warcraft content creator, literally, word for word, is World of Warcraft worth playing? Like, yeah. And I, I basically said, you know, if you want to elaborate, and then they just said, well, fuck you, prick, and left the stream. And it's like, okay, like, whatever. Um, and like, sure, I could have maybe been nicer about it, but... Certain questions like that, you know, 
Uh, I, I probably couldn't have been, like, as dismissive about it, but it's just like, what the fuck do you want me to say, right? Also, my dog is, like, freaking out. I don't know if you can hear him barking, because he's, like, all the way on the other side of the house, but, I mean, he's so loud whenever he is barking and freaking out. Oh, Starbucks? You went out? No. Sorry. Oh, shit. Thank you. Did not expect that. Did you pull a muscle? <laughs> <laughs> my dad just pulled a muscle at his back while closing my door. Oh, God. That's like stereotypical old person stuff. Uh, Eastern Kingdoms. I'm going to do this so I can fly to Duskwood. Knock that out. Uh, okay, there we go. Darkshire Duskwood. Uh, let's see. Let me scroll up a little bit. Uh, who is doing so much damage? It looks like all of our damage was around the same, for that dungeon at least. Brogok. I mean, in most cases, I was top damage, which is to be expected in, you know, a leveling set like this. Have I seen a, le a level 11 warriors with lifesteal in dungeons? Yes, I have. Uh... So many guilds are the same, they promise all these events and big plans, and then you join, and the only effort being put into anything is recruiting as many new members as possible. I mean, yeah, you'll see that a lot with, um, you know, generic guilds that you find in trade chat and stuff. It's easier to promise a lot of stuff than actually deliver. I mean, it's one of those things, right? Whenever somebody's promising something that's too good to be true, I always take it with a pinch of salt, right? Uh, and I think, like... I don't know, the guilds that try to organize all these crazy events and spread themselves too thin. I kind of wonder what the advantage to having a big guild is now. Because a lot of people used to do that back in, like, the Cataclysm days, because a lot of people effectively ran scam guilds back in... Oh, Manitoums? Manitoums? Please, please, please. Not Shadow Labs? I mean, actually, a lot of the Akundun ones. Synthet Calls is also good. Okay, I'll take that. Manitoums would have been best, so Thek Halls is a very close second. Still a very good option. Um, but yeah, I think these, like, so actually, I didn't finish explaining it. Yeah, back in Cataclysm, so for anyone who didn't play then, there used to be something called Guild Perks, which technically there still are. But World of Warcraft guilds, starting in Cataclysm, had levels to them. So... You know, just like, you know, you level up your character, right? As people in the guild would gain levels and do raids, and I don't remember exactly what gave guild experience, but you would be able to level up your guild up to 25. 25 is the cap. And every single level, you would get additional guild perks. So you would get, like, you know, reduced hearthstone cooldown while in a guild, or increased mount speed while in a guild, increased amount of experience gained while in a guild. Like, little perks, modifiers like that. And then every so often there'd be a bigger perk, like, uh, basically every single player got a mass res spell as part of one of the guild perks, which they removed, because turns out when you give access to a mass res spell to literally every player in the game, well, suddenly healers lose a lot of their utility. They also gave an ability called, as much as I miss it, because there were a lot of fun things you could do with it, have group will travel, which was a mass raid-wide summon on, I forget what the cooldown was, but it, like, wasn't a terribly long cooldown for the fact that a single person could summon anyone to any location, effectively. And obviously that decreases the value of Warlocks. I still think it would be nice for, like, someone else to have the ability to do, like, summons or gateways or things like that. Warlocks have way too much unique utility, but giving everybody access to a raid-wide summon, that was, like, a huge mistake. So... They removed Mass, resurre mass Resurrection, they removed um, Have Group Will Travel. Uh, some of the smaller ones, like Mobile Banking, is still there. So, guild perks still exist, but now they are just bonuses to being in a guild. So, if you join any guild, regardless of, you know, players, whatever, uh, they will have, I believe it's 10% mount speed, reduced Hearthstone cooldown, Mobile Banking, and I, I think you still have increased dead ghost speed like the quick and the dead is what it's called or something like that uh so there's like some whatever perks that are still in the game and that's baseline for every guild but it used to be that you had to level up your guilds to do all this stuff and i i forget the exact name i want to say it was called cash flow 
But there was a perk that made it so, like, 2%, it was very low, it was like 2% of all gold that somebody made would get duplicated and added into the guild bank. Which, you know, it was, I think it might have even been 1%. It was something super trivial, right? And it seems fairly innocuous. Obviously, nowadays, pumping that much raw gold into the economy for no effort, like, that shit's disastrous. There are... Like, the death of the World of Warcraft economy has been a death by a thousand cuts, and I think the biggest ones were the mission boards. Like, the garrison mission boards absolutely fucked the World of Warcraft economy, and it kind of hasn't ever really recovered since. But one of those huge blows to it was the uh, cash flow perk for guilds. That would make it so you, um... Like, you constantly got, like, a duplicated, am a duplicated amount of gold for whatever somebody in your guild made. And what a lot of people would do is they would basically make these fake guilds, right? Like the leveling guilds, where they would advertise all these things, try to get like, I mean, I think the cap is still was 999, the full 999 players in their guild. Then they would make like a second guild, like a V2 guild or something like that, and get another 999 players. And they would promise all this stuff, basically act like they were a real guild, when they were actually doing nothing but, as somebody else said, recruiting. Why? Because, well, it turns out, when you have two guilds of 999 members that you are actively curating and making sure that, you know, there's active players only, and you are making 1% of the total gold for each one of those 999 members, and, it, it, like, you know, if you're not an actual guild that actually needs to, you know, buy stuff for its raiders and have real guild expensive, it's, if it real guild expenses if it's just one dude controlling the entire guild and has complete access to the guild bank you had people making fake guilds like that and then just farming gold because they would make like two million golds off like their guild or something crazy per week and then just take that out of the guild bank and just do that every single time the gold would get deposited at the end of the week so you had people making fake guilds like that just so that they could farm gold which is why I said, like, I un I kind of understand why people did that back then. But these days, I mean, that perk got wiped out fairly quickly. I think Blizzard learned fairly early on that uh, pumping that much cold into the economy is a fucking terrible idea. A lot of the guild perks got rolled back because they um, were really unhealthy for the game. But during that time period, I remember it was just a plague. And one of the problems with that was... If you had um, guild invites turned on, so there's like a way that you can, I, in the settings, I forget exactly, like block guild invites. And it used to be that every single time I would make a new character, I would immediately go disable guild invites. Because you would get spammed with people like using those add-ons that scan players who are not in a guild. Literally nonstop, every minute, you would get another invite to some random leveling guild that somebody was trying to use to farm gold. It was so fucking toxic. So, yeah, those were the days when just those guilds popped up all the fucking time. These days, I guess it's less common. The only reason I think somebody would do it is just for, like, ego shit, if they want to feel like they have a large guild. But it was definitely a thing back then. I'm actually curious to see what Blizzard does with Cataclysm Classic, because... I don't know, it's like... Obviously, there's a lot of things from Cataclysm that I actually think people frown upon too much that, you know, were pretty cool. Like, I think Reforging, while I understand why they've decided to remove it, I still think Reforging at the time was a cool feature. You know, even Archaeology, right? Archaeology is one of those things that has the potential to be really cool. Blizzard has just completely neglected it for years, and so it's just kind of a dead profession now. But on launch, I remember having a lot of fun with Archaeology. There's a lot of cool Cataclysm things that just kind of got dropped over the years. But that being said... Guild perks were definitely one of the big misses of Cataclysm, at least the original implementation. So I'm kind of curious if they're going to recognize that and for Cata Classic, like dial back the guild perks and make them only basic bonuses, like increased experience, I don't know, increased um, mount speed, like basic things like that, which is fairly innocuous. But cash flow, have group will travel, mass res. I honestly think you can just take those out of Cataclysm Classic and nobody would complain because... Even current content, like, it was fun, but we all kind of knew it was really, really, really bad for the game. Uh, that was not healthy at all. Uh, I guess I'll go Last Stand. Um, 
Uh, do I really need a ton of rage done? I think I'll take brace for impact. So whatever. At this level, I mean, shield slam is a huge chunk of my damage anyway. Uh, oh, I forgot to re queue for dungeons. What is the point of having 400 plus members if all it means is that at any time you can log in and see 40 plus people online, but nothing has been said in guild chat for hours? Yeah. That's one of the problems with those social leveling guilds, for sure. And I did remember to turn war mode on this time. I saw somebody say, did you forget to turn on war mode? I fucking remember. Uh, what the fuck is Packed House? This sounds wild. PvP brawls are always wild as hell. I remember Packed House from a while ago. I guess, have they not done it in a while? Definitely they did it a decent amount back in Legion and stuff. Um, Blizzard has leveling and high prio, but not not actual leveling the $60 one. Yeah, you are absolutely correct there, Abdul. Uh, Blizzard's priority for leveling is getting people to not want to do it, so they give them $60. Yeah, you are unfortunately not too far out there, which is a shame, but yeah. Okay, we need to... Yeah, this is a quest that I need to pick up before I start. I should have picked that up the moment I landed the flight point. Whatever. Alright, no escape from Durnhold. Come on. I've gotten fairly good dungeon RNG so far. Gotta make up for dying to the fish. No escape from Durnhold. No escape from Durnhold. I also have a lot of dungeons in the pool now. Like, I could hit Mechanar. Um, I could even hit Architraz and stuff. So... My odds of getting a good dungeon are fairly low, but... You, generally speaking, at least have better odds to get the lower level dungeons, because obviously there's more people queuing up at very low levels than there are, like, as you get higher. Because a lot of the times people will just stop doing dungeons by the time they reach level 20 or 30 or something like that. Some people go all the way through, but... I think there's more people queuing at level 10, especially since I started recommending that in my guide, right? Why does it say Fury Warrior, but you're tank? Uh, we'll be doing Fury Warrior after we're done with dungeons. So we're tank for the queue times, Fury afterwards. It, this applies to everything, right? Not just Warrior. Any sort of thing where you can play tank or healer, you do that until you're done with dungeons, just for queue times. And, you know, I could, right, in between dungeon queues, I could swap to Fury, but then I would have to constantly spend my talent points every single time a dungeon ends, at that point, it would just be a massive time loss swapping back and forth to Fury Warrior. So, at low levels, it's not like Fury's necessarily that interesting anyways, right? Like, Fury probably would level at the exact same speed as Arms and Prot. Like, you're only pressing a few buttons and your procs are doing most of the work here. Like, you press Revenge here, like, it's not like Fury's going to do much better. Uh, Alright, we got Underbog again. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave this. Oh, wait, oh, somebody left right before I did. I think if I had stayed in the dungeon for a few more, like, seconds, I wouldn't have instantly been hit with a deserter buff. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. I could have dodged it because somebody left before me, but eh, it's not a big deal. Uh, let's see, though. I think I've hit most dungeons already. So I got all the good ones because I got the first four. We got Blood Furnace, Rampart, Slave Pens, Underbog. Those are the really, really good dungeons. You always want to try and get those. We got those. Perfect. Uh, I got Sethek Halls. That's another really good one. Uh, Mana Tombs and... Uh, what else? I think Akanai Crypts. Yeah, that's the one. Because there's one dungeon that's hidden behind the words, You Recently Deserted. Uh, that I can't see. I believe Akanai Crypts is the one hidden behind. Yeah, because I don't see it on this list. So, the dungeons that we can still hit. Mana Tombs. Crypts is okay, but honestly, I would not re just for Akanai Crypts. It's, like, borderline. It's good enough that if I get it in a queue, I'm not going to leave it, because it's okay. But it's also not nearly good enough for me to specifically hunt for it after I've gotten the rest of them done. Uh, Mechanar is good. So I think at this point, the only two dungeons I could still get that would be nice is Mana Tombs and Mechanar. Which I think is still worth re-queuing after the Deserter debuff falls off, but uh, overall, fairly solid RNG. Nothing too crazy. I still haven't managed to get any situations like that world record run where I queued into the final boss of the dungeon and just got free dungeon completion XP. That was fucking ridiculous. On top of just dodging every single bad dungeon, I then get that as icing on the cake. That was pretty fucking cracked. 
face reveal at 30k subs, Pog. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a face reveal eventually. It might even be soon. I'm debating it. Um, it's whenever I feel comfortable. But yeah. I know a lot of people really want like a face reveal, whatever. A lot of people prefer to watch streams with videos. I think most people don't give a shit. Like, a lot of times people will say, you know, oh, I don't really care if there's a face cam or not. Um, but it is one of those things where I know for a fact that having a face cam would probably help me out. I know that for streaming especially, people like that. And uh, it definitely, like, I don't know. I don't, having a face cam definitely wouldn't hurt me at all. So it 100% it is an anxiety thing, which I think is partially unfounded, but, you know, whatever. Anxiety isn't necessarily logical. It, it just is, so. Are they implementing auto mount skill now? Yeah, the auto mount skill is one of the only things they actually did properly implement. So that much is working at least. So credit where it's due. They didn't completely fuck up all of the leveling changes, but yeah, the other stuff isn't. Basically, all of the things that were very easy to test, whether it's working or not, that stuff is fine. Anything that would have required them a little bit more testing to make sure they caught all of the edge cases, they just didn't test. And then 60 to 61 chromie time, they just didn't test at all because it just doesn't fucking work. So that one, I don't really know how it has still slipped under the radar. Um... You heard it here, folks. Let's get us some XYZ. Yeah. Uh, can I play Volpera next speedrun, please? Your Survival Hunter gameplay was awesome. Um, Volpera. Can Volpera be shamans? If Volpera can be shamans, then yes. Because I guess what are the options, right? For um, or actually, you know what? I take it back. Uh, because my next run is going to be forty to sixty, I'm using it on an existing character. So. Uh, my next run will actually be on a regular orc that I've already leveled. Um, so what what can Volpera be? Uh, I guess they could probably be... There we go. Darkman Farah fell off, so I'll refresh that. They can be most races, or most classes, I think. So, um, sure, I'll do Volpera for the next, the next run, whenever it is. I don't mind it, especially considering an Alliance Allied race won for you know, this particular stream, then I generally like to kind of interchange it. I guess I did do Lightforged Draenei last weekend as well. So yeah, definitely I'll do a Horde race next time for the 10-60 to 60 run. And... Oh, why not, Volpera? Sure. Uh, their Horde races are like, or allied races are fairly limited. I've done like most of them at this point. The only one I haven't done for Horde is... Uh, I haven't done Maghar, but I've said before, I just... I don't really want to play Maghar. Like, if I have the choice, I'm generally speaking going to avoid it. It almost won the poll yesterday, and if it had won the poll, I would have respected the results of that. But Void Elf won, right? Uh, but I am never going to choose Maghar if I have the option, just because the racials are fucking boring and really not fun to play around with. So I like playing Volpera for leveling runs because Make Camp is actually pretty enjoyable to play around with. So I guess the options for next week are what? Rogue... Uh, yeah, Rogue, Warlock, and Druid. So obviously, if Balanced Druid ends up winning, then it won't be Volpera because uh, Volpera can't be Druids. But if it ends up being Warlock or Rogue, then I will do Volpera for next weekend. How about that? I think that's a fair compromise. Feet reveal at 31k subs. Oh, fuck no. Another person saying I need to do a feet reveal. Fucking hell. Rocks. God damn it. Uh... What I'm saying is, if I get to 20k subs, I'll do a Mechanome speed level. Like, I already have 20k subs, I'm not falling for that. <laughs> yeah, trying to trick me into doing a free Mechanome speed leveling run, I see what you're doing. Don't let shit ideas destroy what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, it's not that people have bad ideas. You know, sometimes people do have good suggestions on, like, would you do this at XYZ subs? It's just... You know, there's only so much time in the day. I have a lot of stuff going on as is. I can only fit a certain amount of projects into my limited amount of free time. How many necklaces have I gotten from these bags, man? Fucking hell. That kind of sucks. Yeah, whatever. I only have a certain amount of free time. Um, oh, fuck, I forgot to... Actually, 
I almost said I forgot to re queue for dungeons, completely forgetting I just took a deserter debuff, so I can't queue for dungeons. Um, I'm going to wait until the absolute last second to refresh this potion because I want to make sure I have the most time out of my buffs. Uh, I will refresh my food buff though. Mechanome sub rogue at 100k. Look, uh, I, I won't say what the class will be. You guys can probably pick the class. Like, it, if we're actually sticking with that, then sure. 100k sub had to do a Mechanome speedrun, right? Fuck it, whatever. Since people seem to be enjoying that joke that I made uh, a few streams ago, I guess we'll roll with it. Uh, but I will let people pick the class. If we ever get to 100k subs, which I mean, hopefully eventually, but who knows how long that'll take. Uh, and, you know, when I get there, sure, you guys can pick the class that I do a Mechanome speedrun with. Trust no one, says funny you say, trust no one. Yeah. Um, do I have coding experience? I have I have extensive coding experience. The only thing I'm not familiar with is Lua in particular. I am not used to doing anything with Lua, but I have definitely coded a lot. I've made multiple games within Unity. I mean, I uh, took a computer science minor in college, right? So I've done a shit ton of coding. Right, obviously making the website, right, required a lot of coding. So I had to learn, I mean, I didn't really need to learn it because I already uh, did learn a bit of HTML and JavaScript in uh, my college classes, but I had to do a decent amount of coding to make the guide work on the website. And like learning how to, you know, format things with HTML and whatever is, you know, was something that I would have to look it up, but I know how to do that stuff. So I'm not learning coding from scratch. Like to give you an idea, Right now, if I wanted to, I could easily build the type of, like, add-on or whatever that I want to make within something like Unity. Like, I'm very familiar with coding within a program like Unity. If I wanted to make it, like, a mini-game that you could run on the side, I could absolutely do that. The hard part is, of course, going to be getting that to work within World of Warcraft as an actual add-on. That is the thing that I need to learn. But, honestly, once I kind of figure out how Lua works, and a lot of people have told me, you know, it's a little bit finicky, but honestly, once you figure it out, it's not too bad. Uh, a lot of the functionality that I've not been sure if I, or before I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do, people have told me, oh yeah, you can do that fairly easily. So I have a feeling that once I actually learn, you know, the ins and outs of Lua, I shouldn't struggle with it too much, because a lot of coding, right, is once you know the fundamentals, it's just kind of transferable. Just figure out, okay, how does it work in this different language? And then just, you kind of go from there. So I don't really think I'll have too much difficulty, but of course I still need to learn it at some point. Uh, some proper trust issues. You can build people up by trusting them. Yeah. I mean, I, I should say, it's not like I don't trust anyone, right? Um, obviously there are people who I do trust, but it it's really fucking hard to gain my trust. I'll say that much. Uh, and... Especially if it's something where I know that I can do it myself, and I'm just confident that, like, yeah, I, I can do this. Um, I'd rather just do it myself instead of outsourcing it to anybody else. But especially, like, whenever somebody who I don't fucking know at all reaches out and is like, Hey, do you want to work together on this random-ass project? Like, fucking no, I don't know you. Like, you know, you may be the best coder alive. I've never met you before. I don't know anything about you. I'm not going to randomly decide to work together with you on some coding project like making an add-on or whatever you know if i happen to have a friend who is really 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 good at coding and wanted to help me out with that sure i'd probably take them up on it but i'm not working with random people who i don't know infinix said i gotta go good luck in the run thank you infinix if you watch the recording after the fact uh github users can only make forks that you then have to accept to edit i mean I, I generally speaking know how GitHub works, not because I've ever used it, but actually because uh, there was like Final Fantasy drama with, what was the add-on called? Where it was like some sort of like cosmetic add-on and somebody made a fork and then the developer installed malware into like the base product to basically fuck over people who were using the fork. Like I read into that and it was actually really entertaining to read. Like. Just what a fucking psychopath that developer was. Uh, so I generally speaking know because of all of that Final Fantasy drama, how GitHub works, I still wouldn't want to use it, right? But 
yeah, I, I'm somewhat aware of the functionality. Nice. A lot of the rares are up today, surprisingly. And as we just saw, there's another person leveling right here, so I guess they somehow didn't find any of the rares when doing the quests on their own, which, hey, can't complain. Uh, Daniel Henry said, you a baller. Thank you, Daniel Henry. What do I think will be the next expansion? I mean, I don't know. I always jokingly say Void Lord expansion, right? Uh, to be fair, Holly Longdale used to work on WoW Classic, but now handles all of WoW. Still Classic fanboys. Yep, yeah, but I mean, Holly Longdale is still a big person for Classic, right? But if we're looking at, like, WoW, gee, we're about to hit ICC patch. You know, there's going to be a big Classic announcement. What is it more likely to be? Are we getting Classic Plus? Or are they finally going to announce Cataclysm Classic, which everyone with a brain knows is actually going to happen? Anyone who still thinks that Cataclysm Classic is not going to happen, like, you are drinking the Kool-Aid, man. It is easy for Blizzard to do. They have done multiple polls asking people if they're interested in Cataclysm Classic. And speaking as somebody who is interested in Cataclysm Classic, there's a lot of us out there. You know, I know there's some people who think that Cataclysm was the absolute worst thing to ever happen to WoW, and they're like, no, it's antithetical to the idea of Classic. It's like, fuck off. Personally, I think it's going to be good. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. I'm going to play the shit out of it. So I hate when people say that they don't think Cataclysm Classic should exist because of XYZ reason. Especially because, like, you have fucking Era servers, right? If you don't want to play Cataclysm, don't fucking play Cataclysm. Play on Wrath Era. Which, if they don't make Wrath Era servers, I mean, I will be right there with you complaining that that is bullshit. Because, obviously, Classic players not only deserve a Wrath Era server... They deserve a TBC era server, and I'm still mad on TBC players' behalfs that they didn't get that. As somebody who probably wouldn't ever play on a TBC era server, I still think it's bullshit that Blizzard didn't give you guys a server. So, if they don't do a Wrath era server, that would be absolutely criminal, but they probably will. They would be completely stupid to not do that, considering Wrath is a popular expansion, right? Some people say, oh, a lot of Wrath nostalgia was overhyped, and I'll be honest... I haven't necessarily enjoyed Wrath Classic as much as I thought I would. I'm still playing it. I have um, TOGC later tonight. So I'm still doing Wrath Classic. But did I think I'd enjoy it a lot more? Yeah, I honestly thought I would. But I'm still having fun with it. It just isn't everything that I think um, our brains made it out to be with nostalgia and stuff like that. But yeah, it's still fun. I still think there's a lot of people who would play it. Obviously, there were a lot of Wrath private servers, so we have the numbers to back that up, right? You like it mostly for an easy changelog and code transparency? I could see that. Yeah, that part I don't really know much about, so... If you're saying it's good for that, I, I'll take your word for it, but I just haven't really thought that's something super important. That Like, I'm not thinking that far ahead about, like, ah, how am I going to make, like, a, a well documented changelog for an add-on that I haven't even, like, really started development on yet. Um, yeah, it's... We'll see. Now that I feel like I've gotten this BOE, like, half of my runs. Um, take Rend so I can automatically apply it with Thunderclap and then immediately take it off my bars. Uh, you know what's a godsend, though? GitHub pages that I don't know much about. Um, oh man, I've missed a lot. Holy shit, I missed so much in chat. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just, heads up now, I did not realize how fast chat is moving. I am like 30 minutes behind, and there's a lot of messages. I will do my best to get around to what everybody has said, but it might take me a while. Uh, I'm gonna try to like skim through it. We'll see. Uh, fuck. Am I living alone? No. Um, also, like, weirdly personal question, but whatever. Um, base streamer, don't change, man, that's what makes you you, thank you. Uh, did I get all the rot blooms already? Yeah, I just need to kill skeletons at this point. Can still have a subjective opinion on it besides it being your game of choice? I mean, I can, but that's why, like, I followed up by that. Like, I initially said it's kind of a dumb question, but then I immediately responded. This is in reference to the guy who said, like, you know, is WoW worth playing? I said, if you want to elaborate on your question, like, I I'm not going to go find the exact clip. I'm sure you can find it if you want. 
Um, but I did elaborate and say, if you want to ask me how is rating these days compared to XYZ, you know, is um, Mythic Plus good these days? How is PvP? Blah, blah, blah. Like, if he wanted to elaborate, I said I would be willing to answer. But that saying is WoW well worth playing just doesn't give me a lot to work with, right? It's just a very generic question. Uh, at this point, actually, I think I need to go back and turn in these quests, and then that should give me quests for the mine over there, and then I can just kill two birds, one stone. Duskwood is, like, such a pain to route, because I always forget exactly um, the order in which I should do things. Also, I don't know if anyone is yelling at me in uh, chat to refresh my potion. I think I let it fall off for, like, one or two quests, but there we go. I got it back up, so... That's what she said. Um... Why am I prot? Uh, for early levels, while doing dungeons, I'm playing prot, so I'm gonna do one more dungeon in 13 minutes, and if that bricks, and I hit, like, Escape from Durnhold or something bad, then I will switch to Fury from that point on. But until we are completely done with dungeons, we do tanks or healers, and then we swap. Uh, I can't really tell by your vids or streams, so I'll ask, do you play WoW? <laughs> yeah. Um, how old am I? I'm 25. Pulling shit in your back can happen before you're 30, yeah. Um, let's see. Have group on travel, Craigasm. Yeah, a lot of people are remembering that. Uh, could someone tell me why he's leveling Prot and not his Fury? I it's it's an understandable thing to be confused about. People who are new to the speedruns, they see Fury Warrior and they click on it, and then they see that it's not Fury, and they just get confused. It's, um, you know, that's kind of the reality of things. People are going to get con confused and ask a lot of questions, so whatever. I expect it to happen. Uh, you feel old. The benefits of at least having a higher level guild to AFK in? Yeah. Mass Summon World PvP was the most fun. Yeah, Mass Summon was good for that, but it did kind of ruin, like, a lot of travel within the world. There's a lot of stuff that made the world feel more dead in Cataclysm, and Have Group Will Travel heavily contributed to that. So, you know, people can say that flying is what made the world feel less alive or whatever, but when almost every single raid group for PvP or whatever that I joined back in Cataclysm would immediately mass summon everyone straight to the location and there was no travel to get there whatsoever, I think that was a major contributor in making the world feel a lot more dead. Uh, wondering when I first started playing the game back in 2004 or 2005. It was within the first year of World of Warcraft. I was literally five years old when I first started playing WoW. So I've been playing this game for 20 years. <laughs> very, very, very long time. Um, let's see. Leveling with Fury talents, but tanking for instant cues? Yeah. Uh, back with the guild perks, it made more sense to have giant guilds, but now it just seems like people do, uh, more people to disappoint because you're not doing X activity like they do in the game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, with paladins having battle res, I think it's about time either priests or mages have a summon equivalent. I could see that. Yeah. I think mage it would make a lot more sense for, like a reverse portal. You, like, teleport everyone to your, um, location or something like that. I could absolutely see that. That would fit really well for mages, come to think of it. Uh, what level am I? If you want to see my level, it's in the top left of the screen, uh, next to my name. I know it's kind of small, people have trouble reading it, so I don't know exactly when that question was asked. At this moment in time, I'm level 27. You can see it there. Um, yeah, we're doing a mix of dungeons and questing. So... I do a lot of dungeons early on. Obviously, if you want to know my route, right, I have an entire leveling guide with my route. So I think a lot of people don't realize that when they are new to the stream. But it's the first thing in the description now. Because I got a lot of people asking where to find my guide. And it's it was in the FAQ, right? So I had it listed there. But it was like kind of down further below. So I have now updated the FAQ. So the very first thing is, where is your leveling guide? So there you go. If you're looking for it, it is super easy to find these days. Um, if you don't have any bonus movement, it's faster to tell you out and back in. Yeah, so 
You're correct that I assume you're probably referring to Sithic Halls, because Sithic Halls is one of the classic ones where it seems fast, but it's not actually. The reason I actually don't do that, and this is specifically because this is not a world record attempt, is to help out other people. Because the reality is a lot of other players don't realize that you can teleport out and back in. So what I've seen happen a lot of times in Sithek Halls is if I teleport out and back in as the tank, people will run back to the instance, or to the start of the entrance, forgetting that they did not clear those packs of mobs, and then they will die. And it's just one of those things where it's a minimal time loss for me to go and pull that extra pack to give people a clear way to the entrance. So I do that just to make it easier for people. But you are correct that it is faster to teleport out and back in. It's one of the reasons why you have your own personal guild, yeah. You love reforging. Mop was so good. You had uh, glyphs that matters. Every piece of gear had sockets. Yeah. Definitely, I think. That was when itemization, I think, was at its best. Personally, I think so, at least. But I know a lot of people disagree. How are you? Uh, okay, so I'm going to do these two quests. And then after that, it'll send me to the other side of the zone. And at that point, I will... Head back to Stormwind, wait for the dungeon queue, and probably try to speedrun chat really quick. And after the dungeon queue, if we get a good one, then I'll requeue again. But if we get, like, Escape from Durnhold or something, then we just stop. And then we swap to Fury. So we're close to swapping to Fury. Was some peak player agency? Yeah, definitely. Archaeology was the heroes of the Storm of... Wow. Damn, that's a fucking metaphor. Uh, yeah. You're not wrong there. Archaeology had Abyss Two-Handed Weapon and Cataclysm. Yeah, there was a lot of really good shit. I think, what was the Abyss Two-Handed Weapon? It was Zinrock, Destroyer of Worlds or whatever. It was one of the troll ones, I think, was really good at launch. And there was a lot of just generally good items from Archaeology, so absolutely there was a lot of cool stuff. Even just like the toys from Archaeology was really fun to play around with. There was a lot of cool items you could get. I don't know, I really like Archaeology. I was a big fan of that back in the day. It's just a shame they kind of dropped it completely. I heard there's supposed to be an archaeology rework soon. I don't think so. I haven't heard that at all. I've heard people speculating. Like, I've never heard anything from Blizzard. I've heard speculation, and I've seen people asking in interviews, is there going to be an archaeology rework? And the response from Blizzard is always, it's not off the table, but, like, basically no. And I think if Dragonflight hasn't gotten an archaeology rework, the odds of us getting one soon is unlikely. And to be honest, at this point, it's like, as much as I would love for World of Warcraft to just have, like, infinite content, it, there is one of those things where I think it would be too much work to completely revamp archaeology at this point. If they had slowly kept updating it over the expansions and not completely dropped it like they did, then maybe it could have been easier to... Like, get it into a functioning spot, but they just didn't. So, at this point, it's... It is what it is. Uh, okay, yeah, so I did the quests. I don't think I need to kill anything extra. We can just go right back to Darkshire. Uh, <laughs> I can't tell if this is bait or not. Um, but I'm going to read it anyway. Dude, this game is trash. So sad to see how this shit has become. You have 4,500 or 45,433 skills, 19,384 debuffs. PvP is basically used cooldowns. They didn't die. Wait for them again. I mean, if that is satire, you're doing a very good job of parroting the dumb YouTube comments that I get on a daily basis. If that's not satire, then, you know, welcome to the club of people leaving stupid YouTube comments saying this game's trash because blah, blah, blah. I mean, I agree that, you know, PvP is not the best, right? Uh, anybody saying, wow, PvP is boring will probably get an agreement from me because, you know, I get it. A lot of people like it. I know Shalestorm is going to say he likes PvP. I know. Uh, and I have friends who really like PvP. Like my friend Milk Supply, right, who has been in a bunch of shorts. He's a really big PvPer. So, hey, uh, a lot of people I know like PvP. But personally, I, I agree that it's not my favorite thing in the world. Um, you've seen interviews, heirlooms will be reworked. That one they have confirmed, yes. Uh, they have said they are eventually going to do some sort of heirloom rework, which, thank God, because 
the heirloom changes they made in Shadowlands just sucked from the get-go. The whole idea of the set bonus was always trash. Social guilds, you're in. You're anti-social as hell. I'm pretty sure every other person in those guilds are too. Yeah, it's a bit of an oxymoron for sure. The idea of a social guild where nobody talks. Ooh, nice. All right, we got one treasure chest so far. Haven't seen a ton of chests lately, especially because on live servers and, you know, peak hours, you're not going to find many, but... Got one. It's uh, pretty solid. I should take the other one because I don't have a real DPS cooldown yet. Which one? I forget which what that was in reference to. Um, either way, I'm going to take Seismic Reverb. Uh, I mean, none of this really matters at this level. Uh, I guess Shield Wall just... My damage is kind of already fine, so, like, whatever. Which chat is Harlan looking at? I'm I'm still catching up, Rox. So, uh, Rox, since I know you haven't watched a lot of my streams before, uh, I read everything. So even though I am 30 minutes behind, I am still reading through chat. I will get around to every message eventually, but it's going to take me time. So I'm, like, 30 minutes behind. I'm trying my best. That's what happens when I go on long tangents about, like, guild levels back in Cataclysm. I end up spending a lot of time ranting about one thing, and then I miss a shit ton of messages, which, you know, is what it is. Um, no heirloom rework in the very near future, moderate future, likely. I expect an heirloom rework sometime around... Okay, at this point, we can um, teleport, or dollar and hearthstone and stuff. Uh, probably next expansion, the Void Lord expansion, would be a good time. All right, I have two minutes until the deserter debuff falls off. I'm going to quickly try to speed run as many messages in chat as I can, uh, and then we will queue for a dungeon and continue. What I hope above all is an heirloom update is a massive nerf to gold costs. I think they said that one of the main changes they plan on making to heirlooms is specifically reducing the gold costs. Uh, you prefer no cam to VTuber. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. VTuber is not in the cards for me. I am not planning on doing that at all. So I will either have a cam or I will have no cam. I'm not going to turn into like a fox monster uh, midstream or something. Don't worry. Chromie type thing is not to be excused. That's 100% bad. Completely agree. Multiple people saying yes, presumably to the VTuber thing. I don't know what was said at the time, but multiple people are saying VTuber 3D model reveal. <laughs> Jesus. Face cam is tough because not only do you have to manage your stream UI, but you also have to match your room background decoration with the UI. Yeah, and like, my background right now is a fucking mess. Like, I'm not the most well-organized person, so my background would literally just be like my unmade bed in the background, and I don't know, I guess my dresser would probably be in view of the camera too. So yeah, it definitely wouldn't be like the most amazing streamer setup, which partially why. Um... Let's see. Vuu Parashwaman Uwu. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Typing that with your full name, Doxed, feels so cringe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely. Hello, Jade West. Hope you're doing good as well. Uh, do I use the speedrun characters for anything after I'm done with the leveling? Uh, very much depends on the character. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Not always. Did you mean to tell me you don't like 10% pet health? Yeah. They should have given Volpera Druid, definitely. I hope Volpera gets Druid eventually, that would be nice. Vulpera is probably the worst shit you've read in the past month. <laughs> yeah. More excited for Night Elf Forsaken Paladin or Night Elf Forsaken Shaman? Definitely Night Elf Paladin. Out of all of those combinations, Night Elf Paladin is the one I am by far the most excited for. I think that would be very cool. Okay, so we can queue for dungeons again. So until the dungeon pop... I'm not going to start the WAD intro, I'm just going to wait and catch up a chat, and then when we're done with dungeons, we'll swap to Fury, and then we'll do WAD intro. Um, I do think Night Elf Paladin will happen eventually. Classic WoW speedrun using Holy Priest, no dungeon. Awful. No. Uh. Oh, my, chaps, my chat box snapped down to the bottom, which means I'm close to catching up. Not quite there, but I'm at least within striking distance. Long ago, Harlden lived in peace and harmony, and then everything changed when the Mechanomes attacked. Only cats and coffee could save him, but when he needed them most, they vanished. <laughs> nice. 
Lewis syntax is not hard to figure out. The hard work is to read and learn the WoW API. Yeah, that's fair. I don't think splitting the classic community into three or four different servers with their own different realms is a good idea. Pretty sure you can have your TBC era server, but it would most likely be nearly dead. I mean, you're not wrong, but I still think at least one server with that as an option would be nice for people who are into that. So I think it would at least be helpful, right? Uh, I, I get it. You know, you're probably correct that it would be fairly dead, but, you know, can't hurt. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, right, I never liked the idea of splitting the community into whatever different things. You're not splitting the community by giving people more options. Giving people more options is always a better idea. Splitting the community, like, obviously, if you make a million different servers and divide the community up arbitrarily, but if we're talking different versions of the game, people are just going to play whatever they think is the most fun. So people are going to play Classic Era regardless of what Blizzard's doing otherwise, because they just think that is the best era. People who really like Wrath, I mean, if you force Wrath players into Cataclysm Classic, that's not going to work. You can't just do that. You can't say, well, I want all Wrath Classic enjoyers to be forced into Cataclysm Classic because I don't want to split the community. Well, then they're just going to fucking quit. If somebody doesn't want to play Cataclysm Classic, you can't force that on them. Give them the option to stay behind in Wrath. If they want to play Wrath, they'll play Wrath. And then anyone who wants to play Cataclysm can continue on in Cataclysm. I never think it's a bad idea to give people more options. At least in terms of, like, when you have things of that nature, wildly different game modes, where, you know, it, it's very unique and separated, I think is always going to be a better idea. Um... As far as you're concerned, the maintenance cost cannot be high enough to warrant not having a dead TBC server. Exactly. At least one, I think, is fine. Uh, been three years since you watched or played WoW, so nice to watch me again. Awesome. Good to have you here. Just looked up and found out that uploading malware on GitHub is taken really seriously. Oh, yeah. No, that Final Fantasy developer who uploaded malware to GitHub, he got fucked. <laughs> right? Like, the moment people realized what he did, he got, like, I believe banned from the site. They absolutely do take that very seriously. It was a huge thing when it happened. I mean, I had never used the add-on before. What was it called? G-Shade or something? And I heard about the drama just because there were so many people talking about it because it was really, really egregious. Also, just it was funny as hell, the drama behind it. Like, how absolutely petty this dude was. But, yeah, I read into all that shit just because it was juicy, juicy drama. Uh, hey man, just want to let you know I appreciated your druid leveling stream. Do you have suggestions for prot warrior leveling for trinkets? Same thing as always, right? Uh, if you're a strength user, you're going to want to use Grontooth Warhorn if you have it. Uh, you may not have it if you didn't play uh, Wad. So if you don't have Grontooth Warhorn, then just use one of the other generic trinkets. Like um, probably Swift Hand of Justice is fine. If you have Touch the Void, that's fine too. And then everybody should be using Unstable Elemental Confluence. It's a good trinket. So every single person, regardless of spec, even healers, will want to use Unstable Elemental Confluence. Uh, you have great videos. Do you have one for Fresh Max Level? Yes. I think I already answered your question earlier. So uh, I do have one for Fresh Max Level. Uh, check my channel. It's fairly recent, within the last few weeks. Um, if you Oh, so I should say, if you don't have one for the Elemental Fireballs, you can get this very easily, right? Like, this is not hard to get at all. It's not limited time. Just go look up on WoWhead how to get this. You do the elemental invasions in Dragonflight, and it takes, like, a little bit of farming, but it's not hard to get at all. You should be able to get it relatively quickly. So I would absolutely say it is worth spending the time getting that if you have not done so already. Um, Have I ever confronted world PvP when leveling and died? It depends on your definition of world PvP. I've never, like, actively tried to duel somebody. Oh, my Alexa just pinged. Stop. Yeah, I activated it again because I said its name. Um, so I've never tried to, like, fight somebody. If I'm... There's once or twice, actually, where I, I have ganked somebody who was, like, below level from me who was trying to steal my tags because at that point, you know, fuck around and find out. But most of the time, if there's PvP when I'm doing war mode, it's because I get ganked by a high-level player. Um, and then of course, what's, is this live? What's the delay time? Like people freak out if I don't read their message within five seconds. Come on, man. Like we'll get to you eventually. Uh, Hans Creek or Hans Seek said, hi, man. Hello. Uh, good to see you. 
What's the name of my weapon? My The heirloom I'm using? Bloodsoaked Skullforge Reaver. Uh, if they release Kata, it will come with a lot of changes. They already set a precedent with Wrath. Yeah, I definitely expect them to do a lot of changes. I'm just curious to see how far they'll go with it. I'm pretty sure they're going to remove LFR, even though, personally, I think there's nothing wrong with LFR when implemented correctly. They definitely, like, original, the first version of Cataclysm LFR, I know a lot of people are going to say it was heavily abused, right? People exploited it to farm tier sets. Obviously, fix those issues if you're going to do it. Obviously, don't do that again. But I think the regular version of LFR, there's nothing actually wrong with it. All the people saying LFR killed WoW are just fucking stupid, so I don't agree with that. They'll probably remove it, though, just because getting Blizzard removes LFR listens to community on, like, some heads, headlines on, like, fucking, what are the big websites, like, Kotaku and all the other fucking ones that do the garbage, like, bare minimum reporting on game releases. They'll probably do that shit so Blizzard gets, like, free PRWs from removing LFR. So even though I don't really think they should, they'll probably do it anyway. Um, Zenrock was from OG ZG. There were two swords. It may not have been called Zenrock. It was something like that, though. Uh, why should they remove it would not make sense for LFR or for... I, I, don't, I guess I don't know exactly what that was in reference to. Uh, still don't have the Ultramarine Courage, Ultramarine Courage drone. Was that one of the ones that was removed? I don't know for sure. Worst thing Bliss could do for archaeology is remove it without warning and not giving any other way to get the rewards. Um, yeah. Uh, that would definitely suck. I, I don't think... Did I say that Blizzard should remove archaeology? I don't think I said that. If I did, that's not what I meant. I just meant they should stop actively developing on it. Like, I don't think they should sink more development resources into something that they've kind of already let die. I wish they had kept it up over the years, and they definitely shouldn't remove it. Hope I didn't accidentally say that, because I definitely don't mean that. Um, I more so meant... At this point, they've kind of already fucked it over. Just don't sink any more resources into, into it, is what I was trying to say. Um, okay, yeah. Jesus Christ. Ice Critical is... <laughs> it, d does he keep going? Man, like... Just, okay. Like, you get a timeout. Don't fucking spam like that. That's just not good to do, regardless. Um, I wish I would seen that before, but like, fuck off, man. Like, if I don't read your message immediately, even if I wasn't reading every single message and getting around to it eventually, like, fuck off. I don't need to read your message immediately. Just massive amount of entitlement there. Worst thing Blizz could do with Archeo- Oh, I read that already. Um, haven't been playing since Legion. Does every character start at level 10? No. Allied races, they start at level 10. Uh, how do you get the quest items? Is a button like that? It's an add-on. Um... Extra quest button. That's how you get it. Hi, Toth Balas. Good to see you. Um, nice transmog. <laughs> nice transmog. This is like the heirloom clown suit. Unless you're saying the transmog in the thumbnail, which I agree, it is a nice transmog. As a new player to MMOs in general in WoW, you've had far better experience with Classic WoW. Yeah. I think that's fair. Classic WoW does a better job of onboarding players. It's like, it requires you to spend a lot more time figuring out the fundamentals of the game, but it's easier to get into compared to retail, which like, kind of just throws you into the deep end that doesn't really teach you much. So yeah. In light of current classes being reworked, which class would you say is the most dire need of one? Probably Rogue. Uh, I think Rogue definitely needs the largest rework. I'm also a little bit biased, but I think Vengeance DH doesn't need a rework. But Vengeance DH definitely needs some attention. Because it's good, but the moment this tier set bonus goes away, Vengeance is going to be back in the bin. And there's so many fundamental issues with the way that Vengeance's talent tree is lined up, it's just problematic. It needs to be fixed. Um, as a new player to MMOs in general, you... Oh, I read that already. I'm trying to make sure I read everything. I think you'll eventually find your love for retail. Yeah, leveling is prot, switching to Fury now. Let's see if I can do a smoke break before you catch up. Classic is hell for an MMO beginner compared to retail, kind of. Uh, multiple versions of a game is like a free market. Did he self-deserter for the next 50 or 30 minutes? Yeah, I had already done that Dungeon Rocks. So I had already done, that was Underbog, I believe. So yeah, I self-deserted again. Normally, that is what happens for the record. Normally, you get into a dungeon, you don't actually need it, and then you just leave and get the deserter buff. The only thing I was saying before is I didn't notice that somebody left like a millisecond before me. 
So in that previous dungeon, if I had waited like an additional 30 seconds, it would have counted as somebody leaving and I would have been able to accept a reduced lever penalty. That does not normally happen. Usually you eat the 30 minute debuff. All this AFK time giving you anxiety? Fuck it. It's a testing run, right? It's not an actual speed run. Um, all the people who spent hundreds on Wrath will lose out completely on everything they spent. That sounds whack. I don't know what that's in reference to. I mean, you can transfer your characters to an era server. The way they did it with Classic Era, in case you weren't around for Classic Era, you could copy your characters over to the permanent era servers. So no, if they did a Wrath Era server, people would not lose out on everything they spent. They'd be able to keep all of that. Don't know why people hate Encata so much. It was your favorite expansion, and Rag Heroic was your favorite friend in WoW. I think there is a lot of good about Cataclysm that, yeah, people rag on too much. Um, Rice said, if I had to choose between Orb of Insight and Touch of the Void, what would I choose? Orb of Insight, 100%. Uh, you've been farming this god-awful Ekaron archaeology mount? Oh, yeah. I fucking hate that thing. I just gave up even bothering with that. Um, you can still get it? Yeah. The Unstable Elemental Confluence was very easy to get during the pre-patch, but they've still made it available even after the expansion launch by doing the Elemental Invasion. So definitely still available to get. You mean the Pocket Hunter? Yeah. How's the run going good? Uh, just catching up on chat real quick, so I stop getting questions on why I'm not reading every message. <laughs> Uh, just got here, shield on Fury? No. Uh, we just swapped off Prot to Fury, which is why I have shields on. Uh, but no, I'm doing dual wield on Fury. Um, can swap there, yeah. So definitely doing Titan's Grip, of course. It wouldn't be a Fury Warrior run if I was not using Titan's Grip. Uh, what are the best tanks in Wrath Classic? I would say all tanks have some merit. The best tank by far is Protection Paladin right now in Wrath Classic. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you want two Protection Paladins. You definitely want one, though. Prop Heli is just ridiculously good. That's what I play. Prop Warrior is not terrible. It's not, like, unplayable. But it is the weakest tank by far. And then between Guardian Druid and... Or I guess it's still Feral Druid in Wrath Classic. Between Feral Druid tanking and Blood Decay, they're both good. They just have different strengths and weaknesses. So... The vast majority of tanking comps that you'll see in, like, high-end Wrath Classic is one prop pally and then either a Feral Druid or a Blood DK. Honestly, they're both good. Uh, I would say Blood DK is maybe a little bit easier to play. If you want to play, like, the off-tank role, it's a little bit more straightforward in terms of what your job is. As a Feral tank in Wrath Classic, you pretty much are expected to be able to cat weave, Because... If you are not cat weaving as a Feral Druid, then Feral is not good compared to Blood DK. Blood DK is just better. But if you are cat weaving as a Feral Druid, it is pretty much on par with Blood DK. Uh, it actually, technically speaking, does more damage. So a lot of like top speedrun guilds will run a Feral Druid because it can do more damage than a Blood DK. And if they're playing properly, they can still survive just as much and they can still hold the same amount of threat. It's only really Prot Warrior that tends to struggle. But Prot Warrior has its place. It's not absolutely abysmal. Um, it's just... Prot Paladin is so strong that it kind of makes Prot Warrior feel a little bit invalid in current Wrath Classic. Uh, almost caught up in chat, so we're almost good to start um, the Dark Portal stuff. And I'll, I'll talk to Honor Hold Mage before I forget, so I don't click the wrong thing. Um, you tank Feral and it's so fun. Yeah, Feral's definitely good. Rock said, all right, gee, I'm going to head to bed when you read this. Uh, I think I hopefully read that fairly soon after you posted it. Um, but thanks for stopping by, Rox. Uh, I appreciate you uh, coming into chat. It was fun talking to you. And uh, sleep well. I want them to rework DK. Frost has so many problems and blood is really lagging behind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ivan Sarek said, uh, donated, what is that? Is that euros or pounds? I always get those two symbols confused. I think that's euros. Uh, two euros support what you like to watch. I appreciate it, Ivan. I'm glad you like watching the stream. Thank you for the donation. It is very much appreciated. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm so close. I, I can see the bottom of the chat window now. Havoc DH needs a rework sooner than any rogue spec. Um, a million APN rotations are killing you. I mean, to be fair, though, as somebody who likes a million APM rotations, I don't necessarily know if that's true. Uh, I actually quite enjoy high APM rotations, so... Um, I haven't, I've heard mixed opinions on Havoc. I know some people who quite enjoy it. Uh, Rogue, Hunter, DH, and support, support specs need rework. Yeah, I guess Hunter needs a rework specifically to its survivability and utility. So 
Like, Survival Hunter feels great to play. Most Beastmastery Hunters I know are happy with the playstyle. MM, same thing, they like the playstyle. Our Hunter in general has a utility problem, so it needs a minor rework on that front. Kind of same thing for Rogues. I think Rogues need, like, a bit more survivability, utility, like, rebalancing, especially for leveling. Uh, rogues definitely, at, like, in leveling content, struggle significantly. And then, obviously, I said, you know, Vengeance already. Uh, I've seen a few people saying Havoc, so maybe. I don't know. I don't play Havoc enough to know for sure. It's Euros. The Pound is extinct. Um, you didn't make it back. I technically haven't uh, fully caught up in chat, but uh, good to see you. Did you say something else? Um, I don't know what else uh, you said, Rox. The last thing I see from you before that is two whole ass euros what a chat <laughs> uh but yeah that that's what i see for you rocks i've also finally caught up in chat i think um but i can see phaser said uh your channel is very informative any suggestions for someone who can't use a keyboard to do to play to do a um uh, or due to a bum hand oh okay i'm trying to to just read that i try hard to get kicked from Bruce a lot use a mouse um unfortunately i mean i don't really know what i would suggest uh, I can definitely see how that would be difficult not being able to use a keyboard, especially in a game like this that requires a lot of keybinds. I wish I had a good suggestion for you, I, and I'm glad that you find the channel informative and helpful. I just, I don't even know where I would begin, like what you would use as a replacement. It's not something that I, uh, obviously that I, I experience, and it's not something that I know anyone who's experienced, so I don't know, maybe somebody in chat knows like of a good way to get around uh, like not having a keyboard, but personally... I don't know. I would, it would definitely be difficult. Um, there's probably some weird like solution that you could find some workarounds, but uh, I would not know it off the top of my head. Sorry. I just got back to WoW after five years, and you have seven seventies because leveling is kind of what's fun. You think Unholy TK is your favorite class at the moment? Yeah, I know a lot of people really like Unholy. You hate momentum? Fair enough. Uh, a lot of demon hunters I know hate momentum. Do I have a hunter speed run? Yes, I have multiple hunter speed runs. Very recently, in fact. If you check my recent streams over the past month or two, you will find uh, both an MM Hunter run and a Survival Hunter run. And we'll be doing Beast Mastery eventually. You've been loving Healer and PvP, but your biggest gripe is you feel like you see everyone, enemy and ally. No ally sees Mew, every enemy does, yeah. Uh, you don't think Feral needs to go in cat form as a main tank? I think off tank needs to. Well, technically you are correct, right? If you are main tanking as a Feral, you don't need to go into cat form. But that being said, like if we're talking about the absolute best possible um, like tank combination, you would not have your Feral being the main tank. You would have Prop Heli main tank, and then you would have either Blood or Feral off tank. And one of the reasons why Feral is so strong in the off tank role is because it can play cat. So Feral can main tank if needed. Right? It's not completely dead in that role, but I think it is very safe to say that it is at its strongest in the off-tank role when it can flex the cat form if needed. And because Prop Heli is just so dominant in the main tank role in Wrath Classic at the moment, it's just kind of, if you have a Prop Heli, it's hard to justify doing anything else. Hog, you can now sleep. Good night. Good night, Rox. Good to see you. Hunters are fine, you don't see many problems with DKs, but rogues are scuffed. The main issue with hunters is endgame utility and survivability. Like, hunters are fine for leveling, I should say, but uh, they definitely struggle with, like, raid utility. Absolutely. You also like high APM rotations, which is why you like to play melee more than casters. You can't stand 2.5 seconds casts. But current Havoc DH with momentum, uh, you deeply dislike. That's fair. Uh, the MS controller is awesome for extra accessibility. There are specs you can play with a controller, fair. Uh, you have a mouse that you can basically do everything with one hand, but you can't strafe or use Shift-Alt. Yeah. MMO mouse is good. That's definitely, yeah, a good suggestion. MMO, MMO mouses will help you a lot, for sure. Um, only 770s. If you don't have 60 level 70s, are you even playing the game? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have that many. Uh, you can run with keyboard, only uh, rest... Uh, the rest, you use your mouse to click attacks. Thanks, keep the great work. No problem. Snacky Chan, your brewmaster panda, is now 70. Awesome. And I should also note that now that I've finally read that Snacky Chan is level 70, that is fully caught up in chat. So that took me like 15 minutes of just non-stop reading chat, but I got there. So I'm fully caught up. Now I actually need to spend my points on Fury. So, let's see, Battle Shout. Uh, I can refresh these buffs, though technically I'll be switching stuff very soon anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
And, okay, what do I want for Fury Points? So, here... Um, the problem is, the moment I say I'm caught up with the chat, a bunch of people are like, Yay, he finally gets caught up with the chat, and I see chat moving really quickly, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna fall behind again. Uh, Bounding Stride, what do I want at this point? Um, I think, honestly, Double Time at this level is better. Uh, wait, read me. Hello, Pepto Jr., I read your message. Uh, there's no problems with DK logs in the Blizzard DK forums. There are no warriors. <laughs> there are no wars in Bossing Say, yeah. For sure. Uh, okay, so I want all that stuff. Rampage, and then I'm... I think I'm two points or two levels away from getting improved Whirlwind, which will be very huge. And then I want to take, yeah, Death Wish at this level. So I can take all this stuff, and now I need to quickly reorganize my bars. So take Shield Slam off there, Enraged Regen I'll put on E. We can take that off. Uh, Rampage I'll put on 2. I haven't played Fury Warrior in a hot minute, so I don't remember what I used for binds and stuff. Um, gotta put Execute there. Uh, what else do I want to do? I think that's all of my main abilities. And then make sure I'm in Berserker Stance. Mm. And I'm pretty sure Fury Warrior doesn't use Slam, but correct me if I'm wrong there, maybe it does. But I don't think so. You don't equip Slam? Okay, cool, cool. Rampage is the Rage Dump, gotcha. Alright, so now until the Dungeon queue pops, we have... Uh, ten minutes to do the Watt intro with Fury Warrior. Or not to complete the entire thing, but now I can figure this out. I really want to get one more good dungeon, because I'd like to have improved whirlwinds for when I start playing Fury. I feel like that would make it feel much better. But also, Watt intro is fairly low on AoE. There's not like many gigantic pulls that I can really do here, so I don't think it'll matter a ton. But that talent does seem nice. And then obviously when I hit 30, that'll be good as well, because I can equip new gear. So I still have all of my starting gear, which is going to mean that for the next five minutes or so, or however long it takes me to get to 30... It's going to take me a decently increased amount of time to kill stuff because I'm using, like, absolutely garbage stuff in these slots. But then one more level, I have, like, ridiculously good, uh, not crafted, but BOE items that I can equip. So that'll be a huge power spike, along with using Ghost Elixir and a lot of other really good stuff. Um, let's see. Now you're behind on chat again. Yeah, thanks, guys. Spamming so that I have to catch up once again. At least those messages are easy to read. And if there's a bunch of them back to back, I'm like, ha ha, now you've fallen behind again. I can just kind of skim through them and I don't need to like think of a super detailed response. It's when there's a lot of really good questions back to back that I struggle with. Because like I want to give detailed answers for all of them, but ultimately I can't. Uh, it's not really a controller... To be honest, not sure what it's called, but you can find an accessibility thing. You can actually map everything to the keyboard. Interesting. Priests should use a gun. I mean, for whatever reason, warriors still have a gun option. Yeah, I mean, in Classic, right, obviously you had warriors, uh, warriors, rogues. Was it just warriors and rogues that also had the ability to use ranged weapons in addition to hunters, of course? But, yeah, that kind of obviously faded over time. Uh, at this point, our quest is to make the run longer by giving you Giga Chat. Yeah. And I won't complain. It's easier when I have a lot of stuff to read and uh, respond to. But definitely going to extend the run. The unfortunate thing is the more chat moves, the less time I'll probably have later on to play Classic Hardcore. But I'm definitely going to be doing Classic Hardcore tomorrow. So I will say there's a decent chance that I don't have time for it at the end of this stream. I'll have to see. But, um, I, like, I started the stream a little bit late, right? So, we started, like, two hours late, and I, you know, probably gonna end up taking a decent amount of time to do this run, so, I don't know. I'd love to be able to play a little bit at the end, but I think it'll just be better, especially because I have a classic raid in, like, TOGC afterwards, so... 
I don't want to basically immediately end the stream and then jump into classic raid because then I'll just be like exhausted when I need to focus to, you know, obviously not fuck up and not screw the 50 chest. So I want to at least take like an hour or two break before my raid, which means I'll have to end within the next three hours. And I think uh, we probably at least have definitely two hours left in the run, probably three. So I think by the time we finish this run, I don't know if there'll be time for classic hardcore. Though, who knows? Maybe I end up doing this really quickly. Hard to say for sure. I'll play it by ear. Sorry for backseating you. Uh, no, that's fine. I mean, especially I I don't mind you backseating because I know like you like I was asking you about Fury Warrior stuff the other day. Um, but you should use Bloodthirst on cooldown before prioritizing Rampage. Okay. So Bloodthirst is better than Rampage. And then is Raging Blow just like a filler when I have nothing else? I would imagine um, that's the priority. Uh, impending victory for larger pulls? Yeah. I will eventually take impending victory, right? So I will get a point spent in that, but I'd rather get to the midsection and take a lot of really good talents down there before switching to that. Uh, okay, so hold on. The Now I can equip new stuff. So, it's, it's Ghost Elixir goes there, Golem Blood Potion goes there, and like that's it for now. But then I can equip my actual gear, and that's definitely going to be very helpful. I also need to remember to refresh Darkmoon Fair Buff fairly soon, but I still have time before I need to do that. All right. Uh, did I get everything? One more point I can spend on... Let's spend this on sidearms so that I'll end up picking Barbaric Training right after I take Improved Whirlwinds, which works out well. Um, I feel like you should mention that my leveling guide is the only reason why you have a max level on retail. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I guess it's maybe not necessarily good to hear that, because hopefully Blizzard would make the new player experience easy enough that people don't need to rely on leveling guides and can figure it out on their own, but I guess I'm glad that I helped you level with my guide. Well, that definitely is good to hear. Uh, let's do Goblin Glider. want to not fuck this up, and then after I do this, can read the rest of chat. Uh, what's the deal with Zerla Caverns? Is it just a case of flying around and killing rares? In fact, no. Rares are... Rares in Zerla Caverns are completely not worth doing. Uh, if you have not watched my How to Get Caught Up in Dragonflight video yet, definitely do that, because I talk about Zerla Caverns. I mention, like, the stuff that is worth doing within it. Basically, campaign is good, uh, world events are good, world quests are good, uh, there's a lot of good things. Anything that gives, like, Lone Niffin rep, the rares just give absolutely garbage in Zerla Caverns. I would not recommend doing them. Um, Warriors having a gun option makes zero sense. Honestly, Surprise Blizzard never changed it. Well, it made sense back in Classic. In fact, having a ranged weapon in Classic, it wasn't just, like, completely useless back then. It was actually very helpful. I don't remember when Warriors got Heroic Throw, but until you got Heroic Throw, using your ranged weapon was one of the only ways that you can pull mobs from a distance and then get them grouped up. So, obviously in the modern era, I agree that it doesn't really have any impact, but um, definitely was not completely useless. It made a lot of sense at the time, and like if you play Classic, you can definitely see why that was the case. Uh, cheers from Brazil. Thank you, Rafael Garcia. Uh, thank you for stopping by the stream. I, I have a lot of friends and family in Brazil, so definitely cool. Uh, personally, don't mind if certain specs don't fit into rating. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I disagree with that. I think that obviously you're not going to be able to make every single spec fit into like a world first rating comp. But I disagree that specs should just not be able to fit into rating at all. There should not be a spec that just, yeah, this spec just can't work for raids. I think that sucks. Because if you enjoy that spec and you want to raid, then you have to swap. And that sucks. I think you should be able to at least make anything work if you, um, 
like, are really dedicated. Uh, but as it stands, there are some specs that, you know, you can't really make work. And it, you know, it's it's lame when that's the case. So, yeah, I, I definitely strongly disagree if that is the case. I think at this level, unfortunately, I can only really press Whirlwind for AoE. Just because none of my other abilities actually cleave until I get improved Whirlwind. Because Fury Warrior seems like it's so built on the idea that, you know, your Whirlwind makes your single target abilities cleave that you only have this one actual AoE ability. Which just kind of, at this level, before I have access to it, kind of feels bad. I honestly think if that is the main way that Fury Warriors do AoE, Blizzard should really move Improved Whirlwind up higher into the tree because it feels bad just effectively not being able to AoE at this level other than spamming Whirlwinds. I guess Whirlwind isn't terrible though. Like this isn't the worst AoE ability I've ever used, but... It's also partially because I've stacked Death Wish up to five times, and it's just doing a lot of damage. You have a Razor Naga, uh, fully customizable. It's nice and recommended. Nice. Um, Jesuit Lucas said, is there any way to boost 60 to 70? I mean, you can, right? I'm not going to discuss boosting, though. If you want to boost, you can do it, but you're, <laughs> you're in the wrong place if you want advice on how to boost characters. Yes, there's elites that you can kill, right? Uh, chat loves that you take your time to answer. It's like a relaxing podcast. Yeah. I mean, I figure that's most what most people think. It's usually only one or two, like, vocal people who just haven't been to the stream before, and they pop in, ask a question, get mad that I don't immediately answer their question, and then start typing, like, wow, this guy's not responding. Is this pre-recorded? Like, shit like that. I know for a fact that most of the people, especially the regular stream watchers, know that I will eventually read everything. And I will eventually answer the question, and I know that you guys like that, so. I definitely don't plan on changing that, um, but, I don't know. I don't even necessarily feel bad about that guy being mad, because, like, at that point, you know, I can understand somebody being, like, a little bit surprised, like, wow, is he, like, what is he even reading from? Like, why is he not answering my question? But, like, some people are nice about doing that when you start, like, typing in all caps and just acting blatantly entitled because WAS streamer didn't immediately respond to you. That's just, like, fuck off. You know, I, I'm not even willing to put up with that. Chat is like what Baron's chat was in vanilla. Horrible, but you can't look away. I'd like to think that my chat is generally much better than, um, you know, a lot of chats I've seen. I mean, a lot of you guys actually ask really good questions, and it's, like, fun to think about and, like, come up with, like, a good answer and stuff. So, uh, I absolutely don't mind chat. But you get, like, the stupid people no matter where you go, right? That just happens. But... That's unavoidable, just in life in general. Um, let's see. So, Bloodthirst first, Raging Blow as a dump. Um, yeah, Execute obviously takes priority. That makes sense. I mean, that's a, always a thing. Uh, I can also queue for dungeons again, so I'll just do that. Obviously, it would be tank when I get it. And one more PvP talent. Uh, I could do Blood Rage, yeah. I think my Rage generation is low enough that I wouldn't mind doing Blood Rage. Maybe I'll do put it on R. As a DK, DK as a whole needs some, or some looking at. Blood definitely does. I think Blood DK needs a bit of a rework. I don't know what the issue is with Frosten and Holy. I think most Frost DKs are pretty happy with the spec. At least most of the ones I know. I could be wrong. And I think a lot of Unholy DKs enjoy the playstyle as well, so... I don't think a ton of people would necessarily agree that it really needs to be looked at. But obviously everybody has different opinions and stuff like that, so who knows. Uh... Raging- oh, you said Raging Blow, not Rampage. Okay. So let me reread what you said. You should Bloodthirst on cooldown before using Raging Blow. So, Execute over Rampage over Bloodthirst over Raging Blow. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Trusted Source gives the wrong suggestions. Yeah. Now you're good. 
Warrior tanking and classic. Uh, oh, hold on, let me do this. I guess I don't really think I'll be able to stack Death Wish up a ton against like a target like this, but might as well. The question is, is Death Wish on the global cooldown? It is. Yeah, I feel like in that case, Death Wish probably is only worth using on stuff like before, where I'm going to be in extended combat for a long period of time. Can I keep it rolling outside of combat? Looks like I can. So in that case, it actually... Eh. Like, I can turn in this quest, and then right before it falls off, I Death Wish again. And now it's stacked up to five times. So, obviously, if I have a long way to travel, then I guess it's not worth using. But if I can very quickly refresh Death Wish, then that's probably worth doing. So... Hold on, let me... I also, um... I just hit 31, so I can take Improved Whirlwinds. So now I should be able to do actual AoE. So, keep Death Wish up. Oh, well, there we go. It dungeon Q procs. I'm gonna try to quickly kill all of these mobs. Just because they should have respawned. Assuming I get a good dungeon, then by the time I'm out, these guys carrying the weapons will have respawned, and I'll just be able to do that really quick. Come on, mana tombs. Ah. Same one again? Fucking hell. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the reality of when you don't complete a dungeon, there is just a chance you get absolutely no repeat dungeon protection, and you can just get the same one back to back to back to back to back. Um, so... Really not a big deal, because we've kind of already gotten all the good dungeons, like I said before. I would love to get mana tombs, but it's whatever. Does not actually matter. Uh, Warrior Tinking Classic literally needed a ranged weapon to raid. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Warriors and Rogues are now still able to use guns and ranged weapons as more of a legacy thing. Completely use useless, but why remove it? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, there's no reason to change it now. I don't think so. See that. Can also um did I hit three targets with improved whirlwind? I did. So now I can rampage there and then bloodthirst and that should AoE. Oh yeah, that is nice. Uh so death wish again. Whirlwind and then AoE rampage. I'm still in the habit of using Whirlwind as an AoE. It also looks like... Unless I saw that incorrectly, I think if you're... The primary target of your Rampage dies, it stops cleaving onto multiple targets. So I need to be careful about that. I also need to make sure I'm relying on Victory Rush properly to keep myself alive. Because Death Wish is really good, but... Uh, if I... Don't Victory Rush properly, then it could uh, kind of bite me in the ass. Yeah. Uh, oh, I let my Death Wish fall off? I thought I refreshed it. I guess I forgot. The nice thing, though, is stacking up Death Wish outside of combat with Second Wind is actually pretty easy so that's really not too bad at all and then just refresh that bloodthirst okay we didn't get the plans right out of the gate death wish again hopefully this laborer has it if not that'll there we go perfect okay didn't have to kill any extras to get that I will say, maintaining Death Wish, it's fun, but it's requiring me to focus a lot more than I would normally like. Okay. Uh, keep Death Wish up. Hmm. 
going to refresh it and then immediately mount up. And hopefully by the time I get in combat again, I should be able to keep it at five stacks. Uh, and one second left. Nice. Barely refreshed it. Oh, there's no mobs in here for me to charge to. Unlucky. Uh, Jade West said, you leveled six alts in retail for my guide. All of them are around 415-ish because of my how to get caught up on uh, video. And now you're watching all my Dungeons and Wrath guides. Much love. You're from Brazil too. Oh, awesome. And yeah, the Wrath guides, those ones I made a while ago. So like I would say there's some of my, I wouldn't say older videos because they're only like a year old at this point. Uh, but they, they still hold up. I think they're good dungeon guides. I've definitely looked... And I cannot find a single Wrath Dungeon Guide better than mine. Obviously, I'm biased, but I put a lot of work into those guides, and a lot of the other Dungeon Guides you'll see are just bare-bones coverage just to get clicks. Like, it says absolutely nothing basic, like, reading the Dungeon Journal shit. Like, I actually went in, read about every single little ability, and gave tips on, like, how to handle every single dungeon. And I stayed with it. I'm, like, one of the only people who actually continued and made it uh, Trial of the Champion, whatever the dungeon version is, guide. A lot of the other people who made all those, like, launch dungeon guides didn't actually make one for um, Trial of the Champion, which, you know, hey, if you're gonna make dungeon guides, at least follow through, right? And of course, I'll make one for uh, the ICC dungeons as well, because my Wrath dungeon guides have done pretty well. I've gotten good reception from them, so I definitely plan on continuing it. And then whenever Cataclysm Classic comes out, I'm... Maybe I shouldn't already be, like, slowly pl working on some of the, the stuff for Cataclysm Classic Dungeon Guides, but there's a lot of dungeons in Cataclysm, and if I want to be able to tackle that all in a timely manner, I'm probably going to need to start preparing already, even though it probably won't come out for another year. But I've slowly begun, like, work in the background for those, because, like, the dungeon guides take a while to make. Like, that is a lot of effort that goes into those, at least making them, like, really polished, so... Uh, the Cataclysm ones I want to make even better, because the reality of Wrath Dungeons is, like, they're, some of them are slightly challenging, but none of them are, like, really, really, really hard. But I know for a fact, like, Cata Heroics, if they don't, you know, bring in the nerfed versions, are going to be somewhat challenging. So I want to make sure I have really, really, really good guides for all of the Cata Heroics, because I think that is something that a lot of people will be interested in doing. So I'm already looking into that. I've been looking into that for a little while now just to make sure that when it eventually comes out, I have all that ready to go. Uh, thank God for my stream. You're farming the Zandalari rares and Pandaria for the Shadow Pan Insignias for the rep. And without my stream, you would have gone insane by now. Awesome. I'm glad it's been helping distract you. You're all for off-meta picks, but you can never see something like Feral that was made to be a good solo class that is versatile but doesn't have group utility be a high-end raid spec. Sure, but yeah, there's like a lot of people who really like Feral. And I mean, honestly, Feral, I would say, is in a fine spot now. They honestly offer enough utility to at least justify bringing one if needed. Like, I'm not saying every single class needs to be ridiculously meta, right? Like, obviously, you're only ever going to bring one Feral. You're only ever going to bring one Survival Hunter in their current state. Obviously, Sepulcher, the first one's not standing. You know, that raid had ridiculously good Survival Hunter tier bonuses, so you just stack them. But outside of little edge cases like that, generally speaking, for those off-meta DPS, you only bring one or two, and I think that's fine. The only issue is at certain points, like Survival Hunter at many cases, you just couldn't even justify bringing a single one. And I would say Survival Hunter right now is actually kind of teetering on that level, whereas Feral Druid, yeah, Feral's not amazing, but... It does good enough damage, and it at least has some utility, like, it brings another Stampeding Roar, and there's, like, a decent amount of Druid utility that helps in certain fights, where if you have somebody who's just an absolute fucking god at Feral, and, you know, you have a spare melee spot, you don't feel bad bringing a single Feral right now. But a case like Survival Hunter, right, where you can have a really good Survival Hunter and you'll still feel bad about bringing a Survival Hunter because they're probably still going to be doing lower damage than everybody else and they offer absolutely zero utility at the moment. So it's just it's kind of tragic, the situation that Survival is in, a lot of people are in. Uh, what's my opinion on a Tinker class? Could be cool, yeah. Obviously, depends on the implementation, but... 
like aesthetically, I think, yeah, Tinker Class could be a very cool idea. I would be absolutely down if they implemented it properly. Uh, okay, this is scaling at least. Uh, worst part of chat is new folks and regular trolls, except you, you're the cool troll. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Why did my dad swap accounts midstream? I don't know why he does that. Uh, let's see. This is like a podcast message is so true. You had the stream up for 30 minutes without looking at it. Yeah. A lot of people watch it like that. Uh, Bring it Tin said, Hey, Harlden, do you know perhaps when the next XP buff is going to be? No idea. Uh, probably not for a while, I would say. Good news, though, for 60 to 70 leveling in particular, assuming the data mining stuff is correct, Turbulent Timeways next month, whenever that is, I guess it's not really showing on the calendar. It's on the PTR. Um, whenever Turbulent Timeways is up, that'll be a really good way to level from 60 to 70. Ironically, not through Time Walking Dungeons, or at least not exclusively through Time Walking Dungeons, but with the new events that they're adding, the uh, the Dream Surges combined with the Time Walking 30% buff that they're adding, that's effectively like a really big leveling thing, but that does not impact any level uh, 10 to 60 characters. So stuff like Winds of Wisdom, I don't expect anything to happen soon, especially because the next XP buff will obviously be the anniversary, which is November. And considering we're getting the Turbulent Timeways fairly soon, and I doubt they're going to add anything on top of that, that is kind of like filling their quota for their like every few months experience bonus that they usually do. And then the next one will be the always present anniversary buff that increases by 1% every single year. And then we probably won't see Wis Winds of Wisdom again until like early 2024. Uh, that's just kind of the reality of the way Blizzard does things. So yeah, for low level stuff, outside of anniversary buff, don't expect much anytime soon. Obviously, I'm not a prophet, though, so, like, I could be wrong. Blizzard could just say, hey, we're doing Winds of Wisdom again very soon. Ooh, okay, who knows? Um, but I'm more talking, like, based on historical precedent, probably not going to be a while. Uh, let's see. That guy was outright rude? Yeah, exactly. For sure. It had nothing to do with, like, you know, the pace of reading chat. That was just a rude way to do it regardless, so... Okay, one more talent point. So I know Rox said to go for Cold Steel Hot Blood, and then I'll take Barbaric Training here. I can use a Golem Blood Potion here too, that'll help. Execute. Rampage. Nice. Uh, what is the meaning of life, and why is it speedrunning WoW? Oh boy. I hope the meaning of life isn't speedrunning WoW, or that means I've peaked. Uh, don't rework blood, it's the most fun tank spec. Ask any experienced tank player. You mean like me? Well, as somebody who I think it's safe to say I'm an experienced tank player, um, no. No. Blood is the least fun tank to play, actually. In fact, I think most experienced tank players would agree. I've heard that opinion somewhere that, oh yeah, experienced tank players love playing blood. Eh, that's a hard, hard uh, pass for me. No, I don't really like playing blood. I used to like playing blood. I liked playing blood when the design of it wasn't fucking trash. I like the idea of Deathstrike giving you control over your survivability, but the spec just feels fucking awful to play right now. It's not fun, so... Obviously, it's my opinion, right? You know, I know a lot of people do like blood, and I know you may, like, obviously you said you like blood, so I'm sure you would disagree with me on that, but no, as an experienced tank player, I think blood is fucking dog shit, and I think it desperately needs a rework. I used to love blood back in mop, mop wad, and yeah, actually just mop and wad. Obviously, before then it was fine too, but uh, that's mostly when I played it, and they absolutely ruined it in Legion, and it has been boring as sin to play ever since. The only time it was slightly fun to play was, uh, what's it called? Uh, Sepulchre of the First Ones. The Dancing Rune Weapon builds, yeah, it was okay. Uh, everything else sucked. Not fun. 
And it's like, I mean, if you really like playing a reactive, you know, healing-based tank, I get it. I understand why you can play Blood. But the thing is, as somebody who did play Blood back when it was really fun, when it was really good, whenever I play Blood now, I'm just like, this sucks. This is just such a worse version of what this spec used to be. Like, why would I play this? Especially when you have Vengeance, which Vengeance obviously isn't exactly the same, but it is a reactive healing-based tank that is just infinitely more fun to play. So, no, Blood absolutely needs a redesign and it doesn't even really need a redesign it just needs them to finally give up on this garbage bone shield crap that they've been trying to pedal for the last how many expansions which just has never really worked has never been interesting it's just a garbage mechanic garbage design i don't know a single person who's like yeah i love bone shield just fucking bring back wad blood dk man like it was just so much better, way more fun. Every single person I know preferred it compared to what we have now. Uh, you've been playing WoW on and off for months trying to get into M+. Pretty comfortable with uh, Fury and Unholy, but have been toying with the idea of leveling a sub-rogue. Yeah, nice. I mean, those are all good options. Sub-rogue, I'm pretty sure is good at the moment. Though I haven't, like, super followed it. Can't say for absolute certain. I'm also like, at least for small pulls like this, I'm not going to worry about keeping up Death Wish because having to track the timing on Death Wish uh, while keeping up with chat is just not doable. Um, I won't be able to do that properly. So if I'm doing like a large pull, I'll manage Death Wish. If I'm doing small pulls like this, I can't be fucking bothered. I'll press it once in between combat. Okay, I need... One more Drudge Boat Salvage. Perfect. There we go. Quest done. Uh, good news is that the HTTP, HTTPS will probably work in a couple of days. The bad news is www.harlden.com also might break in a couple of days. What the fuck? Okay, you'll have to explain that to me after the stream what that means. Um... Yeah, let me know what you mean by that. I'm trying to read it in chat. It, it chops your link in the middle, but it still should work. It just abbreviates long links and puts a dot dot dot, but the link is still the entire thing. I don't know how far behind I am on that. I don't know when my dad sent that message. Fine, blueprints. Let's see. When did I switch from Prot to Fury? Was it a set point? Uh, I swapped when I finished dungeons. Um, yeah. So kind of a set point. Uh, it was around level 30. Uh, hold on. Something I... Um... Somebody pointed out that this is probably Covenant Mission Helper that's causing this issue. And I think I disabled it on the PTR, but I forgot to do that on live servers. So I will do that real quick. If Curse Forge will load. The Curse Forge is taking forever to load. Come on. There we go. Jesus, that was slow. Uh retail. Where is Covenant? Yeah, there we go. Covenant mission helper. Delete add-on. Okay. So hopefully this problem shouldn't happen in the future now that I've dis or deleted that add-on. Um did a Curse 24 uh, Brachonide Hollow that was timed and almost plus 2'd. The leader accidentally activated the key early, so you grouped up a massive first pull without Incarn. Ooh. Nice. Yours is by far the best dungeon guides. Helped you so much tanking as you're new to Wrath Classic. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely tried to approach it from a tanking perspective, so I'm glad that that was helpful. I think I've gotten all of the, uh, the major quests. This quest I'm not going to do again. I think that's the one where, or no, it's a different quest that I'm thinking of then. Uh, right? What am I? Hold on, Shadow Moon Valley. Okay, yeah, I'm on Kiana Moon Shadow. For some reason, I misread that initially. Five minute warning on XP boost. Okay, I, I guess I refreshed it before I saw that. Um, kind of timestamps where I am on chat then. Uh, the other heroic plus plus guides. Oh, I. It snapped down. The other Heroic Plus and Heroic Plus Plus guides were terrible. You're still on the fence about starting Classic, but holy shit, the guides out there for the most part are useless. Yeah. 
A lot of people will just literally make a quote unquote guide for any sort of new content, even if they have absolutely nothing to say on the subject, just because they know they can put guide or whatever in the title and get free clicks. And it's one of those things where like as a short term getting views type of thing, it works, but I'd like to think that by only covering things that I can actually provide insight into and make a very detailed guide, uh, it takes me a lot more effort and in the end I probably in the short term lose out to a lot of those people who just farm clicks, but obviously my hope is that in the long term people see the quality that I put into this stuff, and I think over time that has definitely been the case, so uh, gonna keep doing that. But it definitely sucks seeing people do shit like that, surface level, just non-existent guides, and still get views for it, which is, yeah, whatever. That's what happens. Um, I think you're better off pressing Rampage before Execute instead of the other way around. Ramp gives him Rage, so it makes Execute hit harder for Mastery. That's fair. Yeah, I can see that. Cata Heroic Dungeons was the start of something actually, or was the start of actual challenging Heroic Dungeons? Yeah. My stream is playing in the background while you follow your guide for my mage, or my guide for your mage, right? Um, sadly, you don't have all heirlooms leveled up. Yeah, you don't need heirlooms, but obviously it helps. Okay, Rampage. Then I can do another Death Wish. Does Death Wish cost Rage? No. So if I have nothing to press, it's just free to press Death Wish because, you know, it just costs health. And I can quickly regen that anyway, it doesn't matter. Also, the moment I drop combat, I'm going to quickly refresh Lemon Herb Filet, and then we'll fly back to the garrison and turn in Kiana Moonshadow. You're underestimating Survival Hunters. Their damage isn't amazing, and it's fine. Uh, they may not bring a lot of utility, but they can CC a lot of things. I'm, I was more talking for raids, but yeah, you're probably correct that like in dungeons, that's a lot of good utility. Uh, Tinker class would have to do a lot to not look like engineering just turned into a class. I mean, honestly, I'd be fine with engineering just turned into a class. But I think there's enough creative things that they could do with it to make it work on its own. Uh, oh, fuck, I have to... I'm trying to click on the NPC and I keep clicking on the actual mission table. Yep, yep, yep. I hate these pop-ups every single time. All right. Uh, 10 minutes until I can pick up. Yeah, Migrant Workers is the quest that I didn't want to do. Right? Yeah. So. 10 minutes and I can queue for another dungeon. I'm probably just going to keep queuing on cooldown just to see if I hit Mana Tombs. If I don't hit Mana Tombs, whatever. But... Eventually, there's a chance that we hit it. It is not easier to guide you if you fade out of sight. Um, or was I? How many dungeons were there in the first patch of Kata? I think it was like a pretty standard amount of dungeons. It wasn't anything crazy. Like Kata had around eight or so dungeons. We can check actually. We can just open up the adventure guide. So Cataclysm had. Blackrock Caverns, Heroic Dead Mines, Grim Bratoll, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 dungeons. So yeah, I was around correct with 8. And then it had, like, obviously a bunch of reworked dungeons at lower levels, uh, and then you had Zulaban and Zulgrub were added fairly early on. So if they do Cataclysm Classic, they may just add Zulgrub and Zulaban at the start. I don't know if they would do an entire phase for that, because it was just the two dungeons, which... I mean, even at the time, I remember thinking that was kind of lame that all we got were those dungeons, like, for an entire patch. So I could see that being released alongside the other raids. I think the only reason I could see that maybe not happening is because it would kind of make the early Cataclysm gearing process a little bit easier. You'd probably just farm the shit out of Zulamon and Zulgrub, but... Eh. Maybe they could, like, retune the item levels or something. I don't know how they will handle that. Well, I guess we'll have to see. It's entirely speculation on my part at this stage. But, yeah, we had nine dungeons. So that's still a decent amount. It's around the same as Wrath, I think. Wrath maybe had, like, 11? A few more? But, obviously, the difference with Kata dungeons is they were way, way more fleshed out when compared to 
um, the other, like, Wrath Dungeons. A lot of Wrath Dungeons are just really basic and whatnot. They don't have a ton of mechanics. There's still ways you can wipe, and there's still things you can know, which is why I go into more depth in my guides by far than any of the other guides out there. Because it's not as simple as, like, this is completely free and there's no way you can wipe. There absolutely are ways that you can wipe in a lot of the um, uh, Wrath Dungeons, but Cataclysm is just night and day. There's actual mechanics, like, really difficult stuff that you need to worry about. And if you don't do it properly, you will die. So, I will need to make actual detailed guides for that, like, way, way more detailed than I did for uh, Wrath. Um, let's see. You would love a Necromancer class? I mean, I, I've seen people bring that up a lot, but, like, isn't that literally just Unholy Death Knight? Like, Necromancer, the class fantasy of it is you resurrect dead minions to fight for you. So it, it's effectively just a caster version of Unholy Death Knight. But I feel like that is one of the things where the design space, I feel, is just a little bit too limited. It, you can't really properly separate uh, Unholy and, like, pure Necromancer. Maybe if you really wanted to, but there would be just so much design overlap that I just, I don't know. I personally don't um, think there'd be enough room for that. Uh, how do I not get bored of leveling so many characters uh, streaming? If I was leveling this without the stream, I would probably be bored. But, you know, the first off, we're leveling characters for a purpose, right? So I have a reason to do this. I'm leveling this character to test out Fury so that I can eventually make a tier list and see how good Fury is compared to everything else. So that means I have a goal in mind. I'm not just leveling, like, character number 500 or whatever. Uh, makes it more interesting. What the hell? Oh, this is the tail ring thing. Uh, but then also, like I said, it's the streaming aspect of it. Obviously, uh, streaming this makes it more fun because I get to talk to chat, so I'm not just like sitting here mindlessly leveling while uh, watching something on Hulu. Wish they would add joyous, joyous Journeys in retail. I mean, they literally have, though. It's called Winds of Wisdom. It's just not called Joyous Journeys, but they have done something exactly like Joyous Journeys with a different name. Uh... Is retail fun? I think so. Not for everybody. Okay, now we stop doing these particular quests and we can go do the bonus objective. Um, I'll pick up Seismic Reverb. Uh, Cold Steel Hot Blood. You keep getting the wrong insignias as well. At this rate, you'll be exalted with Klaxi and Golden Lotus before the Shadow Pan. Damn, that sucks. Uh, here we go. Blood is incredibly fun to play sometimes and incredibly annoying to play other times. It really depends on the patch. Yeah. You enjoyed it last season. You enjoyed it in Raid. It feels like shit in Dungeons, though. That's fair. Yeah, and I can understand how for people who really enjoy Blood and maybe don't necessarily love Vengeance, they may not have many alternatives, but I am especially jaded towards modern Blood DK as somebody who did play almost exclusively Blood DK, a little bit of Brewmaster, for all of MOP, all of WAD, I absolutely love the playstyle, and then they just completely gutted it. I still remember with just hate, absolute hatred, reading the redesign post for Legion when they said, when looking at Blood DK, we wanted to think of what the most iconic ability for Blood was and rebuild the spec around that, and we thought the most iconic Blood ability was Bone Shield. And I'm like, you fucking what? The most iconic Blood Death Knight ability is Bone Shield. In what fucking universe is that the most iconic ability? Like, ask literally any Blood DK what is their most iconic ability, and they will all say Death Strike. And the most fun thing about playing Blood was having, like, you know, gigantic Death Strike hits and just doing ridiculous single target damage with Death Strikes. And, like, Blood Boil was also, I would say, a close second, right? And they just completely redesigned the entire playstyle and gutted everything that made Blood fun because they wanted you to play with fucking garbage-ass Marrow Rend and fucking, um, like, Bone Shield mechanics and whatnot. And it has never, ever once worked. The only fun playstyle that Blood has ever had since Legion has been the Dancing Rune Weapon build, which mostly revolved around using Heart Strike, which, Heart Strike's whatever. I mean, I don't hate it, but... It played a lot like Breath of Sindragosa build from back in WAD. And um, 
Yeah, it had absolutely fucking nothing to do with Bone Shield. I guess you kept Bone Shield up, right? Because you had to, because it's forced into the class fantasy. But they haven't actually done anything remotely interesting with Bone Shield. And now they have Shattering Bone. Woo! When you take damage sometimes, you get a passive proc of damage that explodes. And for whatever fucking reason is so overtuned that it is like a huge chunk of your damage. And Blood Decays need to actually be actively hit by abilities and make like auto attacks and stuff to do a huge chunk of their damage. Wow, that is such an interesting, amazing design space that they've been exploring ever since Legion. I'm really glad they finally hit their stride by making it so generic Thorns damage is the class fantasy for Blood DK. It's just, it's so fucking garbage. Like, just throw out the Bone Shield shit. They've been trying to make it work for so many expansions, and anyone who played Blood and Mop and Wad could tell you that it was just never gonna fucking work because Bone Shield fucking sucks. It's a boring ability. You just put up little fucking bones that twirl around you, and they do nothing. They give you armor, and then they, like, break when they get hit. Who fucking cares? The entire class fantasy of Blood has always been big self-healing. You take a bunch of damage, you heal it back. You know, big meaty death strikes are what made Blood fun. So, I am still incredibly jaded as somebody who adored the old Blood play style. Honestly, outside of Vengeance DH, nothing is, like you know, really made me enjoy tanking as much as Old Blood did. And, yeah, they just completely fucking ruined it. And whereas, like, Brewmaster Monk, I really, really liked Wad Brewmaster. And Legion Brewmaster definitely was a step down, in my opinion. But I think over time, they did enough cool stuff with Brewmaster that I'm like, okay, you know, I still preferred Wad Brewmaster but I at least can kind of enjoy this new playstyle. Currently, I don't love Brewmaster in Dragonflight. It's not terrible, and they're at least trying to improve it a little bit. But, man, um, Blood DK, I just, I don't really think they've ever actually managed to make it good. I know uh, Naomi's probably going to disagree with that. A lot of other people in chat are going to disagree with that. But that is my personal opinion on Blood. I just can't fucking stand it. I play it because, right, it's one of those things where certain fights require you to play Blood DK. So, there have been multiple tiers now where despite absolutely vehemently hating the current Blood DK design, I will suck it up and I'll play Blood DK because you know what? It's what you gotta do. If a fight requires mass grip, you play Blood DK and you suck it up and you mass grip those mobs. But I will hate it every second that I actually have to play it. Until they rework it. Which, hopefully, hopefully, eventually happens. Please rework Blood DK. Used to love it, so yeah. I I don't know, Jason Ward. Maybe you agree with me on all that, but uh, yeah, I also used to love Blood DK, and I'm not asking for like the fundamental stuff to be changed. I just think I feel like the rework that Blood DK got back in Legion did it dirty, and it has been just kind of a shell of its former self ever since. So I want them to basically undo the rework they did back in Legion and just give us actual Blood DK, the Blood DK that everyone actually has fun with. That was the playstyle that I think most people really enjoyed. I think the thing with DKs and a lot of specs is that a lot of people complain they dumbed them down too much, especially with the runes. I mean, they did, right? That's that's an entirely separate issue. They did dumb down Blood DK. You're not wrong. But, uh, I mean, that's not my biggest issue with it, for sure. This is speaking as someone who often mains Blood when possible due to the cheesy shit they can do. Yeah. Uh, you miss one GC with blood and a high key and you die. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, that can apply to a lot of tanks. Blood especially, it's like more punishing because of the reactive playstyle, but yeah. Uh, Death Wish, charge in. I'm going to Lust and do Potion here. I've learned my lesson with using this stupid Call to Arms ability. It just keeps you in combat forever and it fucking sucks ass. So I'm not using that here. This mob will chain stun you, though, which really sucks. Yeah, I might have killed that slightly faster if I used the Call to Arms ability, but then it would have done the same shit it did the other weekend, where it just non-stop pulls mobs and just keeps shooting the birds like up in the sky and keeps me in combat for like literally a minute long that was so toxic breath of Sindragosa blood dk and wad was so much fun completely agree absolutely my favorite blood dk play style breath of Sindragosa blood fucking slapped 
Love that. Played all tanks at a very high level before. Um, yeah. They could keep Bone Shield, just drop the stacks, Ossuary. I mean, yeah, Bone Shield existed before. Like, Bone Shield, when it was just literally a fire and forget whatever, like, you put it up whenever it was, like, before a pull, and then it just had 10 stacks. And whenever it expired, you just threw it back up again. Right? It had, like, what, a one-minute cooldown back in WAD, and it was just effectively a passive mitigation thing. And that's fine, right? Like, sure, having little bones flying around you is cool and all. It's when that became the entire design of the spec that I'm just like, why? Nobody finds that fun. I Maybe, like I said, there's maybe one dude in chat who's like, I love maintaining Bone Shield and pressing Marrow Rend and uh, who fucking knows. But personally, I just find that playstyle to be fucking boring. Uh, pain and Gain. Uh, I can queue for dungeons again. Are we going to get the Underbog five times in a row or however many times it's been? Probably, honestly. I think we're now just cursed and we're just going to repeatedly get Underbog until we actually complete it. If I get Underbog again, I actually may go and kill the first boss to at the very least reset my, um, like, fucked uh, copy RNG. Because at the very least then it'll force the game to give me a new dungeon. I don't know, though. How is Prot Warrior right now? Eh. It's not bad. It's not good. Prot Warrior is fine. Tank balance in general is good. So, like, if you're good at Prot Warrior, you're going to be fine. But it's like, Prot Warrior is definitely not up there with, like, the best M plus tanks at the moment. But I mean, if you just want to get your portals, then you can absolutely get your portals with Prot Warrior. Which is, I mean, honestly, the only thing that most people care about, right? Um... They can legitimately not tank things that a Guardian hardly drops below 90% on, yeah. Uh, let me scroll up. I'm not in a stance. Oh, fuck, you're correct. Huh. Yeah, uh, when I queued for dungeons, it looks like it dropped my stance. Uh, good catch. I missed that before. Uh, Naomi said, you get that bug with Covenant Mission Manager uninstalled. It might be what's causing it, but you think there's multiple things? That's fair. Uh, I mean, I don't know for sure if that's what it is. In lower keys, you like it, but as difficulty increases, the spec becomes unreliable. The margin of error with the playstyle is so little, yeah. Is the 60 Mage Tower Guardian Druid video still good to use? Yeah, you can. I mean, for the record, just to be clear, there is absolutely no advantage to doing the Mage Tower at level 60. I did the Mage Tower at level 60 entirely as a fun challenge. I've been told by some people that they think there's like a scaling thing that makes me stronger at level 60 compared to other stuff. I don't know if anyone ever officially confirmed that. I think it's just like cope, right? And that it just some people weren't pressing the right buttons. Generally speaking, I think it's accepted that doing this thing with more talents is going to be better than doing it with less talents. I did it purely as a fun challenge. And in terms of the general play style, nothing has changed, right? You, um, obviously, I mean, Guardian Druid has gotten a talent revamp, so there's a few new talents that you'll take, but definitely for the Mage Tower, you still run Moonfire builds. Like, I know some Guardian Druids are no longer running Moonfire build for, like, actual content. Um, there's, like, other options, but Moonfire build on the Mage Tower specifically is mandatory. Absolutely mandatory. Just because of the way that the tank challenge is designed. Because you need to stay out of range extensively on... Uh, the whatever Inquisitor dude. And if you aren't playing Heavy Moonfire and you're basically forced to be in melee, then you're going to really struggle to DPS through the first phase. And there's also just a bunch of little adds, right? Where just putting Moonfire up on a lot of those little adds, especially with Twin Moons and then cleaving them down, it's really hard to do otherwise. They also, I'm fairly certain they have something that like makes them susceptible to periodic damage. I could be wrong in that though. But yeah, I would say, generally speaking, the same build. You can still rely on it, but there's no reason to do it at 60. Unless, like me, you were just bored and wanted to do it for fun. Uh, if you just want the Mage Tower completion because you want the appearance and the fell werebear form, do it at level 60, or level 70, I mean. Uh, what's the most important leveling consumables to get? I have a guide on leveling consumables, so if you are curious... Uh, I don't think I've updated the FAQ with that, so I'll try to remember after the stream to post the link to that. But, I mean, it's one of my most recent videos. I literally uploaded it, like, 
I think on Monday of this past week. So if you check my channel, one of my most recent videos will be on leveling consumables and that should answer any questions you have. Somebody, okay, Pixelina said he made a recent video. Perfect, thank you. Give Shaman a tank spec, please. That would be awesome. Bard is your wish. I could see Bard. I mean, Bard in Final Fantasy works out really well. They could do a Necromancer skin for Demo Lock. That could be cool. Yeah. Uh, there's an add-on kill called Helkly. I think I've heard of that. Yeah, I mean... Personally, I would rather try to learn it myself. I... I'm not going to knock people for using rotation add-ons, but I will always say do not use rotation add-ons. If you find that you absolutely need it to play well, go for it. Uh, I will always say rotation add-ons are a crutch. Do not rely on them. I think it's not consistent enough to really teach you how to play. If you're just relying on like... Because if you, you are just pressing the general buttons in a specific order... One of the hardest things to figure out with, like, different classes and specs is knowing when to break the rules. Uh, Mechanar? I, I, honestly, Architraz, if I can just kill the first boss, I would not be super mad. This loading screen, though. Botanica. Um... You know what? I think I will at least kill the first boss. I normally have been leaving Botanica. But here's the thing. Botanica, I'm pretty sure... Oh, no. Yeah, you get all of these quests at the same time. Uh, I take it back. Yeah, I forgot. Wh what's the dungeon that gives you, like, periodic quests as you go through? So you can leave early. Um, oh, I really don't want to do Mechanica. Yeah, fuck it. I'm out. Um, yeah, because this one requires you to kill the first three bosses just for one quest. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that. I'm getting really bad loading screens today, though, and I'm not sure why. Like, it's consistently, every time I hit a loading screen, it takes me, like, ten seconds, which is way, way longer than normal. Also, now that I'm out of the dungeon, refresh Berserker Stance. And I need to re-equip my correct weapons. Yeah, I... Botanica technically is not terrible. It's just one of those, I'm not going to waste my time with it. A rogue rework should play into the Og... No, 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 no. If you like Og Evoker, you are wrong. Og Evoker is toxic for this game and should never have existed. I'm sorry, that is just the correct opinion. Um, I don't really even know what they're going to do with Agavoker because there is no future for this game in which Agavoker continues to exist in its current state. It, it was terrible from the concept. Uh, a support class like that should not exist in WoW. Literally anyone who actually plays this game would have been able to tell Blizzard that, and they tried telling Blizzard that. Blizzard went full steam ahead with it anyway, and now the game is fucked. Uh, so Blizzard is going to effectively need to turn augmentation into just a generic damage spec because they're probably not going to remove it outright. Uh, but the support capabilities of Agavoker just need to be fucking removed. It's a cool idea in paper that should never have gone past the design board um, state. And if it stays in this game, it, it's just going to become worse and worse and worse. And they're just going to have to keep doing band-aid fixes until they eventually realize the same thing that literally any person who raids realized the moment it got announced, which is this is fucking terrible for the game. Absolutely not. No other spec should go the way of Agavoker because Agavoker shouldn't fucking exist in the first place. I vehemently disagree with you. Uh, let's see. Don't forget Berserk Stance. So a few people pointed that out. Uh, Legion Redesign. Give Demonology Warlocks their demon form back. Yeah, that one's a little bit tricky. I know why they did it because of fucking um, Demon Hunter. I still think it sucks that Demonology lost a lot of their class identity. That said, I think enough people enjoy the current demonology playstyle that it's whatever. I know a lot of people obviously did really like old demo and are upset that it's now not here, but yeah, it's, um, I don't know, is what it is. Um, Death Strike by far, wasn't Bone Shield an unholy talent? It might have been, I don't know for sure. Bone Shield definitely was like a, 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 part however small a part of the blood dk class fantasy but it was not the main part of it not even close speaking of death knights how are dks and mythic and raiding uh they're good yeah 
Death Knights are always good, I would say. You always want at least like one or two Death Knights. Death Knights are also pretty good at handling certain mechanics. It may seem like they're bad because, you know, they have shit mobility, but the irony is that Death's Advance, in many cases, lets Death Knights handle abilities that other classes can't. The classic one that I can think of off the top of my head, which at this point is like fairly old, is uh, Zymox Seeds. Uh, obviously, mages were really good at that as well, but Death Knights handling the close Zymox Seeds was really good because you would just completely negate the pull on like some of the really hard overlaps with Death's Advance and just very easily handle that. So one of the hardest parts of that fight was just trivialized with a Death Knight tank or DPS. Usually you had a, a DPS do it anyway, but... Uh, Death Knight has, like, a lot of really nice utility. Obviously, grips are also just really, really important. Um, I don't know if DPS DKs still run A-Bomb Limb. I think they do. But, yeah, A-Bomb Limb is another, you know, just really good thing to have. Yeah, DKs are good. It's one of those where, as long as they still have very valuable utility, it it's unlikely that DKs will stop being at least pretty fucking good for uh, most situations. Uh, Shattering Bone is the worst talent ever be added to blood. Yep. Do I look at YouTube chat? Yes, I, I always look at YouTube chat. I literally spend the entire stream reading YouTube chat. That's a weird question. Um... Oh, fuck. I hate fucking CC in the open world. Just so toxic. Rampage. Nice. Uh, do I need BFA achievement to farm Draft of Ten Lands? I don't believe so. I, I don't know for sure, though. You have to remember, like, it's been forever since I've done BFA and lock stuff. So I haven't really looked onto it for a fresh account. So I'm not entirely sure what's required, but I don't believe you need anything special to be able to farm it. But yeah. Legion Blood DK was great. <laughs> Legion Blood DK, since the Legion rework, I think it peaked in Blood, or it peaked in Legion with like some of the stuff that it got from the artifact. But like class design in Legion was generally pretty good. But I would argue that like out of all of the tanks in Legion, like Blood DK was just the fucking worst. Or, obviously it was good, but the design of it. Like, Blood Decay was good, but the design was just fucking trash. It compared to every single other tank. Like, Vengeance was bad, but it had a really fun playstyle in Legion. Whereas Blood Decay was good, but it was just boring as shit. And I guess it's gotten worse since then, definitely. But class design in general has gotten worse since then. And while a lot of specs kind of bounced back, like, Vengeance made a huge comeback in terms of how fun it is to play with the Dragonflight changes, it's still not 100% there yet. Still needs a few tweaks, but massive improvements compared to Shadowlands, which took Vengeance in the complete wrong direction. But Blood DK, I just still think hasn't recovered from the Legion rework and still needs to be changed as a result. Um, only reason Legion Blood DK was great was the artifact ability. True, yeah. Uh, you remember the DK that soloed Sartharian No Drink in Wrath? Uh... I think, was that Mioni, right? Was that I, Mioni soloed a lot of stuff, so hard to say for sure. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, tips that might help. Oh, what did I? Oh, I missed the first message as that. That was a follow up message. Shit. So I need to wrap this pot. Uh, you're interested in learning the tank raids in WoW and you're leveling a Vengeance DH while watching. Uh, there are plenty of videos for tanking M plus for beginners, but your interest is only in raids. Do you have any tips that wouldn't be immediately apparent? Um, this is going to sound like a weird opinion, but don't play Vengeance. Uh, at least for raids. Like, look, I love Vengeance DH, and I I'm partially joking, obviously. Like, if you've been watching me play Vengeance and you think it looks really fun, I don't blame you, because it is really fun. Uh, but I will give you a big disclaimer. Vengeance is very, very, very hard to play, like, uh, correctly. You can scrape by, right? And I think you could probably tank raids with Vengeance just fine. But the thing with Vengeance is if you are not playing it correctly, it is just a worse Blood DK. 
And I think that's what a lot of uh, like players make the mistake of doing. They look at something like Vengeance, and I saw this a lot like in Shadowlands, where they would be like, well, Vengeance is good at like XYZ thing, but it's like Vengeance its main strength right now like it's it has some utility that blood decay doesn't have but mostly it's damage compared to blood uh its survivability is not there it can survive perfectly fine like i can live things but vengeance when not played properly will struggle with survivability i would say it is one of the hardest tanks to live on because a lot of its mitigation is very unintuitive so it is not a very good starter tank it's very good once you've, like, understood the tank fundamentals and you understand how, like, generally tanks play and how Vengeance kind of breaks those rules and plays a little bit differently. Then you can kind of uh, play it and get used to it. But I, I will give you that big warning. I love Vengeance. I definitely think it is very fun to play. Very, very hard to get into. Uh, it may not be the best tank to learn raid tanking on, for starters. Um, that being said, for general raid tanking tips... Uh, what are some good ones? I, it's it's kind of hard to think of like specific things because there's obviously a lot of like basic stuff for raid tanking, and it's hard to say how much of that is blatantly obvious and how much maybe is like not super intuitive. Um, most tank fights, right, revolve around positioning and like knowing when to taunt the boss. And obviously, like there are certain fights that have additional roles, right? But like if I look through Abaris. I just look through, generally speaking, um, like, all the fights. Like, uh, let me go to Dragonflight, Raids, Avarice. Like, what are the things... Uh, for the record, I obviously have a full Avarice guide. So if you're specifically looking for Avarice tips, I have that covered in my full Avarice guide. And it was written, of course, from my perspective, right? Which I tank. So anything relevant to tanks, you can be 100% sure is covered in that guide. Uh, I might have missed one or two little tips for healers... But I definitely didn't miss anything that would be relevant for tanks. But, like, at a glance, what are some of the things that you need to know to tank, like, every single boss in this raid? Not specifically for these bosses, but, like, the fundamentals. Kazara is basically just positioning and taunt at the right time. There is very little constant damage coming in, right? Like, Kazara's auto attacks tickle you. Uh, in fact, her debuff... Um, fucking, ugh, I hate when this happens... Uh, the dungeon journal just bugs out, and then I have to... Is it, does it work if I go back? There we go. Now it works. So her debuff, right, Terror Claws, it does damage over time, so it does a big chunk of damage, and then deals shadow damage every few seconds. But you'll notice it doesn't actually increase your damage taken from Kazara, other than specifically other applications of Terror Claws. That is not always the case. So understanding exactly what the Tank Buster does is important. Some tank busters will increase all of your damage taken. A good example of that is Echo of Neltharion. Calamitous Strike makes you take 200% increased physical damage for 37 seconds. Now, that obviously also means that Calamitous Strike itself will hit 200% harder if you take two in a row. But because it is just a physical damage buff and it isn't specifically, um, you know, just increased damage from Calamitous Strike, if you are taking auto attacks from Echo of Neltharion with the debuff, you'll be getting hit so much harder. Whereas Kazara, this only increases the damage of Terror Claws. So a lot of times, I'll take Terror Claws and then I'll hold Kazara for like, I don't know, whatever the time is in between the uh, applications, like 10 seconds or something, and just take her auto attacks and then my co-tank will taunt off whenever it's a good time for him. And that's totally fine because there's no modifier on auto attacks, stuff like that. And then Kazara itself, like without going into all the details of the fight, there are little portals that get dropped down, and like I said before, one of the main things for tanks in a lot of raids is positioning. So for Gazara specifically, it's you want to make sure that it's very easy for the DPS to attack the boss, especially the melee, to hit the boss and easily drop off their portals without having to like run all the way across the room. So this is less important on normal and heroic, but like on mythic, whenever you run out of space on one side of the room and you have, like, more portals on the other side, you want to kind of drag Kazara close to those portals, not right on top of it, but, like, kind of perpendicular to the portal set. That way, melee can still hit her without having to run super far away. And that is the case for a lot of stuff. Like, Amalgamation Chamber, um, like, there's a, obviously a taunt swap. So, Amalgamation Chamber, you'll get a lot of these combo taunt swaps. Uh, the second phase has Withering Vulnerability and Shadow Flame Burst. These are always cast back-to-back. 
So the Withering Vulnerability increases your Shadow Flame damage taken by 200%, and then Shadow Flame Burst uh, deals Shadow Flame damage, a large chunk of it. So the idea is one tank will hold Withering Vulnerability, the other tank taunts off and takes Shadow Flame Burst, right? And um, that is like another common tank swap you'll see, the combo one. Uh, there's actually a lot, like, really good tank swap uh, variety within Avarice, because you have, like, the standard uh, increases damage from applications, you have the Echo of Notharian one, which is increases all damage taken, uh, you have the combo tank buster, where, like, you know, one tank takes each one in the form of a Malak Chamber. Forgotten Experiments has one of the most unique tank busters we've seen, uh, or tank swap mechanics, called Infuse Strikes, where every single boss has the same one, but then uh, you actually need to remove it by having two people with infused strikes collide with each other. So that's like actually a very unique thing. You don't see that super often. And um, then like uh, another great example of something you'll see in a lot of different bosses, Rashok. Rashok has the, the combo buster of Wrath of Digirune. This one is kind of similar to Amalgamation Chamber, but it's like all one big sequence. Uh, you'll see this stuff a lot. Um, Ursoc is like the classic one. Whenever I think of combo tank busters, I think of Ursoc from back in Legion. But every single raid tier, I think, has like one combo tank buster boss where they execute a bunch of different attacks in like a very short sequence and you have to uh, deal with it appropriately, right? So knowing which bo or which tank buster the boss has, which type, and how to deal with it appropriately, something like that, that's very important for getting into tanking. And then also understanding where you're supposed to be holding everything. Because obviously as a tank, you're, it's your job to move the bosses around. So Forgotten Experiments is a great example of a boss that needs to be heavily moved around the area. Uh, there's like a lot of little orbs that'll explode. So you need to be dragging the boss close to the orbs so that people can cleave them. Uh, you need to move the boss out of deep breath, or like if there's two bosses up and one of them's doing deep breath, uh, you move the other one out. That really only happens on Mythic. Because Mythic is the only one where you're fighting two at once. So Heroic, that's less of a problem. Um, what else? I um, also need to refresh this stuff before I forget. And then like Ziskarn, another classic tank buster type that you see in this raid. Ziskarn is the stacking debuff tank buster. Where his um, Searing Claws will just infinitely stack. And then you just kind of pick a certain stack level. Usually you do like 10 to 13, roughly you swap, and then you just let the stacks fall off. And then the moment your stacks fall off, you taunt. Uh, so yeah, there's actually really good uh, variety. And Sarkareth, actually, yeah, Sarkareth has a unique one too. Because Sarkareth has the, the classic... Oh, fuck me. This is doing it again. Sarkareth, I've talked about this before, but it has the... Um, burning claws type tank buster where the more damage you take from it the more damage you deal to the raid and you explode afterwards so Abers is actually a really good raid to learn different types of tank busters because every single boss has like a different one whereas you know a lot of the bosses in uh, vault of the incarnates had the exact same types of tank busters like karag tank buster and senar tank buster fundamentally kind of worked exactly the same it's just taunt after x stacks um in that case like taunt after you technically taunted after every Sundering Slam, but you could taunt after like four stacks of the Senarth one. But it kind of played the same. Same with Taros. Taros, you take two slams, then you taunt. Right? Aranog, you take... Uh, that was Aranog was another stacking debuff one. You take X amount of stacks, and then you taunt, right? So, out of all of the bosses within Abaris, we've seen a lot of these types before. I think uh, Forgotten Experiments is the only boss where I don't recall them doing something similar before with the Infuse Strikes debuff. But once you've gotten used to tanking a lot of raid bosses, you'll start to see a lot of patterns repeat. So you can go into a fight like Saskarn and be like, oh, this is a stacking debuff tank buster. And if you've tanked a boss like that before, you kind of already know how that goes. And you're like, all right, we just figure out what amount of stacks we need to swap at. And then, you know, you play it by ear. You're like, yeah, 10 stacks starts to hurt a little bit. We probably swap at 10 stacks. Or something like, you know, you see a combo such as um, the Rashok one, and you immediately are like, ah, it's a combo boss. Okay, so we just can't take two uh, hits in a row. Um, st straightforward stuff. Like, Rashok fundamentally is exactly the same as Ursok for the tanks. So, if you've tanked Ursok, you've tanked Rashok. Um, so, obviously, if you're learning it for the first time, it could be a bit tricky. But the nice thing is a lot of that knowledge is transferable.
Uh, like I said before, there's a lot of depth that you can go into with raid tanking, right? Um, it's hard for me to like think of, you know, is this too simple or is it not? Obviously, like, you know, have a defensive plan is another one where I would think it's simple, but you never know. Uh, but that is something that I guess maybe understanding different tank busters is probably an important part of it. So uh, if you have further questions, let me know. But I think that that was already like a lot of detail. So I want to make sure I don't fall too far behind. Where do you get this disco mount? Uh, this is Cartel Master's Gear Glider. You get it from Solia in Tazavesh. It's a rare drop. Uh, let me scroll up because I missed a lot of stuff. Actually, didn't miss as much as I think I did. Uh, Bloodworms were really cool in Wrath. Yeah, Bloodworms were cool. I don't love Bloodworms, but I agree they were definitely a big part of the class fantasy. Face reveal when, when I feel like it. Um, don't play to be tanky, play for DPS. Yeah, definitely. I think early on, like, erring on the safe side as a brand new tank isn't necessarily, you know, a terrible idea, but Naomi is absolutely correct that don't fall into the trap of being like, I am a tank, I only build for survivability. You definitely don't want to neglect your DPS. That is very important. Good point. Um, the last time you played all tanks was WAD, quit during Legion because all tanks felt like dumbed down to shit. I agree, except Vengeance DH. Mid-expansion Vengeance DH was so fucking good in Legion. I loved it. Unfortunately, it was not really easy to play in Raid. And by that, I mean it wasn't good. So I tried to make it work, but I struggled a lot. Uh, One million subs reveal. I will, we'll fucking see. Like I said, I'm going to do a face reveal when I feel like it. Stop asking. Um, that's the type of thing that, you know, I'll entertain the question once or twice for fun. When it starts getting repeatedly asked, that's when I start to get a little bit annoyed. All right, we got Barbarian now. So double Heroic Leap. Or I think it's you can use Heroic Leap immediately after using it. So that's nice. What timeline do I currently have? If you're talking about, like, Chromie Time timeline, it's not really, um... Not really important. I am in TBC timeline specifically for the dungeon queue, because that's the only thing that it impacts. But I'm doing WAD quests in the TBC dungeon timeline. So, like I said, it doesn't really matter. It only matters for dungeons. Uh, you have a decent amount of DPS experience in raids, so it maybe won't be too big of a change... Yeah, uh, anyone know how to get the well-fed XP buff? This isn't an XP buff. This is just versatility. So it's not an XP buff. It's a well-fed buff, but it's not a well-fed XP buff. Uh, I can also put that there. I'll refresh this before I forget. And then I'm going to take Abyssal Healing Potions, throw them there. And I think that's everything that I need to do. Oh, I forgot to put Stout Augment Rune on my bar, so I'll put that there. Uh, there we go. And then I can cancel this, eat my food, and I should probably at least do a slight cleaning of my inventory right now, because I'm close to filling up. We'll see. That's enough gray items gone that I don't think I'll fill up anytime soon. Alright, now Fl Affliction Ridge. Uh, you all lost all the big DK soloers in Legion. Ragewind quit in WAD. Mioni rerolled DH. Yeah, Mioni rerolled DH and did a decent amount of soloing with it and then quit. I remember when Mioni quit. Especially because I did a lot of Demon Hunter soloing stuff for fun. So every single time I would like try to solo something as a Demon Hunter, like I would get messages like, oh, have you seen Mioni? And it's like, yes, I know Mioni does a lot of solo stuff. I wasn't even making YouTube videos back then. But... It was like whenever I would try to solo something for fun, just like with my own friends or in like a pug group, they'd be like, wow, it's just like Mioni does it. And I'm like, oh, okay, yes. I don't know Mioni at all, so I have nothing bad about them. I'm more so complaining about constantly back in Legion, I would get compared to Mioni. And it just got like, a, it was a tiring comparison, right? It's just like there's some fucking science YouTuber who apparently I have a similar voice to. And not gonna lie, I'm getting real fucking tired of seeing people leave the exact same comment of You sound so much like- I don't even remember his fucking name, but Some science YouTuber, uh, you know, oh or Like, some people will go one step further and be like, is this so-and-so's secret World of Warcraft channel? And it's like Yeah, totally, yeah, totally just like not- we don't have similar voices, apparently 
somebody has a slightly similar voice to another YouTuber and then like every single person is like, you sound like X person. And it's like, okay, I get it. I've definitely gotten some weird ones. Like I remember one person said I sounded like Andrew Tate way back when. And that was like, no, I don't think I do at all. Uh, but that one stuck out to me because I'm like, you know, I, I could understand it. Like somebody sent me a video of like that science person and I don't, I don't know their videos, but I'm like, I can maybe see it. But the Andrew Tate comparison was a stretch for sure. I also just don't want to be compared to Andrew Tate in any shape or form. So that was like a bit, uh, no, miss me with that. Uh, remember we lost, oh, I, I read that. Learn to tank mechanics and play to do as much damage as you can while doing your job. Playing defensively is badly. Yeah, for the most part, definitely. Um, for casuals like you, uh, Helkali is a godsend. Helkali is awesome, but it's unreliable when leveling, especially at low levels. Yeah, I don't know for sure. I mean, I get, like, some people use it as training wheels, and that's fine. I think one thing, though, that I will say absolutely. If you want to use something like that for leveling... Sure, you know, if it's just casual leveling, you don't actually plan on really playing the spec. Whatever, it doesn't matter too much. Absolutely do not, under any circumstances, rely on a rotation helper add-on if you are genuinely trying to learn how to play something. Absolutely never. I don't give a shit what rotation add-on helper it is. It is just, do not use training wheel shit like that if you really want to learn. Rely on guides. Read guides by the top players. Figure out what the best buttons to press in any given situation are and why and if you understand why you should be pressing every single button at the right time you won't need a, an add-on to tell you what to do you will just know because you will understand which abilities do the most damage which abilities combo with which ones why should i be pressing everything at a given time and you won't need to rely on this it'll just be second nature you will understand and of course mind you this takes time and research to really figure out so that's why I said if you want to use a rotation helper add-on for leveling just for shits and giggles, yeah, go for it. Doesn't really matter. But if you are truly trying to understand a spec and get better at it, if you want to play it in raids, dungeons, etc., do not use a rotation helper add-on. Figure it out yourself. Understand the spec, like understand the fundamentals, and yeah, don't rely on anything else. If you want to have like weak auras and stuff to track shit, yeah, a lot of people do that, right? But Use weak auras to track stuff when you know what you need to be tracking. So if you know that, like, your class has a really important debuff that you need to maintain in the target or you lose a shit ton of damage, get a weak aura. There's, I mean, if it's that important, the class discords will usually have, like, weak aura for tracking XYZ thing because it's probably important. But otherwise, don't fucking rely on it. Don't use rotation helper add-ons if you really, really want to learn something the right way. You know, I, I know it's easy, I know it's nice to rely on which button to press the right time. You can maybe get decent mileage out of doing that, but if you really, really want to get better at this game, you will thank me later, take off the training wheels, learn the spec, learn what each ability does. That is the only way to truly improve in this game. A lot of people do that, right? And then one of the problems is if you get so stuck following the add-on, for starters, if it's ever out of date, you're fucked. Right? Anyone who heavily relies on plugins, weak auras, etc., the moment it's out of date, if you don't know how to play without it, you are not a good raider. You are not a good player. You are only as good in that case as your weak auras are updated. Uh, weak auras are a great tool to help out somebody who already knows what they're doing, but if you are relying on them to play the class for you, that is not good. So, yeah. I mean, I could rant about that for more. I could give more examples on why it's bad, but, you know, just take my word for it, right? If you're a new player trying to get better, do not rely on things like that. It's a really good crutch, terrible for long-term learning. And I say that as somebody who has taken that approach to learning a lot of different games. Um, like, you know what? I, even more recently, what is the game that I've tried to learn the most uh, in recent times? Poker, which I, it's not an MMO, it's a card game. And obviously it's like, it's very different, but like, a good example from poker, right, is the first night when I played poker, I literally had the um, the cheat sheet next to me on, you know, which hands are best. Like, okay, uh, like, flush beats straight, something like that, you know, straight beats three of a kind, etc., knowing, like, which one is better, because I wasn't familiar with it, I was brand new. So, I, yeah, I had that cheat sheet open, I was using it and relying on it, but... 
eventually, you know, when I played last night, I wasn't relying on the cheat sheet all, at all, especially because, like, in tight positions, I want to really be able to quickly say, okay, like, look at the board and just think, like, without having to re reference the cheat sheet and go through it and be like, hmm, what are all the things? I want to be able to quickly identify what are the possible hands that my opponent can have that can beat me, and I'm still not perfect at that. I've only been playing poker for, like, a little over a week, right? Uh, so you know, whatever, right? I, I'm nowhere close to perfect. But what was my immediate thing that I tried to do? I've been quizzing myself on like, you know, what are the different like poker hands that, you know, what order can uh, beat what and stuff like that, because I want to be able to do that without relying on the cheat sheet. Because if I'm able to internalize that information and just know it secondhand and not have to constantly refer to other stuff when I'm trying to make like important decisions in the middle of a game, that means I can dedicate more time to thinking about important shit, right? So... But that is just, I guess, goes to show my philosophy towards learning anything in general, not just World of Warcraft. Never rely on external tools. Get that shit in your head, get it memorized, and, you know, you will just be better at literally anything you approach in life in general, I think is a pretty safe uh, bit of advice. That has always worked for me in, like, anything, right? Um... You lost all the big DK. Oh, I fucking read that already. I think I've read that message three times now because I just look back at chat. What's the first thing I see? And then the big DK solars thing. Yeah. Um, use Helkly and you can say it's a good way to learn general rotation, but you try to get rid of it ASAP. Yeah. You know, good for learning, definitely bad for long-term uh, growth. All rotation helpers are pure garbage and should be a thing. Yep. Architraz updates the quest. Yeah, that's another reason why Architraz is better than Botanica, for sure. Uh, it helps you early on about as much as two minutes of reading a guide does. Yeah. Um, Og 100% never should have existed. Legit rework entirely. Best taken Og, yeah. Um, literally broke the M plus meta. I, I will say, the whole thing about Og's impact on M plus... That almost goes beyond the whole thing as a support uh, as a support spec. There is like the whole situation of Og just being bad for the game in general, and then there is the fact that Blizzard released something that had a very high chance of breaking the game in general, and then just didn't fucking make any emergency adjustments to it when it turned out to be ridiculously broken. The fact that they let Og ruin M plus for as long as they did is just another level of incompetence. Releasing it is one thing; letting it run rampant for that long is just fucking stupid. So, obviously, yeah, it ruined M+, but I would say that has a lot more to do with Blizzard's shitty balancing uh, in the aftermath of releasing it than it has to do with Og fundamentally being broken. Um, so many right takes. I'm glad people agree with me. Another Og Doomer just like you? Yeah, see, here's the thing. Og is very cool on paper. Like, I understand why people like it, and a lot of people have said, well, I like support specs, and... You know, a lot of people will compare it to Final Fantasy, but Final Fantasy Guild Wars 2 both have, I wouldn't say AUG level support specs, but something kind of close to it, where it's like hybrid DPS rules. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, and I understand why people like it. But when the game has been designed in a different way, you can't just, just nilly-willy take elements from Final Fantasy and Guild Wars 2 and ham-fist them into an old game like World of Warcraft and just expect it to work. I guarantee you that's why they're doing it. It's because they saw other games do similar things, and they're like, wow, that's cool, and, you know, we can do that too. And it's like, no, you fucking can't. Not without completely changing how raiding and dungeons in World of Warcraft work. It, it, it's just a fundamentally different game. Final Fantasy has been built with that stuff in mind. You know, you can't just add that, right? So it's just, it's fucking stupid. They will nerf it into it, the ground and it'll become a DPS spec? I think they will, yeah. I Honestly, that's their only recourse, right? The best solution was never doing it in the first place. The best option now is just admitting that you fucked up and just turning it into a regular DPS spec. Unfortunately, one of the other weird things about AUG is like... I don't know. I know some people will agree with this because actually somebody in uh, my guild's raid the other night brought up this exact same point, which I completely agree with. Uh, and then a few people kind of disagreed with him and were like, no, I don't think that's true. And I'm thinking, sitting there like, hey, I'm not going to join in on this conversation, but I think that guy's 100% correct. Um, Og is like literally just devastation with uh, like a coat of paint on it. It plays fundamentally the same. There is nothing special about Og other than the buff management. So the problem that I think Og kind of has is it's literally just devastation, except instead of doing damage, 
your rotation buffs other people. It's fundamentally not interesting from like a design perspective. It doesn't really bring anything unique to the table. So I just struggle to see what they could really do to make Og feel distinct from Devastation because they are just so samey, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just like Eruption is literally just Disintegrate but with a different coat of paint, right? Like, what what is different about them? They they have roughly the same play style, just one of them buffs other people. So, I mean, some people will say I'm wrong, and like I said, somebody said that in my raid last night, or I guess two nights ago at this point, and another person was like, no, you're totally wrong, they totally feel different to play, and um, I don't know, I, I agreed with the guy who said it. I'm like, yeah, I... Having played both of them, obviously I don't main Augmentation of Ochre, but I played both a decent amount, you know, in my free time and in the leveling runs, and I could not tell the difference. It felt exactly the same, except Devastation was just more bursty, whereas Aug was focused on buffs. So, fuck if I know. As soon as they hinted the thing about Shadowflame debuffing enemies, augmenting ally shit was like, no fucking way, that doesn't make it to life so toxic. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what they're thinking. It's... Uh, it's it's dumb. And the problem is a lot of casual players will say, I think Og is cool, so therefore, you know, your, your logic is wrong, right? But, you know, it's... There are ways to make, like, people feel like they could have fun on, like, a support spec without making it so toxic to the rating scene. And I think that's one of the other issues that Blizzard has gone with, is they've kind of, like, taken this approach to Og where they're like, we know it's going to fuck over raiders and we don't care. And it's like, at least try to understand that, you know, you're fucking over a huge and frankly vocal uh, portion of your player base. The raiders are, you know, for better or for worse, some of the loudest players. I am one of the loudest players out there um, in terms of like calling out shit that I don't like. So like maybe don't actively spit in our faces and say you don't care about the way we play the game right when we're the people taking your game seriously like i get that casual players can like og but there's still fun ways to design a cool spec for them without actively just screwing over end game raiders and m plusers in the process like why other other than pure spite right which i think is partially why they're doing it like all of their shit about pi it's just for whatever fucking reason ian has a cost this has this like vendetta uh, maybe it's not just him maybe it's other people on the design team too but they all collectively have this fucking vendetta against like end game hardcore raiders and they're just like we don't like the way you're playing our game so we're just going to constantly make really annoying quality of life changes to make the game worse for you for no fucking reason and there's been constant pushback like ever since the days of covenants right when everybody immediately said pull the ripcord and ian's like no i'm not gonna pull the ripcord and then finally they cave and they're like oh well it's because of story reasons it that was like the dumbest thing like when they do the pull the ripcord shit finally in shadowlands they couldn't accept the fact that they actually had to make a concession to the raiders who were saying i told you so from the like get-go so they had to come up with that whole like ian said it makes sense for the narrative now in shadowlands with all of the covenants working together that we finally have to like, just fucking admit you were wrong dumbass like you fucked up with covenants just say hey the raiders who have told me i was doing the wrong thing since beta actually had a point i was wrong but they are unwilling to do that and they repeatedly do these things where they release something, everyone says, this is fucking stupid, don't do this, they're like, we know better than you, and then months later, they have to come up with some, like, bullshit excuse to weasel out of their decision, but somehow in their minds claim, like, a moral high ground over the raiders who told them from day one that this was never gonna work, because, you know, we aren't actually listening to your feedback, we just came to our own conclusion that for different reasons, it was the right time to make this decision. Like, ugh, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, it, this is just, this has been the bane of my fucking existence ever since, you know, Shadowlands. I mean, they've been doing this shit since BFA, so I'm saying Shadowlands. I think out of all of the times they've done this, this is maybe up there with Covenants as, like, the most egregious mistake. Maybe, actually, Covenants are worse. Who am I kidding? The whole Covenant fiasco was definitely the worst thing they've ever done in this department, but they've been doing this shit since BFA. Like, fucking Azerite armor, where everyone said Azerite armor acquisition needs to be better. And they said, no, it's fine, get good. And then, turns out, it sucked. Nobody liked Azerite armor acquisition when 
player numbers started tanking, Blizzard finally said, okay, maybe you have a point, maybe Azerite armor acquisition sucks, we'll finally change it. And then when everybody was like, wow, you guys are actually listening, they fucking add essences, which is... I, I've ranted about this so many times, but you have to understand, this just eternally pisses me off. I'm still so angry about, like, how everything in BFA was handled. And I will rant about it until, like, I'm on my fucking deathbed because I just, I was so mad. And you know what? I didn't make videos in BFA. So if I had made videos in BFA, oh man, you would have heard so many fucking rants about how they handled that. So I have to make up for it by complaining about it, like, every single fucking day since. Um... Anyways, let me scroll down a little bit. Um, let's see. Og Evoker is Pandora's box. Uh, now that's open, there's no way to balance anything. Exactly. You, like, they need to at least try to close Pandora's box. Because, like you said, now that it's open, it balances out the fucking window, right? Now that Og exists. You either nerf it into unviability, which is just not a good way to design games, to just, like, oops, we can't balance this, better just kill it off, which unfortunately is how Blizzard does a lot of things, so that may be what they'll do. Um, or you just completely redesign it and just accept the fact that support did not work, which, I don't know. That's the best decision they can make, but they probably won't make it, so we'll see. As long as you don't lose current demo, you're fine with locks having meta? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, like, I know a lot of people really liked old Demo, but it's it's kind of like my Brewmaster comparison, where I really loved old Wad Brewmaster, but I think at least current Brewmaster brings some stuff to the table. It is at least interesting in some ways. Uh, but, you know, compared to that, like, you know, Blood Decay, you know, which was the entire thing that we were comparing it earlier, I don't really think Blood Decay is anything special to offer compared to... What? Oh, fuck. I just realized, um, because I have my gems in different sockets, I need to delete my gear before I can equip new ones. Because all this, these gems are unique equipped. But this should fix it. Yeah, there we go. I was wondering why it wasn't letting me equip those items, but that makes sense. Uh, I also, my inventory is getting dangerously close to filling up again. Uh, but yeah, so all that to say, I think, well, I know a lot of people really liked pre, uh, also, I'm not going to forget, I know people are probably already yelling at me in chat, saying, don't forget your potion, there's, there we go, the final potion of the run, because one of mine got troll inted earlier, whatever, there we go. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people really liked old demo, I think there is a very large chunk of people who really enjoy current demo as well, so I don't think necessarily completely reverting it back would make anyone happy. Whereas Blood DK, I think it is safe to say the vast majority of, like, actual Blood DK players would be happy with just reverting the Legion changes entirely. Even this far away from it. Death's Advance hard carried in Razageth? Yeah, definitely. That's another good example. Uh, they've introduced a bunch of new pr parameters. We all know Blizzard can't balance that stuff with plus 5% to his damage, and yeah. It is it is definitely one of those things that is just impossible to balance. And it's, you know, to use the Covenant example again... Like, there is... Obviously, THD has a lot of really cooked takes, right? But one of my favorite THD uh, tweets was from back in the Shadowlands days, pre-patch, when um, he posted a quote from Ian Hazacostas of, if they are balanced within 5%, then we have done our job. And he posted the Sims of there being, like, a 25% disparity <laughs> between the top and worst covenant. And just... Like, even 5%, right, I think is expecting to be able to get that large of a margin uh, with that many covenants and combinations they had to balance. Impossible, right? They missed the mark wildly in so many areas. But even 5%, right? Losing 5% damage just by picking a covenant that you thought was cool still sucks. Even if it's quote-unquote only 5%, that still sucks. You would still feel compelled to pick the best covenant. But the worst part is, obviously, as the THD tweet implied, which is why I like it so much, just posting it right up against, I think it was Boomkin Sims that he used, is just a 25% gap for not using the right covenant. Just fucking garbage. So, yeah, they always think, they, there are so many quotes like that where they always think that they can actually design these systems, and they're like, you know, oh, we can balance it within whatever amount, and then they just never fucking can. They always fail to do it correctly. So... 
I don't know, fucking Blizzard at this point, right? It's just... Do I have Granai? Let's see. Uh, I don't have Granai. I have Gronling skill. Yeah, so I can pull these mobs and then do my heroic leap. And once I get them all rounded up, I don't want to kill the mobs. I also don't want to pop my thing just yet. I'm going to do enraged regen and get these Gron guys low. And then when they're fairly low, that's when I pop my champion's honor. And this also is really nice because it lets me stack up my death wish. Okay, now is probably a good time. Oh, nice. Perfect timing. Gron eye? Fuck. Uh, you know what? I'll kill two more Gron. This is reducing my chances of getting Ogron Horn for sure, which sucks. I also let Death Witch fall off. Unfortunate, but necessary. Uh, I have 30 seconds. Granai? Yeah, we got Granai, so there's that. Uh, I need this guy to follow me. So I only have one shot at this. Heroic Leap. I don't want to get out of range of my Champion's Honor. But... Uh... Ah! Fuck. I guess in the end, at least I got Granai, so it kind of balances out, but yeah, I... I was too late to get to the Ogron. I probably should have just taken the L, because I can always get Granai later. It doesn't really matter, though. I think I, I wouldn't have gone back for Granai anyway, so... It balances out. Uh, I could have played that better. I fucked up. Uh, if I had kept Death Wish up, I think I may have been able to kill them slightly faster, and maybe I would have gotten, like, one more kill, so one more shot at Ogron Horn, but... I mean, not getting the Granais in the first three is always a little bit unlucky. You kind of hope that that happens with Granai specifically. And I can loot the skull. Uh, remember when AMZ was like 200% more than it is now? Yeah. I mean, old AMZ, it's kind of tricky because like it was really busted. So while yes, it definitely was very good before, it was also arguably a little bit overpowered before. So as much as I agree that it was fun, I don't know if it was healthy for the game. I don't know necessarily if the way they fixed AMZ was particularly good, but I think class stacking DKs just nonstop to benefit from like ridiculously uh, overpowered AMZ wasn't necessarily good for the game either. That's something that I, I don't mind that they changed. Some people probably would agree with me, or disagree with me on that though, so it's fair. Uh, not to start a hate thread on Aug, but what are the current problems with it? You're a bit out of touch on that. It's not necessarily that there's, like, a lot of current, like, issues specifically. It, Aug's entire existence is just flawed. Um, I know that might sound a bit generic, but the entire idea of having a support spec like that just doesn't work in World of Warcraft, fundamentally. It's one of those things where it would take me way too long. I'm not going to go into, like, an entire explanation of why that kind of fucks up the meta in general. I'm sure there's a million good rants out there from a lot of different people on why Aug is problematic um, that go into way more detail than I care to do in, like, an in-stream discussion. Uh, I've already outlined a few of them, though. Uh, your thing with Wad Demolock was it was the first class you ever played when you started Wad, and you were so amazed by the fact that you even grew horns as a warlock when your bar filled? Yeah. I can understand that. It was visually a very cool spec. I actually played Demo Lock a little bit. I've said before that I barely played Warlock before, um, you know, the run that I did recently at the start of Dragonflight, but the only time I actually did play it was uh, Wad Demo Lock. I never reached max level, so I technically was telling the truth about I had never gotten max level on Warlock, but I leveled my Warlock up a decent bit, specifically as Demo, back in Wad because I really enjoyed that playstyle. I guess it was fate, you know, that I ended up playing... Vengeance DH mostly in the ends, but uh, yeah, that was a pretty fun playstyle for sure. And then of course there was the classic Ian has a Costas uh, line. I think it was about demonology, right? Where there was a 
they did these like developer interviews for a little bit during HFC. And there's a classic quote from Ian where somebody asks him about their plans to fix Demonology Warlock. And he literally says, we don't want you playing Demonology Warlock. And he tries to, like, give clarifying statements on what he means by that, but effectively, he's like, we don't want you playing Demonology Warlock, because we have plans to change it, and blah blah blah, which obviously they did in Legion. But I still think, like, whenever you're telling somebody, we are intentionally leaving a spec in the game that is, like, you know, kind of somewhat, uh, like, broken. Obviously, a lot of people had fun playing it, but it got heavily neglected for, like, a lot of time because they planned on reworking it in Legion. But for a lot of people, that still wasn't a satisfying answer. Same with Survival Hunter, right? Survival Hunter got completely fucking ignored for the vast majority of WAD. And obviously, it was good in PvP, so I know a lot of people who PvP will say, oh, well, it was still good in P WAD PvP. For raiding, I guess, challenge modes most people don't give a shit about. But for raiding, specifically in WAD, it was absolutely fucking awful. It was just one of the worst specs they've ever had. The gap between survival in the bottom and the next highest spec was so large back in WAD. It was the worst spec in the game by a significant margin. And it was really fun, right? And as recent as uh, Missa Pandaria, right? Like Survival Hunter and Siege of Orgrimmar was really fucking strong. And a lot of people really enjoyed that playstyle, you know, with Black Arrow, Explosive Shot, all that fun stuff. And... Then the very next expansion, they just kind of start neglecting Survival Hunter, probably because they had planned to completely remove the ranged aspect of survival and make it a, a melee thing. But that's still really insulting to people who loved survival for pretty much the entirety of... Oh, what do I want to take here? Uh, let me just think about this real quick. I want to take... Bitter Immunity and Leeching Strikes. I guess I'll take Bitter Immunity just for, like, the on-demand healing. That has... that'll probably end up being pretty good. I can also queue for... I would say this is the last dungeon of the run. So if this one misses, then... You know, it's whatever. And this time, I am gonna do Crimson Fen. And after Crimson Fen, I will head to Lock Mode on, and that should be enough experience. Um, but yeah, that was, like, really insulting. And obviously now people still... To this day, quote Ian, like you'll see, if you ever see a gif of Ian sitting next to uh, Lore, who I, I mean, Lore doesn't even work at Blizzard anymore, but he was the one who always did the um, developer interviews because he was like a community person. So it was like a community person and then Ian. And they did those. And I'm pretty sure they stopped doing those because after shit like that, they got like a decent amount of backlash to their uh, community interviews. Right? Because a lot of times it was just basically telling the player base, we're right, you're wrong. And a lot of people justifiably got kind of annoyed by that. Um, but if you ever see a gif floating around of Ian Hazacostas uh, next to Josh Lore Allen, and the subtitle is something like, we don't want you either playing X or we don't want you doing X, that is taken from an interview back in WAD where he said, we don't want you playing Demonology Warlock. And it became infamous because of how just fucking insulting it was to the question being asked, right? Like, you know, are you going to fix my spec? No, fuck you. Wait, mana tombs? Uh, eh, 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 nah. Oh, well, at least it wasn't like under bog for the 20 millionth time, but eh, whatever. Okay. So now, uh, can't forget to re enable Berserker Stance now that I exited the dungeon. Uh, let's see. Because of rogues having Shadow Step and Druids using Wild Charge to go behind Razageth, uh, having a Blood TK sitting still, being knocked back, and tanking the boss meant they could do it? Yeah. That's true. That was definitely a really important uh, utility thing to have. Uh, haven't played WoW in a bit. Is it worth coming back at the moment? I would say so. Yeah. Um, leveling is so slow now without the 50% XP buff. You went to sleep and I'm still level 38. Okay. I don't... Whatever. Uh, it, it is, you know, dare I say, yes, 50% slower without the 50% XP buff. But that said, I don't really think this has been a particularly slow run. Especially since I stopped in the middle to respond to chat and get caught up. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, this has been a perfectly normal run. We're on track to finish at, like, you know, 
under five hours, probably like, you know, four hours, 45 minutes, I would say is a reasonable time estimate at the moment. That's not really that bad. That's pretty normal. I don't think that's particularly slow. Uh, to each their own, though, I suppose. I always forget that now with Me Cleaver, I don't have to refresh Whirlwind nearly as much, which is actually super fucking nice. Uh, okay, what do I want to take? Um, probably Slaughtering Strikes, and then I put one point into Frenzy, and then we go down to Ravager. And then I just get the PvP talent thing out of my face. Okay, uh, let's see. Priest should be able to use swords. I could, yeah, I suppose that would be neat. Um, if we're talking about heroic raid tanking... Okay, I, I need to catch up with chat, so I'm not reading all of that. I would imagine, though, generally speaking, I agree with most of what Naomi says, and I've already fallen a little bit behind there. Uh, you've liked tanking in Avarice. It's a good balance in fun and complexity. Yeah, Avarice is a fairly solid um, tank raid tier. Uh, you can also get the Gear Glider with the Quantum Corsair on Dawn of the Infinite Mega Dungeon. Oh, yeah, true. That's one of the... Um, one of the options, I forgot about that. So, true. I guess if you really want to do a lot of Dawn of the Infinite, it's obviously still a rare drop. And then, I would say if you specifically want this mount, you're actually going to have a worse time trying to get it from the Quantum Courser. Because, you know, it has multiple different options and it's rare. Even if it is a slightly higher drop chance than other stuff. Uh, okay, I need two more mushrooms. But yeah, that is an option, so that's a good point. Fuck, how did I get in combat with this guy? Whatever. Uh. Oh, so apparently a bunch of other people also think I sound like that dude. No, whatever. Um. Still catching up. Uh, Chromie time is a state of mind, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to start the RP on this thing. Let me also refresh Battle Shout before I forget. And... If Fury Warrior Cleave at this point feels pretty good, but it took a little bit to actually get there. I think before I got Meat Cleaver, it felt like a little bit eh. Like I wasn't loving it, but it was okay. You've been asked if you're a bunch of different VTubers before because you have a really high-pitched voice. Yeah, I would imagine that probably gets annoying after a while. Uh, what color is my leveling guide? I have no idea what that means. Sorry. Uh, let's see. So now I can just go turn this in, and then we head to Lock Mode on. It's more about the accent? I mean... I don't understand how a New Jersey accent sounds. I don't even really have a strong, if noticeable at all. Like, I don't have the typical New Jersey accent, right? Like, you know, I, I don't have that. Um, and even then, I don't really think I have any strong accent in particular. And it definitely, I, I don't think, sounds like whatever the fuck accent Andrew Tate has. Um, I sound like the guy who does speedrun videos. Yeah, that one I can believe. That sounds like a pretty, uh, pretty good comparison, I think. Um... Yeah. L caps one, uh, probably correct. In reply to your DH raid tank question, good to know. You'll stick to Prot Warrior until you get the fundamentals down. Awesome. Thanks for tips. No problem. Uh, they need to do it is make an add-on that makes the top logs and has you press those things. That would be hard to replicate, though. It also would depend on, right, like, your haste and other things. Um... A lot of people agreeing that it's bad to use uh, the helper add-ons because, you know, training wheels and all that stuff. Can I take... So one thing I want to see is, 
at level 48, am I able to take the portal to Boralus and use the Iron Forge portal? Because I've never tried it at this high level. Usually I go to Lachmadon a little bit earlier. Um, no. So, glad I checked. But yeah, a lot of people sometimes say, just take the portal to Boralus, right? And obviously, if you're a Kul Tiran, this works. You get the portal room. You will need to take the, or you will need to do the introduction quest to get the portal room active. So, there we go. Double checked it just to officially shut down all of those times I get asked, why don't you just take the portal to Ironforge in Boralus? That is why it does not work. Um, it's completely fair and justified to tell people to actually learn to play the game, but you would have to threaten to harm you to actually join the, a raiding guild. Oh yeah, it's not for everybody, right? So like, if you aren't interested in like serious raiding or dungeons and stuff like that, absolutely don't feel pressured to like know how to play your class perfectly but it's for the people who are interested in doing that that's where it's like a problem uh the only thing you struggle with is fire mage is the sun king's blessing stacks other than that you feel you play okay yeah and for stuff like that there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a weak aura to track like i don't know fire mage specifically but sun king's blessing stacks if there's like a stack or a buff or a debuff or something like that that you really need to track nothing wrong at all with having a weak aura to track something like that uh, you remember Preach has said in the past that the way he learned how to keybind and what his buttons did was take all his bars away and force himself to memorize each key? Yes. Um, like, I do that muscle memory. A lot of times, like, if I were to build my Vengeance Demon Hunter rotation, like, I would know just, like, what I do on each button, right? Just because I pressed it so many times. Uh, you look at your bars too much and it hinders you a lot, which you're trying to fix? Yeah. I mean, I still glance at my bars sometimes, right? But it's never really affected me. I also can really quickly, like, I have all the stuff centralized, right? So I can keep, like, I can multitask, right? I can look at my cooldowns and, like, track that. And if you're not using it on your bars, right, you could also have weak auras that track your cooldowns. A lot of people do that. Because it's still important information, knowing, like, which abilities are off cooldown. Especially you have if you have stuff that gives you, like, um, variable resources, like as Vengeance, I don't always know exactly how many souls I'm going to have. I usually have a good idea. So I'll have a good estimate. I probably have three or four souls here. But if I have three souls, well, then I can use Fracture. If I have four souls, well, then I Spirit Bomb and just Fracture again, right? So uh, stuff like that, you do want to at least be able to check. Some people use a weak word to track that. I personally um, eyeball it, but to each their own for that one. As long as looking at your bars is not distracting you from your positioning and your actual play within the game, really not a huge deal, but that does take some practice to get down and be able to do efficiently. First night, Harlden played poker with his cheat sheet. He went home with just his 100 pants on. Look, owner, I don't know if you were here at the start of the stream, but I, uh, they did the poker payouts right around the time when I was starting the stream, so I opened my mail. I made 300k last night in poker, okay? So there's improvement, right? I may have lost 600k the first night, but I was one of three people that actually won gold last night. So we're getting there. I've been learning a lot. I've been doing a lot of research. And... The other new trial in the guild lost 2.3 million gold on his first night of poker. So all things considered, I think me losing 600k on my first night, suddenly it doesn't seem so bad anymore, does it? You know, it could have been a lot worse. I could have lost 2.3 mil, which, I mean, I gotta respect him. The trial, he went, like, he really took some chances there. And he lost, like, almost every single time, which is why he's down 2.3 mil. But I at least respect the fact that he went for it. Like, he would rebuy into the game for 300k before the flop even comes. He immediately all-ins that new 300k he just bought in with. Then one of the officers calls him, and he loses. And then has to buy it again. Oh my god, it was... It was, like, on one hand, hilarious. Absolutely, I was laughing my ass off the entire night watching this happen. But I felt so bad. But I think he was having fun, right? So, like, I doubt he gives a shit, right? From what he said, he has, like, a shit ton of gold from sales. So, to him, 2.3 million is uh, apparently not a big loss. And as long as he enjoyed doing the all-ins and stuff, fine. But, man, it was, uh, it was something. <laughs> Very fun uh, to watch the officers just repeatedly take his gold over and over. Actually, our other demon hunter took most of his gold. The other demon hunter ended up winning like 3 mil from that night, so... Fucking wild. 
Uh, when you get home, you'll uninstall Helkali and see how big of a difference it makes since you've been playing Fury for three days now. Yeah, I guess it's also a good test, right? Literally taking the training wheels off and seeing how much of that you actually internalized and remembered and weren't relying on just like watching it. Definitely a, a good uh, piece of advice, I would say. Uh, let me also refresh my buffs here. I think, um, don't need to refresh anything else. I could refresh Bear Tartar if I wanted to. I speak too fast for you. Uh, you can also slow down the, the stream a little bit. I definitely know I speak fast a lot. Um, so I apologize for that. But YouTube does let you slow down the streams and stuff if it is too fast. I usually try, like, with guides and stuff like that to not talk super duper fast. But it's one of those things where inherently, yeah, when I... Especially when I get excited or when I'm streaming and I'm, like, ranting about something, I'm gonna talk really fast. It's just... I would have to really, like, try very hard to not talk fast and and stuff like that. And I don't know. I just... That's not, like, a level of concentration that I could have in the middle of a stream, like, making sure I'm not constantly talking too fast. I would constantly second-guess myself and it would just be terrible. Uh, you remember Crit Cake's take talking about how it essentially ruined the Great Push as well, seeing there was... Uh, gonna be a lot of variety, but suddenly everybody played the Exodia comp. Yeah, I can absolutely see that being a problem. Hello, Dyson. Good to see you. XP pot, or am I out? Uh, I think I just forgot to refresh it. Now we're on my last uh, XP pot. So when this one falls off, which by the time this one falls off, I'll already be past level 50, so I won't be able to refresh it anyways. But I am out of XP pots. Uh, so I won't be refreshing it at, like, level 49. I also probably wouldn't have bothered doing that anyway, just for, um, you know, a testing run. It's not really worth it. Uh, let's see. Okay, that is... Yep. Yeah. There are, uh, certain questions that you don't ask people on stream. That just fucking weird. I'm so... I'm not even answering that. That is just a weird fucking thing to ask. Um, uh, I hope Blizzard merges Og spells to other specs and rebuilds the third spec to be a tank. I Honestly, if they make Og a tank, they would probably need to change it because augmentation is very much like a... Uh, what's it called? Like it, The name implies that it's like a support class, which, yeah... Uh, but if they kind of took some of the spells and whatever and made it into a tank spec, I would be 100% down with that. I don't really think that's what will happen. Uh, and I think a decent amount of players who now have been enjoying Og would be upset if it got turned into a tank. Justifiably so, right? You know, if the spec that you've been playing now is a completely different role, that would be a bit weird. And I don't think they've ever done that. The most significant change they've made is uh, turning survival from a ranged into a melee. But that was still a DPS. Fucking fly. Get the fuck out of my face, fly. Ah, that is super annoying. That that was like an aggressive fly too. Like right up in my face. Um, is it really a quality of life update if it makes the game worse? <laughs> Who fucking knows the blizzard, right? Um, you quit BFA when you played in the PTR? Not honestly. Bad idea, right? That's a... Uh, Probably a good call. You could see the writing on the wall even as early as the PTR. I certainly did. I mean, well, by PTR, I mean the beta, right? But yeah, uh, it was definitely easy to see where the game was going. And I would say by the time we were about two months out from BFA release, I was already like, oh, we're fucked. You know, it's way too late to make changes to this. And they clearly are going in the wrong direction. And then... BFA, unfortunately, as we all know, they heavily doubled down on a lot of stuff for the entirety of the expansion and continue doing that throughout Shadowlands. I also hate their excuse that they always give about, like, the reason BFA and Shadowlands were so bad is because they saw that people liked artifacts and then they committed their design for the next two expansions to be based around Borrowed Power. And look, I am not a developer. But I'm fairly certain that if you make a, like, timeline decision on, you know, how you're going to build your game four years in advance, and somehow at no point when you receive any feedback are you able to, like, change that timeline and pivot to something that isn't garbage, 
that just cannot be a good way to structure your business. At that point, you know, the moment something goes wrong, you have no way to, like, recover. There's just no fucking way. To the point where I think it's a complete cop-out, right? I don't think they were actually locked into any of their design choices. I think some of the things, like, obviously they spent a lot of time designing Azerite armor, but there were multiple very easy fixes that they can and later on did make to make Azerite armor better. I don't think it had anything to do with, oh, we were locked into our design that we committed to by the end of Legion. I think that's just a really hollow bullshit argument and they just don't want to admit that they made poor choices, which goes back to what I was saying before of just being completely unwilling to admit that they were wrong on anything, which I think at this point it would go a long way if they could just come out and like sometimes say, hey, we fucked up guys. Like we did a poor job with BFA and Shadowlands, we know, but they don't. They'll say hollow things about like, we're listening now. And then they'll just continue to ignore people. And like, all that to say, don't get me wrong, Dragonflight, step in the right direction, but there's just still so many things that Blizzard just needs to fix their shit on. And, uh, yeah. I will continue complaining until they do. Um... Let's see... Just, uh, trying to scroll through chat to make sure... Okay. There we go. I'm not too far behind in chat now. I have to scroll up a little bit to find where I left off, but, like, we're getting there. Chat isn't, like, scrolling so insanely fast that I can't, like, read everything eventually. I do worry, because, like, today's stream... Well, not a bad thing, right? Obviously, today's stream was pretty big. I didn't really comment on it, but uh, we hit, like, fairly high concurrent peak earlier. Which, you know, thank you, everybody, for showing up to the stream. I appreciate you all being here. Uh, but I was kind of thinking to myself, well... You know, midway through Duskwood, right? And I was 30 minutes behind on chat and I had to stop and do all that. At a certain point, you know, if the stream numbers continue to rise like this, which, like, I'm glad they are. But I do wonder how long it'll continue for me to be practical or continue for it to be practical for me to read chat everything that people say. At a certain point, like, I can't constantly stop every stream for 15 minutes just to try and read every message in chat. And it sucks because I like doing that, but... Also, at a certain point, it, it's kind of just like, I only have a certain amount of time, so we'll see. I'll continue trying to do that for as long as possible, but I do think that eventually I'll hit a breaking point where I just, I won't be able to read everything anymore. And that'll suck, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to quickly just try to, oh shit, no, don't want to get rid of that. I got another one of those rare items, man. This is the one that I got on my Paladin that sold for 40k. So, yeah, some of those rare white items actually do sell for a decent amount in the auction house. Um, but I haven't really gotten a ton, but I managed to get another Stone Splitter Blade, which, hey, cool. Um, anyways, uh, Preach's conversation with Ian showed how disconnected Ian was. It was blatantly implied by Ian that they have successfully balanced the game with some minor exceptions. Yeah, exactly. They just, they live in this la-la land where a 10% balance difference is completely okay and acceptable, and no players are going to care. And the problem with that is, like, when you introduce these pow like power systems, right, like Covenants and, you know, Azerite Essences and all this other shit, the only players who you are actually impacting with it are the endgame raiders. Because, you know, as many people pointed out back in Shadowlands, the casual player who is just going to pick their Covenant based on, like, cosmetic stuff, doesn't care if they're taking a 10% damage loss. You know, if they want to be Night Fae, they're going to be Night Fae, whether it's 5%, 10%, or 20%. So, the only person who you are actually impacting by adding things like that is specifically the endgame raiders who actually care about performance. And at that point... You know, it doesn't matter, once again, whether it is 5%, 10%, or 20%, if it is a damage loss to run a Covenant, they are not going to run it. And that's the thing that Ian just could not wrap his head around. Like, they, they always think that there is some magic point where, oh, if they're only this damage, like, if it's only this much of a damage loss, then some people will still play it. And that's just not the case, right? Most people do not play the game that way. Most people either, A, don't give a shit at all, and whether or not something is good or bad doesn't affect them because they just play whatever they think is fun. Or they do care a lot and they effectively are forced to play whatever is best because that is just kind of how group um, co-op games like this are designed. 
if you are playing with 20 other people and you are just intentionally playing the worst thing, I mean, quite honestly, I would be pissed, right? Like, if I was in Shadowlands, if I was in a raid with somebody who was running the wrong Covenant, and they were doing 20% less damage because they're like, ooh, it's my flavor, I would be annoyed, right? Especially at the level that I raid at. You know, at that point, it really isn't, like, acceptable on a... And it is one of those things, you know, social pressure, blah, blah, blah. Some people will say that that's, like, bad, and oh, social pressure, like, that shouldn't exist in this type of game. And, like, you know, whatever. It, it is what it is, and honestly... You can't really change it because that's just fundamental, like, group um, behavior in anything. Not just World of Warcraft, any game, right? You know, when everybody is working together towards a common goal and one person is effectively holding the group down for, you know, a selfish reason, like, they think the ability looks cooler. If you are all taking it seriously and really trying to work together to achieve something difficult and you're spending a considerable amount of time progging raid, and you have that one person who's just not putting in the effort, it's always going to suck. And that is the thing that, like, you know, they keep thinking that, you know, they can change the group dynamic, and they just can't. And they they keep acting like, you know, people aren't going to care about... Like, the whole augmentation evoker argument, I didn't even touch upon that before, right? But one of the dumbest things they've done with Og, which is just so easily avoidable, and from what I've been told, apparently they could, with, like, the press of a button fix this and it's a deliberate design choice by them the, the whole details thing right where odd damage doesn't show up in details because for whatever reason they think players want to see themselves buffing other people and that's the class fan like fuck off no nobody does that like what player are you catering to like if people actually care about their damage if somebody's installing a damage meter it's because they want to fucking see how much damage they're doing Nobody's installing a damage meter and then looking at the damage meter going, ho ho ho, wow, my friends are so good at this game. Ah, uh, I do not care about my performance at all. That is clearly why I installed the damage meter, to not give a shit at all about how my performance is actually in the game. It's just so disconnected with reality on how anyone plays this game. Either nobody's going to give a shit how much they're buffing people with AUG, or they're going to be installing a meter specifically to see how much they are buffing people with AUG. It, just why? Why draw a line in the sands like we don't want that to be shown in game? It just, it helps nobody at all, except it makes them feel like they're, I don't know, contributing to change, right? That they're changing the group dynamic that, you know, instead we're going to make players less selfish by uh, making it so they can't see their damage in game. So they're forced to not give a shit about whether they're doing personal damage. Like, no, that's not how anybody, and nobody's going to be like, wow. Blizzard removed my ability to see my damage in-game, I guess I'll suddenly start being a much more ethical player and not care about my own personal performance whatsoever. Wow, thanks Blizzard for completely solving any sort of parse addiction problem that I may have. They're just gonna install Warcraft logs and start logging every single one of their dungeon runs. Like, hey, what do you think you're accomplishing there? It's- that one is just almost- I don't even want to talk about it because it's just so obviously fucking stupid that- I, I don't know how they haven't already uh, reverted that decision because everyone has been dunking on them for it. It is like the dumbest thing to possibly say. Like, honestly, they may have been better off lying and pretending that they don't know how to implement it. That like, oh, guys, the functionality is not there, right? Uh, because at least then you could maybe say, oh, well, you know, they're they're just incompetent. They're not like actually, you know, doing a really stupid decision for the game. I guess th that's also incompetent, right? Uh, both things would be incompetent. But at least maybe you could say, oh, yeah, they probably just don't know how to implement it properly. But here, no, they've said they know how to make augmentation evoker damage show in details. They just don't want to do it for the dumbest fucking reasons imaginable. Like, don't fucking get it, man. I don't fucking get it. So is there a chest here? There's no chest here. Unlucky. There may be a chest somewhere else, but we'll see. Yeah, uh... Head over to turn in all this stuff. Uh... I can't remember if I want to turn in this stuff now. I think I should just go up here and do these quests first and then turn them all in in one sitting. I want to say that's faster. Eh, anyways. Um... You'll be a bit of a Blizz fanboy and say that the systems they make are stupidly difficult to balance. The problem is they make it difficult to... Yeah, I mean, you're correct, right? Like, 
nobody's like that's the problem they'll always use that excuse right well it's so difficult to balance this properly and like yeah it's not wrong the problem is that they designed these systems in the first place that nobody wants like nobody asked for covenants nobody wanted as right essences nobody wanted that shit they are the ones who made it so that's why it's like constantly the whole you know oh man this system it's so hard for us to balance guys you got to cut us some slack it's like motherfucker you made the system why would you design a system intentionally hard to balance just don't fucking do that you're just making your lives harder just make the game fun <laughs> Don't add extra layers of complexity that then require you to spend all of this time tweaking balance knobs. Just don't fucking do it in the first place. It, it, like, it doesn't make the game any more fun for anyone. It just gives them more work and makes the game more of a headache for everybody. Like, they shoot themselves in the foot over and over and over and over. It's like Patrick trying to walk into the, the store with like the board of wood nailed to his head. Like That is Blizzard trying to design new systems every single fucking time. Uh, as a hunter player, you hated the way they changed survival, like being forced to be a melee class is annoying. Yeah. And it's like, as somebody who enjoys the survival playstyle, I would have much rather they just made a new spec. Like, why can't you just make a fourth hunter spec that is melee focused? Why did you need to take away an iconic playstyle that a lot of people liked in survival, you know, with traps and stuff like that? Um, Black Arrow. Has Black Arrow even returned? Is it like a marksman ability now? I don't fucking know. I haven't really played Marksman in a hot minute, outside of, you know, that one leveling run where if Black Arrow was an option, I didn't take it, so I don't know for sure. Uh, but, yeah, they completely fucked over a lot of really big Survival Hunter fans, you know, pre-Melee rework, and, um, you know, for no reason. It could have just been a separate spec. It's also why, like, a lot of people say, I wish Enhancement Shaman was a... Uh, a tank spec. And it's like, well, I want a tank shaman, but don't take away enhancement, right? Don't do enhancement players dirty like that. Let enhancement stay a damage spec and just make a new shaman spec that does damage. You know, it doesn't need to be one or the other. You don't need to delete another spec to make room for one more. Uh, okay, we're going to go down to avatar ASAP. Uh, I can also switch to Shadowlands consumables at this point, so... Phantom Fire, Deathly Ferocity, Battle Scarred Augment Rune, there. Uh, am I blind? Yes, I am blind, in fact. And special power. Okay, that should be everything. Okay, uh, this, this, I need to use two Shadow Core oils to kill this mob really quick while I wait for that. Uh, I want to refresh Bear Tartar because it's about to fall off. Uh, good night, owner. When you watch this in the recording, I just saw your message. So, yeah. Josh Allen was cool before joining Blizzard, then everyone hated him. I don't know if I would say everyone hated him. I also think Lore had a lot of cooked takes on Twitter and stuff. He said a lot of stuff that I thought was kind of stupid, but I don't know if I would go so far as to say everyone hated him. He said a lot of stuff that annoyed people, but that's maybe a bit of an overstatement. I also think, honestly, I actually kind of liked him in a lot of those early interviews that he did with Ian, but at the same time, it's hard to say if that was because Josh was likable, or if because, like, Josh was normal, and Ian was so just blatantly unlikable as a person that put up next to anybody they seem ridiculously likable compared to Ian Hasekostas. That dude is just such a fucking robot whenever he talks, and it's just impossible for anything that he says to be good whatsoever. So anything compared to that, yeah, probably looks pretty good. So I think that's probably one of the reasons why I got a good impression of Josh Allen from those interviews, because he always seemed like the regular person who would, like, ask honestly decent questions to, um, you know, what Ian would say, and Ian would just kind of brush it off and be like, I don't know, whatever. And it was just kind of annoying to watch, because sometimes the things that, you know, Josh would bring up, I'm like, yeah, you know, he has a point, right? And then Ian would just always shrug it off and be like, no, 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 we're, we're not doing that, right? So, just fucking annoying. I, like, one of those, those fucking WAD developer things, like, I hate watch so many of them, because, like, every single time I watch them, I would just be so angry at the shit Ian would say, but, like, I just, I kept 
needing to watch it because I'm just like, what dumb shit is he gonna say this time and just make a complete fucking ass of himself? And um, he did it a lot. Good old Ian has a costas. That's his specialty, saying stupid shit in interviews that makes everyone think he's an idiot. Uh, and I don't know. He clearly doesn't have enough self awareness to realize that. Um. By the way, in case it's not clear, I'm never gonna fucking get a Blizzard interview, <laughs> which I don't really care about. Uh, right? Like, I'll gladly interview somebody at Blizzard when they get their shit together, but. Uh, I am definitely, like, burning any potential bridges that I could have by sitting here on stream and saying this shit and being actually vocal about it. But I'd rather do that than, like, you know, simp for a company that I think makes a lot of dog shit decisions. Um, but a few people have brought that up. More so my friends, right, like, have said, like, you know, you shit talk Blizzard all the time. You realize they're probably, they probably hate you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah whatever. Like, I don't care. Um... Can you do this as well with a Warlock? You can do this with anything. The route has nothing to do with the class. Yes, you can do this with literally any spec, even rogues, which, you know, are going to struggle the most because it's rogues. But yes, you can do this route with literally anything. What consumables do you use? I have a consumable guide. Uh, fairly recent. Go watch it. Uh, I don't know why I watch WoW speedruns knowing you won't even be able to get one fourth of the time. I mean, I like to think it's fun to watch. And hey, practice makes perfect. You absolutely can get, like, you know, I guess one-fourth of the time by, like, you know, my time would be, or your time would be four times mine in that case. Uh, you absolutely can. Just takes practice, right? You'll get there eventually. Especially, like, I think with even a decent amount of practice and understanding the route without using, like, a ton of consumables. Like, I've seen a lot of people get times of, like, you know, five to six hours, which is definitely very good. Uh, and doesn't really require you to get there. It requires, like, a lot of additional... Um, you know, practice and min-maxing and stuff like that, and using the really, really high-end consumables if you want to get, like, super fast times, but that, that doesn't fucking matter, right? Um, and hell, this run isn't even that good. Like, this, I spent a lot of time talking to chat, so I'm probably, I think I maybe still get sub-5 hours, but it's gonna be close. We're uh, a little ways off from what I usually am. Uh, go watch World First Imperator Margok. The Boomkin was using one of the training add-ons. Really? I actually didn't know that. That's funny. I mean, I guess at least there, it goes to show that it's possible to still be in a high-end guild. I don't know that Boomkin, though. It's entirely possible maybe he was getting carried. It, Race the World First wasn't nearly as serious back then, if we're being completely real. Uh, but I don't know who the Boomkin was, so I don't want to shit-talk them. Maybe it's, like, one of the main Boomkin players now, and I've, like, accidentally insulted them, or whatever. Uh... Let me do this poll. Um... Let's see. I thought you were talking about dollars when you said 600k. No, no, gold. Gold. Yes. Uh... I did not lose... I, I don't have nearly that much money, just to be clear. Um, no. This was World of Warcraft gold. Uh, I forgot that, like, people didn't have that context, so... Uh, that probably would have been good to establish, yes. Um, 600k gold, aka, like, what is that? Uh, like, $40? Which, I guess, like, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot. But $40 is still a significant amount to lose in one night. Uh, I guess if you convert it based on the token price, right? But no, that definitely not real money. Um, stepped away to get dinner, come back, and I've gone from 27 to 48. Oh, nice, white fins up. Uh, yeah. Uh, generally speaking, the later levels tend to speed up a lot. That's not really necessarily anything special. That's just like the uh, later levels being much faster. Like, you'll notice levels 50 to 60 are super duper quick compared to everything before it. So it feels weird, because it's like it feels like it should be the end of the run and things should get harder, but it's kind of the opposite in a lot of cases. Right. Fury Warrior does require a decent amount of focus to play. So, I've kind of fallen behind in chat, kind of by nature of it requiring a little bit more of my attention. Which is nice, I mean, it's been fun so far. But, uh... I don't know. 
Uh, you have this theory that Activision wants to drive Blizzard into the ground so the Microsoft deal can go through. That is why Blizzard is making really strange decisions. I mean, it's an interesting theory, but I can almost guarantee you that is not the case at all. Uh, they gain nothing out of driving a company into the ground. There's... Yeah, that... that They've also been making bad decisions for much longer than that deal has been on the table, right? So it's not like this is anything new. If World of Warcraft was making perfect decisions for years on years, and then randomly when the the deal got announced, they started making completely nonsensical decisions, I would say maybe you have a point. But the reality is World of Warcraft has been, or Blizzard in general, has been making incredibly dumb decisions way, way before uh, the Microsoft merger deal was ever a thing. Even before, you know, the whole scandal, right? So... They, they've they been digging their own grave for quite some time now, just making really tone-deaf uh, decisions as a company. Uh, is WoW free to play now? No, it still requires a sub. There's a free trial, but I mean, I'll be honest, one of the worst things about WoW at the moment is its free trial. Final Fantasy has a great free trial, Guild Wars 2 is a pretty good free trial, uh, World of Warcraft free trial is fucking terrible, and you get basically nothing. I would say it may not even have one. Like, getting up to level 20 lets you see barely enough of the game to form an opinion on it, and because World of Warcraft, unlike a lot of other games, is so endgame heavy, the fact that you can't really see any of the endgame without actually, you know, paying a sub is, eh, not the best model. I don't know how Blizzard changes that. It's definitely not an easy problem to solve. I'm not saying I have the answer, uh, but... Their insultingly bad free-to-play offer at the moment is um, not super great. Especially when, you know, you can maybe get away with that before when Blizzard was like the, or World of Warcraft was the MMO, right? Where it was the only really, really big one. And, you know, you can get away with making some greedy decisions when you have no real competition. But at this point, when you have Final Fantasy having a ridiculously good offer on their free trial... And, you know, my sister has almost gotten through Heaven's Word and still not paid a cent for Final Fantasy. She's been playing it for hundreds of hours and she's really enjoying it. When you have something like that as your main competitor, how are you going to justify still not having a remotely good free trial at all? It's, um, yeah, a little bit surprising that they haven't kind of gotten with the program on that by this point. Uh, what was the weirdest question you've ever received on stream? Um, I, I don't know. There's a lot of them. I also, like, I wouldn't want to say the weirdest question I've ever received on stream. The weirdest question I've ever received on stream that I remember that isn't bad enough that I don't want to say it. I have it pinned in my Discord. Let me find it. The first donation that I ever received on a stream was... Uh, I Yeah, I haven't pinned in my main channel. Uh, did you know that a cow's udder is the same size as PP, so it's instinct for a calf to latch on and start blow blow? That was, mind you, the very first donation that I ever received on a live stream. Uh, that question. So, I guess it's definitely not the weirdest question I've been asked on stream. Quite surprisingly, maybe, considering it is a very weird question. Uh, but I remember that one because it was specifically in a donation. And it just caught me so off guard. Because uh, I'm like, it's one of those things where, wow, it's my first ever donation on stream. And then I read it and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why? Of all the words to choose to use, you pick those in that order. It's just, no. But, um, I mean, hey, at least it, it stuck in my memory. So it worked, right? Uh, I guess it's better than like a generic first donation. Let me, um, get the stupid tag and then run away before I aggro the murlocs. There we go. Uh, it sucks, but it is what it is. I'm just glad you have read one of my messages, man. Yeah. Uh, I leave the stream open and keep listening to you talking while playing other games and watching other muted streams. Awesome. Uh, I'm glad you enjoy listening to it then. And before toxic streamer not reading my message, rage babyface. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're like, uh, once again, I, I know what this is in reference to when I basically said, why the fuck would you ask that? 
So I'm not going to read the question. Um, but it's just one of those weird things where I think anyone with like a minimal amount of self-awareness when asking something like that would probably know that it's not an appropriate thing to ask. So I don't really think they would have any, uh, have any reason to be upset about me basically telling them to fuck off. That's the kind of question where you literally ask it just to be a dick, just because you're like, I know this is a way overly personal question that literally nobody wants to answer. So I'm going to ask it to somebody who's screaming just to see what their reaction is. Right. That's the kind of question it is where it's just like, no, fuck off. Um, RNG was super bad in Legion and BFA. Yeah. Uh, Agavokers needed to use copy-paste text to not get kicked from groups. Yeah, it's uh, definitely not an ideal situation. Obviously, I'm, one of the worst things about Agavoker is that, right? The fact that because it's so different from how everything else works in this game, obviously, like, experienced players like us can argue about whether or not it's helpful for... And, like, I would say even people in the chat right now who understand basic things about world of warcraft and like know that augmentation exists right like we at least know what it does we know it's a support spec etc um and we can sit here and argue is it healthy for the game like is it good that a support spec works like that but the other main issue with aug that you know as somebody pointed out you needed to literally use like a copy paste macro in chat to let people know hey i'm playing aug i am a new support spec right that means that i will do less damage because there's a lot of clips out there of like ragnaros players who just say wtf evoker zero damage and then kick them from the group right um there was like a post on reddit about that like not to call out ragnaros players specifically i just saw a lot of posts from ragnaros players which like you know they, they have a, a stigma for a reason right no offense chori who i think is probably still watching this not all ragnaros players are bad right but um it happened enough that you know obviously a lot of people needed to do that and um it sucks when you have to constantly explain the spec to new players because blizzard designed something so weird that you know a lot of people don't even understand how it works uh, so from a new player perspective or somebody who like hasn't been following world of warcraft changes it may definitely be jarring to see Hey, why is this player doing literally no damage? Like, they must be bad, right? Because that is how I've always evaluated players in World of Warcraft. If they are low damage, they must be bad. So, you know, my uh, DPS monkey brain goes, ah, shitty evoker, haha, kick, and doesn't actually understand that, you know, it's a brand new specialization. So that's another big issue with it, for sure. Um, there's so many different issues with Og that you don't even know where to start, right? It's just, it was so ill-conceived. Okay, you get signed out too yep I mean, there's a so many entitled people today like this guy saying hello what consumables do you use question mark question mark question mark like okay karen chill the fuck out like jesus fucking christ i didn't respond within five minutes hello streamer i asked you a question how dare you ignore me oh my god like fuck off out of my stream with that shit, right? I will get to you eventually. You have no fucking right to get an answer. You will if you sit patiently, but you have no fucking right to demand an answer. Get the fuck out. Um, anyways. Uh, thank you, Shayoshi, for at least trying to, like, say that and, you know, at least being nice to him. But, like, fuck that mentality, man. Two people today. Usually there's only one entitled person in chat. I should probably start banning them. I'm at least being generous and I'm giving them a timeout to basically be like, sit there and think about your behavior. They probably already left though. Like the moment I didn't answer their question in five milliseconds, they just left the stream, I would imagine. Um, but if they are still here, just know that is not fucking tolerated. And uh, if you want to stay here, be fucking normal. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe I should be a bit harsher. Uh, there's a video on the channel. Oh, yeah, I just read that. Um, but yeah, thanks again for at least trying to answer that, because I know I'm still catching up uh, on chat. So I appreciate it when people, at least while I'm still catching up, point others in the right direction. Unfortunately, it should not be required, but a lot of people are impatient. What? Why is this not on? My quest tracker is not working. Hold on. I'm going to abandon, like, Duskwood and other quests, because I think it's making it so my quest tracker is not showing up. Just gonna abandon Gorgron too. 
Yeah, why is this not tracking? Like, look at this. It's not showing up in the map. So, which one is it that I missed? It's the Artifact of the Broken Tablet. Is this quest bugged? Do I need to, like, abandon it? There we go. I don't know what happened there. Why the tracker did not fucking work. Um. Anyways, uh... Go back here, and... Black Arrow came back in BFA or Shadowlands, but it didn't do anything like in Wad and Mop. Ah, gotcha. Uh, ooh, is that Lord Condar? That is Lord Condar. Uh, Druid has four specs and no one is complaining. Just make one more spec. Exactly, yeah. There's already a precedent for it in-game. I Druid is a little bit weird, though. Like, the reason why I think they were okay doing that is because... From its very inception, right? Feral Druid was always kind of a dual purpose role. It, like, even in vanilla WoW, you know, it was either you play cat or you play bear. And, like, some people obviously play both. The best players, of course, can cat weave when possible. But there was always, like, people who only played cat or people who only played bear. And even from literally the start of the game, they were effectively two different play styles. So, it makes a lot more sense why they decided to, in that one particular case, split up the spec. But I think it is absolutely correct that there is a precedent there. They could do it again if they really wanted to. But for whatever reason, they haven't. I am actually very surprised that Blizzard has not added additional specs past... Obviously, they've added Aug, which is kind of one of the first times... I think it may be the first time that a brand new spec, uh, outside of, obviously, Guardian, um, got added to a class after it was released. Though, obviously... Evoker started one spec short, so I don't know. It's I think Og was probably more cut content from launch that they then added later on. Hard to say for certain, but I don't know. It is at least interesting. Uh, for being a lawyer, Ian is not good at presenting stuff in a way that makes people believe him. Yeah, so like obviously he used to be a lawyer or something like that. Like I don't know exactly what his job was, but it was around like something law related and. Um, some of the best lawyers I've seen, I mean, admittedly, I haven't seen a ton of lawyers, but, like, you want to make yourself, you know, a, relatable and appeal to the court, right? You know, obviously, I've watched a lot of true crime. Maybe that's not obvious. I don't know if I've talked about that, but I watch a lot of true crime. So when I say, like, the lawyers I've seen, when I'm watching, you know, like, a court case or something, and you see, like, the lawyer give his opening statement, a lot of, like, the best prosecutors... Uh, and even defense attorneys, right? Like, there are times where I'm watching a case and I'm like, oh, this person's so fucking guilty. Like, they totally did it. But then the defense attorney gives, like, an insanely good and, like, passionate opening statement. And it's something I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, he raises some good points. And it's like, that's what you need to do. You need to appeal to, you know, the, the people and the jury, right? And I think good lawyers shouldn't be complete robots, even though it's that stereotype, right, of, like, the unfeeling lawyer. You know, a lot of the best lawyers are actually able to show emotion and kind of manipulate the emotions of other people. And, yeah, I, I mean, definitely I don't think that Ian, it's a good for him at all. I think he likes to stick to that persona. I don't know if that just is how he presents himself all the time. But it feels like he, he kind of needs to make himself seem professional and I don't think he realizes that, like, dude, you're, like, the lead developer of a video game, right? People don't want somebody who's, like, super uptight and professional to be, like, the lead developer and the person communicating to them about balance changes. Like, just be a fucking human, right? That's what people want to actually see. I mean, I'm sure it's one of those, like, common sense things that he has to know that. So I have to wonder if that's just, like, how he acts all the time, which, like, whatever, I don't know. In that case, I guess at least he's being his authentic self, but... Mm. How do you start at level 10? Allied races. So if you're playing classic and you're wondering how to start at level 10, it's a retail thing. A decent amount of people, I guess, get confused about that. But yeah, it's uh, retail allied races start at level 10. That's the run that I'm doing, or at least the category, which is mostly what I do. Uh, you're watching the stream because you can learn so much from all the commentary and conversation. The route may be redundant, but the subjects are always interesting. Yeah. I mean, for a stream about speedrunning, honestly, 99% of the time I'm talking about something completely unrelated to speedrunning. But, you know, speedrunning is just kind of a nice thing for me. Uh, obviously, I'm doing this because, partially, I want to get all the testing done. So, 
I've got to do this at some point. That's why I've always said before, I like to do it on stream because I'm going to talk about whatever the fuck I feel like talking about on stream anyways. Whether I'm doing a speedrun or playing classic hardcore or playing Wrath of the Lich King classic, I'm going to be just rambling about whatever shit I feel like. So I've got to do all this retail leveling testing at some point. Uh, but this is just like really boring for me to do without the stream. And, you know, I know people enjoy watching it, right? So uh, at least by doing it on stream, people can enjoy watching it and I, I can have stuff to do while I, you know, go through the motions on like my 20 millionth leveling run. Um, 58 to 60 are relatively slower. Not really. No, the entire... Uh, I would actually say they're, they're definitely not relatively slower. For um, retail? Definitely not for retail. The entire last 10 levels are ridiculously fast uh, compared to everything else. It's just the way the XP scaling works. The amount of XP you gain for those levels relative to the amount of XP required for whatever reason is tuned to make it much faster. And at lower levels, it's slower. I mean, it's just, it's math, right? The, um, it used to be the inverse, right? So in Shadowlands, the last 10 levels did actually take a while, which also meant that the most important part of the route in Shadowlands used to be the very end and making sure you had like absolutely a perfect setup for uh, 40 to 50, which at the time was the cap, at least for Chromie time. But um, now with the new way the scaling works, it's kind of nice, it's the opposite. All you need to do is make sure that at low levels and like the mid levels, I have uh, really good stuff. And then honestly, 50 plus, I don't even get new BOEs at this point because by the time you get all the talents, you just murder things super quickly. Like I haven't replaced my gear since level 41 and I'm now level 56 and it doesn't matter at all because the talent points you get just make you super overpowered, which is fun. Like at this point, Fury Warrior, it's just I'm kind of pressing buttons and shit's dying and... You know, that's always what makes leveling fun. Speaking of which, I should take Ravager. Uh, I can take Avatar now, and I can take Berserker's Tarmit. All right, uh, so Avatar on T, Ravager on... Let's go... Actually, Control T, I think, is probably good for that. I think at this point, I also... Uh, there's a few pulls left that are really large pulls that I can use uh, Ravager on. Yeah, I have at least a few use cases for Ravager. But a lot of the situations in which Ravager would have been really good, I've kind of already passed. So, eh. Not a huge deal, though. Um, uh, let's go down here. Yeah, that's like really good damage. What's the breakdown? Yeah, Ravager and Rampage doing most of the damage. So Ravager is definitely really fucking solid AoE damage. It's a shame that you don't get it until much later. It seems like a really fun ability to use. I always liked using it on Prot, so it seems like it's still really good on Fury as well. I also like how you can execute one mob and it cleaves onto all the others, even if they're not within execute range. That actually feels really nice. Um... You're leveling everything from 1 up? Yeah, it's specifically allied races that start at 10. There's nothing wrong with starting from level 1. In fact, a lot of times, if I want a very specific race that is not an allied race, I will just level them up from 1. It takes an extra 30 minutes. It's really not a big deal. The first 10 levels is literally 30 minutes, which at that point, who cares? I just don't think it's interesting to do in speedruns, and I like playing allied races more, so I just do a lot of 10 to whatever runs. It's also when Chromie time starts, which is the only thing that really matters for the routing, because Exile's Reach is pretty basic. There's not really a ton to figure out there for guides. There haven't been any changes to it recently, so not a whole lot to figure out there. Uh, they should let you have a geared character system for trial where you move on a set level for 10 days or something. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Um, here, I'm going to put this on Shift-T because instinctively, I feel like it's one of those things where I... I don't know if I had Ravager bound to Shift-T, but every time I go to press Ravager, I instinctively press Shift-T. So I think it's like my hidden Prot Warrior muscle memory from like earlier in this expansion when I was playing it. Maybe I had it bound to Shift-T, I completely forget. But at this point, I my fingers just keep going into that position, so I might as well just change the keybind to that so I 
don't keep pressing the wrong thing. Okay, so... There's a few bobcats here. And top this one in here. And then shift T. I will say Fury Warrior, I, I guess it makes sense, but half of their abilities have the character go like, ah, when you cast it stuff. And I guess, you know, it's Fury, you know, you're angry, you're yelling. So thematically, it does make sense, but it is kind of like a little bit distracting every single time I'm doing my rotation. I just hear, ah, ah, like on everything. And it's like very, very noticeable, more so than I guess other classes that I played. Um... You're right, it has nothing to do with Microsoft, and you're sure Microsoft won't save it either. Capitalism has a tendency to... A tendency of rate of profit to fall, so the quality drops naturally. Yeah, fair. Uh, when everything you're doing is chasing profit for competition, if one company implements pay-to-win or pay-to-lose, Blizzard would do that too. You're, you are not wrong there, uh, as a shame as it is. Um... What a good time to join the stream. Oh, I assume... Was this when I was ranting about, like, the person asking the stupid question? Yeah. Yep, that was exactly what it was. Uh, yep. There you go. Perfect time. Uh, hold on, let me do this poll. I can't... I could just kind of kite this and, like, hop back and forth, but... It's just easier for me to kill all this stuff in the way. I'm gonna... I should be keeping Death Wish up for sure. I think one thing that I should probably take into consideration when I eventually make my tier list is how big of an impact war mode talents have, or PvP talents within war mode. Because obviously, I always recommend leveling in war mode. And. I will do my rankings entirely based off, you know, what are the PvP talents. So I'm going to assume you have Glass Cannon on Fire Mage, right? So obviously, not having Glass Cannon is going to make Fire Mage a decent bit worse compared to, like, when we tested it the other few weekends. But, I don't know. I think it's... There's no downside to leveling in War Mode. As you've all seen across all of these speedruns, I do uh, so many runs in War Mode. And if I'm not getting ganked while streaming... The odds of you getting ganked just in a complete vacuum uh, when you don't even run the risk of having stream snipers, right? It's just unlikely. You still never get ganked. So I don't really think there's any downside to running war mode. It's just free experience. Uh, you get really strong talents, just what's not to like, right? But I do think I will at least mention it in a note uh, when I do the tier list on like Hey, keep in mind, this spec really heavily relies on PvP talents, so for whatever reason uh, you don't like uh, War Mode, uh, you just keep that in mind. So, Fury Warrior definitely seems... I wouldn't necessarily say it's required, the PvP talents, but it is noticeably higher impact than a lot of other stuff. And I haven't really been taking or using Death Wish as much as I should. If I was really min-maxing Death Wish, if this was like a super serious speedrun, and I was trying to keep 100% uptime on this, and I had to really focus to do that, my overall, like, speed through this would be significantly better. I think Fury would actually be pretty good. Because whenever I do keep up Death Wish, I just shred through stuff. But it is one of those things where you have to take the PvP talent for it, and it does require you to pay a lot more attention not only to your stacks, but also to your health, and you have to heal at the right time so you don't kill yourself with it. So it does require a little bit more micromanagement, which isn't necessarily always the best thing for a leveling spec, because a lot of times when somebody wants to get something that's good for leveling, the entire thing that they're looking for is something that they can just zone the fuck out and, you know, level really easily. And, like, honestly, Guardian Druid, right, is perfect for that. Guardian Druid, you literally just you press Thrash, you press Maul, Raise when you eventually get it, and, like, shit just dies, right? But here... You actually need to really pay attention to your abilities to make sure you're doing damage properly. You can't just mash one or two buttons. You have to use them in the right order. You have generators, spenders, you have death wish, right? You know, stuff that you need to stack up. So it's good, right? I have no problem with this rotation, but I know that a lot of new players would potentially not love this playstyle. So 
this is like one of the reasons why whenever I, I say like people are like, just do your own leveling tier list, like just throw it out there. I don't care. I've given like um my off the cuff opinions on certain uh like leveling um what's it called? Of certain like rankings on what I where I think this spec would fall relative to like Guardian Druid or Windwalker. But the reason why I wanted to do all of these testing runs before I actually make the tier list is for the that exact insight, right? Because before this stream, I would not have been able to tell you that about, you know, oh, keeping Death Wish up is really important, and, you know, it requires a little bit more uh, actual attention relative to a lot of other stuff, so maybe it's not good for new players who are just looking for something uh, mindless and easy. Uh, and I would have been able to tell you before... Fury Warrior is good, right? Fury Warrior has always been a pretty good leveling spec. It's been, like, one of the better ones. Uh, and I know a lot of people have told me that Fury Warrior is really good to play. Warrior, in general, has always been just a solid leveling class, at least in recent World of Warcraft expansions, right? So, I could have told you that. I probably would have said, yeah, if I had to guesstimate Fury in low A tier. And I don't really think my ranking for Fury... Uh, mid A tier is probably a better bet. There's a few things that I would put below Fury... Um, but, like, I wouldn't have been able to give a super deep insight into why Fury is where it is, and I want to be able to actually give that insight for every single spec. So when I finally make that tier list, it's gonna be long. Uh, I will be probably covering every single spec, and I will be covering every single spec in the game, and I will probably be going into depth with each one. So I think bare minimum, that's gonna be, like, a two, three hour video, <laughs> which... I don't know. I may just do that off the cuff with, like, minimal editing just because that editing a two to three hour video sounds like a fucking nightmare and something that I would never end up really finishing. Whenever I start trying to edit something, I always try to go, for, like, and make it perfect and then it just kind of spirals out of control or I'm just spending too much time doing it instead of just publishing the video. Um, so we'll see how I will eventually do it. But it is going to be a very very long video because if i wanted to i could do like a 20 minute quick and dirty tier list on like here's what's good but it would offer virtually no insight because it's impossible to really give like strong insight into why certain things are good or bad until you've actually played every single one and like i could tell you that guardian druid's good and anyone who's watched my guardian druid runs will know guardian druid's good but for a brand new player who hasn't watched the runs it may help to get like a lot of additional information on why it is and you know, other specs as well. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do with all of this. Nice. That was yeah, pretty ridiculous burst, honestly. And all Fury stuff is like roughly 1.5 minutes. So it lines up fairly well. You can pretty much just every 1.5 minutes completely delete a group of mobs, which is very, very, very nice. Uh, can you all turn off automatic breathing mode, please? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, there was no question on your behalf. You were just memeing as you do, yeah. Um, they probably asked it for shock value or outrage, yeah. Uh, let me see. Okay, nice thing is starting this flight, I can at least read chat for the next few minutes without worrying about, like, falling behind on the speedrun. Uh, you think the person left after you told them that there was a video? Gotcha. Uh, what's the best leveling area for 50 to 60 on Horde? It's not really a specific zone. The best leveling area for Horde will always be Hillsbred Foothills, right? So, if you have not done Hillsbred Foothills, and you're leveling from 50 to 60, it'll still be Hillsbred Foothills. If you have done Hillsbred Foothills, well then, of course, it depends, right? It depends on what are the other zones that you've done. I have a section on that on my guide about if you are starting the run uh, or if you're starting on like an existing character at like level 40 or something, what order of zones should I follow? So I've literally covered that exact question. Um, plays into the druid niche of being the ultimate hybrid to have four specs every role type. Yeah. Person watched the consumables video and I came back to the stream and discovered he's timed out. Who knows? Um... DH healer when yeah DH healer might be what a, a bit of a stretch in terms of like whether it works for class fantasy also why am i in combat i think it's i got pulled right over a kobold or something on that horse flight path 
You wonder if DH will ever get a third spec? It should. I really hope it eventually gets a third spec, but, you know, with Blizzard, who knows. Shaman needs a Shaman spec. Warrior is so... I, I assume that was a typo, right? Because uh, I assume you didn't mean to say Shaman needs a Shaman spec. I think you meant to say Shaman needs a tank spec. But, like, I know what you meant. I just, it was funny reading that. Uh, Shaman needs a Shaman spec. Uh, okay, so Garrison Hearthstone, and then we do Southern Talador is how I usually uh, finish this off. Uh, Warrior needs a sword and board DPS spec that is more fleshed out than Gladiator was. Paladin and Priest, a holy range DPS spec. I think a ranged holy spec would definitely be good. I think it could go either on Paladin or Priest. But the fact that there is no ranged DPS holy, and it's all like, you know, either melee holy or ranged shadow is kind of weird. So definitely could be something cool that they could do. There's, I'm sure there's design space there. Uh, you're considering sharing the Reddit post meme of Ogvokers being told their damage sucks? Yeah. Uh, I've seen it, but if you want to, like, post it in my Discord or something for people who haven't, go for it. What's the fastest way 60 to 70? Thank you. Watch my video for 60 to 70. Uh, yeah. I, I would say the video itself is maybe a little bit outdated, but the guide is complete. the written guide is completely up to date. And I should note, I am in the process of making a video, updated video guide for 60 to 70, I just can't really finalize it until Blizzard fixes a lot of the bugs currently with 60 to 70 leveling. So my written guide still works perfectly fine. It is the fastest way. But because I can't change a video after the fact, I don't want to actually make that until everything is working. Because if I make a video guide right now and I have to say XYZ thing is still not implemented, then I'm going to get a million comments like, did Blizzard actually fix it by now? And yeah, it's just going to be a headache for me to do, so... Um, we'll get there eventually. Uh, Jade West said, Harlden, I'm kind of new to Wrath Classic and you want to start tanking raids. What tank class do you recommend to focus on? You have a Prop Heli, a Feral Bear, and a Blood DK. I mean, I am slightly biased, but I also do think it is the correct play, Prop Heli. Uh, I really think Prop Heli is just super fun. I don't really think it's too hard to figure out. Like, Wrath tanks in general, especially if you've played retail a little bit, uh, you probably shouldn't uh, struggle too much picking it up but prop heli in general is fairly easy to pick up and it is one of those tanks that is just very 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 strong with like little effort there are definitely ways that you can min max wrath prop heli a little bit but i mean it has a cheat death right so any tank that just has a passive cheat death like that is ridiculously broken so i would say you definitely cannot go wrong playing um wrath prop heli uh Honestly, Blood DK and Feral, they're not hard, for, per se. Uh, maximizing your output with Feral may be a little bit hard just because you would need to learn Cat Weaving, but I mean, you don't need to, but you should probably learn Cat Weaving if you're playing Feral, like at a higher level. Uh, but especially if you're just getting into raids and you're just trying to learn the mechanics, Prop Paladin, or yeah, Prop Paladin uh, would be great for that. Just figuring it out. Um, you have Cheat Death in case anything goes wrong. You have multiple defensives. Prop Paladin and Wrath is just really, 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 really good. And it's fun to play, which I think is the more important thing. I just really enjoy it. Love Wrath Prop Paladin. One second, though, before I read anything else in chat. Since we're almost done, I'm just trying to get through this. And now I just need to use the bolt throwers. So there we go. And one more. I don't think this will be enough. Yeah. So I think I'll still need to do that final bonus objective to get there. Um, Prop Halley it'll be. Thanks. No problem. Uh, Fury is the best class spec in terms of gameplay fun. What should you do after you hit level 60 for the first time? Uh, if, you, if you mean 60 and not 70, uh, if you just hit level 60, first thing you should do reach level 70. Uh, if you don't have Dragonflight, there's really not a lot for you to do. The reality of World of Warcraft, and I, I know a lot of people who maybe bought the game and didn't buy the expansion aren't thrilled to hear this, and I feel you there. There are a lot of games that have done this better, but the reality of World of Warcraft, don't shoot the messenger, is that there is really not much to do unless you have the recent expansion. So 
It's not like Final Fantasy, right, where you can play the free trial all the way up through Heaven's Word, and, I mean, Stormblood is actually being added to the free trial, right? So, Final Fantasy just keeps getting better. I hate to, like, s like, I, I know that I'm answering a question about what to do with World of Warcraft, and I'm talking about how good the Final Fantasy thing is. Obviously, you know, World of Warcraft's good. I enjoy playing it. But in terms of, like, the early player or free-to-play player experience, it's pretty awful. Uh, you need to buy Dragonflight if you really want to have anything to do within the game. Uh, old expansions aren't really ever considered when they do new stuff. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's just flat-out broken in, like, older content, or it's going to be blatantly designed around expecting you to have a max-level character. So if you just hit level 60, buy the expansion and level to 70. That is really the only thing you can do that is worth your time. And then after you hit level 70, there's like a lot of stuff opens up. Uh, but the unfortunate reality of current World of Warcraft is the entire game revolves around max level. And anything before that that you try to do will either be like not really working properly, or it'll just be extremely tedious and it'll be like pulling teeth and it would just be much more worth your time to uh, reach max level. And I say that understanding that I know a lot of people want to be able to, you know, give the game a shot before investing that money and it sucks but it is what it is um create an evoker to level the set well, you, you can't create an evoker if you don't have dragonflight <laughs> so <laughs> the entire question is i just hit 60 for the first time what should i do the answer is not create an evoker because if the uh if they have dragonflight which is what i said right there we go time stops barely missed sub five who cares i spent like 15 minutes literally reading chat so it doesn't matter uh also let's double check right does or do the quest scale so we can head into spires and check that uh have they finally fixed the bug moment of truth and uh i don't remember exactly how much xp this is supposed to give so i will at least pick up the next quest to see i'm pretty sure it's not scaling though actually i could check um I don't know. The other ones I don't have actual quests for. So yeah, let's turn this in, see what the uh, follow-up XP gives. I'm pretty sure it has not been fixed. Yep, you can see it still gives 1,200 experience, so yeah, that's not scaling properly. Unfortunate, uh, but Blizzard still has not fixed the 60 to 61 stuff that has been promised over a month ago, by the way, in the patch notes, by the way, and has never been working. It's not like they implemented it properly and then broke it. It has not been working since day one of the PTR when I tested it, when it first got added to the PTR. Wasn't working then. There is no universe in which this was properly implemented, and they just don't give a shit. So, sucks. You bumped the thread earlier. I appreciate it. Maybe they should increase it to 70. I mean, I would love for Chromie time to go up to 70, but I don't think they're going to do that in the current uh, expansion. Unlikely. Yeah, I, I know you mentioned before that rares still give experience goose comics, but that's probably just not worth doing. It's interesting for sure, but it's... I don't really think it's worth it. Um, let me see, I still missed a few messages. Um, gnome female warrior shouts are insanely cute, I can imagine. You hate pressing shift, control, etc. You would rather bind more keys. Yeah, to each their own. Personally, I love having shift and control modifiers. I'd much rather keep my hand around a centralized area and then just, if I need to press a button, instead of having to reach to a different part of the keyboard, I can just quickly press shift and the same button and, you know, it works out well. I also tend to keep everything, like, somewhat centralized, right? So, you know, I'll have similar things in similar areas. You know, major cooldowns on R and then shift R, so I kind of am always pressing them in the same general time frame. But, like I said, to each their own. Maybe they couldn't play the Void Elf actress enough to make different enough screams, yeah. Death Wish is tricky to keep up since it dismounts, yeah. It's one of those things where, like, I know that you could be doing this really well, and I know that if I really, really, really wanted to micromanage it and keep Death Wish at five stacks and, like, refresh it, mount up again, and you know, go at least for short distances, that's an option, but I don't know. It, that's not the type of effort I'm willing to put in for, like, a casual leveling run, and if even I'm not willing to do that much level of micromanagement, there's absolutely no way the average player is going to be maintaining Deathwish stacks in between pulls. It's cool that it exists, like, 
I, th I'm not to knock Death Wish. This is a really cool ability. I like the design of this, but the way that it ends up functioning, it's just way too much management for PvP or uh, for leveling, right? And it makes sense because it is meant to be a PvP talent. So they weren't considering this from a you know leveling perspective they're considering this from a pvp perspective and i can't speak to that maybe it's much easier to maintain but definitely for leveling it's it's a lot of fucking work hello ria good to see you lock modan is the alliance versions of hills red foothills yes that is correct uh have i tried doing the dark and fair pet battle dailies um so the dark and fair battles you know i can since you know we're done with the run i'll head over there and show for i guess people who aren't familiar with it there i have two answers to that question the first and easy answer is i do not include pet battling at all in my run or in my guide at all it's not even mentioned and that's because pet battling is such a weird like side system and i say this mind you as somebody who likes pet battling you can see here pet journal 920 total pets and i've scrolled down I have a shit ton of level 25 pets. A lot. I scrolled for like five seconds straight there. I have a lot of level 25 pets. So I say this as someone who likes pet battling. So I'm not saying it's a shit system. I love pet battling. It's very fun. Um, I think more people should try it. That said, the process of getting pet battling set up is a fucking pain in the ass. It is so convoluted. Because uh, I remember trying to check that out on like my alt account just to see how it was and it was such a fucking headache so getting pet battling set up on your account is a nightmare getting pets that you could actually realistically use is also really difficult because you don't necessarily just start off with great pets you have to go out and collect them and then level them up and like i get that you could do the dark moon battles with like level one pets so it's not impossible but even then Getting the right level one pet setup to beat the Darkmoon Fair bosses while easy is still, or while easier compared to doing it at level 25, is still not a walk in the park, right? Like, I couldn't take, like, let, let's say if I look at uh, all right, levels, I just scroll to the bottom, right? So, uh, all the way to the bottom, my low level pets. What are some random level one pets that somebody might have? Um, I don't fucking know. Uh, trying to think of. Great Horned Owl, Green Wing Macaw, or whatever. There's a lot of bird pets. I'm just picking the first few that I see. Golden Dragonhawk Hatchling. Oh, this counts as a dragon? Surprise, because it's technically... It isn't actually a dragon. It's a bird. Just Dragonhawk. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so if I have these three pets, right? Like, which, let's just say these are three easy-to-get pets. Just because I have now managed to unlock the pet battle system and I've gotten three green level one pets, not only are these not necessarily great pets, you can maybe make them work in some contexts, but one, they're green, which means they're going to have less stats than traditional pets. And also, they may just not have abilities set up for the Dark Moon thing. So, for, as a rule of thumb, for my leveling guides, I always try to recommend things that like a brand new player could feasibly do. Obviously, minus the consumables and stuff, but everything within the route from like Chromie time and stuff like that, you could feasibly do all of this as a new player. Some of it may be a little bit difficult, but it is not impossible. Pet battling would just be, not be doable for you at all. You would need to go through the entire unlock process, and I, I don't have a guide on how to unlock pet battling, right? So I can't recommend something good. You'd have to go through the entire unlock process. You'd have to like level up pets or find new pets all so that you could do four battles. So that is why I don't do it in the guides. I also don't do it in the speedruns for that reason, because in the speedruns, I extend what I'm willing to do outside of like new player stuff. So there's some tech that I'll use, especially like the consumables and whatnot. It is at least available to everybody and not too hard to get set up. Uh, but as long as it is something, once again, realistically doable by a new player, it's also one of the reasons why do I not do groups, right? Because it is not realistic for everybody to be able to just get a friend to carry them. That's not good. It's also not interesting, which admittedly doesn't apply to pet battling. Pet battling is fun. It's interesting. I agree. But this is way, way too far outside of the realm of something that a new player or even a regular world of warcraft player would be able to do even a normal player who hit level 70 would have to go through so many hoops to be able to do pet battling all of that to say 
if pet battling actually made a significant difference in the route, maybe, maybe I would include it. It is technically speaking efficient to do the Red Ridge pet battle quest if you get a team of three pets that are able to one-shot each of the pets in the Red Ridge Pet Battlers thing. So specifically, if I look at the map, go to Azeroth, Eastern Kingdoms, uh, Red Ridge Mountains. So this Pet Battler, Lindsay, or Lindsay, Lindsay, whatever. Um, this one is right in the path of the Red Ridge quest. So if you are doing Red Ridge, it is worth it to do this Pet Battle because it's just really easy. And there are multiple comps that can one-tap every single pet in this battle. So if you're pressing literally three buttons to get a quest worth of experience, for the record, not necessarily the most efficient quest ever. There are still quests that are faster to do because you press three buttons and then you have to wait for the animation time. So it ends up taking like 30 seconds. It's still worth doing if you have it, but it also requires you to get the perfect pet set up ahead of time. So when I was initially possibly considering doing this, do I have Red Ridge still? Um, I have one. So this pet is called Red Ridge. I think I've renamed the other two. I had three pets named Red Ridge. And what I was planning on doing is naming my uh, one-shot comp all Red Ridge. And then whenever I needed to swap to it, I would just go type Red Ridge, drag and drop them in there. And they all had abilities that would one-shot the pets. But that it was something I had to like plan ahead of time and test it to see, can these... Uh, three pets all one shot, or in this case, can the desert spider without swapping, right? One shot every single thing. I think, do I have Westfall as well? Yeah, Westfall. So I I actually can show it in action. Um, the Crimson Geode can one shot every single pet using a variety of different abilities. Uh, in this fight, Old McDonald, the Crimson Geode at level 25 with whatever stat line I have on it, this pet is able to one shot every single pet. So it can do it in three button presses. So in theory, would that be fast? Yes. Is it realistic to expect people to farm a level 25 rare Crimson Geode? Uh, I don't necessarily know if it requires this exact stat line as well. Maybe. Uh, but just to be able to do the pet battle efficiently? No, that is not even remotely something I'm willing to include in my speedrun. That is like, I can do it, but I don't like it. And also, all of that to say, it's um, it's not even guaranteed to be fast. I don't know for sure. I think you are probably correct that there is a chance it is faster because the dailies give, what, 10k experience? Interesting that this actually scales, whereas Chromie Time doesn't. Um, so this is 10k XP, right? But this is around a normal quest's worth of experience for uh, a Darkman, or for like a regular uh, quest for doing this pet battle. For its, um, so the Red Ridge ones are probably worth it because you can guarantee do them in three moves and they give, once again, a regular quest worth of experience. This one, I actually don't even know if you can do it in um, in three moves. I don't think you can. I, it's a difficult battle. So I think no matter what, the Darkman ones, it might, like, you make break even, right? It would save about as much time to do this quest as it would take to do it if you played it properly. Right, but that would also require a really good comp. So I don't even know where I'd begin with this, right? Uh, so there's, first off, does it scale, right? So if I start this battle, I don't know if this one scales. Yeah, it actually doesn't. So for that reason, definitely not Dark Moon pet battles would not be worth it because these ones do not actually scale down to match your pet level. Um, a lot of the world quest ones do, which is why doing this is like the most efficient strategy, because if that happens, then, you know, it's easy. And the Red Ridge West, West ooh, words, Red Ridge, Westfall and Duskwood pet battlers. There's also one in Elwyn, but it's not worth doing. Um, but those three, they also don't scale, but because they are fixed at a certain level, you can use over leveled pets like I showed earlier, the Crimson Geode, and you're able to one shot every single pet because you are just so much higher level than it is. So, yeah, all that to say, pet battling is, it's interesting to consider. Uh, it, there's a lot of things to actually consider when uh, deciding whether or not it's worth doing, but because of how overly complicated it is both to pull off within a run and more, more importantly for people to get set up, I just don't really want to integrate it into the run. If it was like super fast, right? So like, if the amount of time it took you to get pet battling set up, get a team, and then do the pet battles was just really, really good experience, and that was absolutely worth doing, even as a brand new player, then I would include it in the guide, and then I would probably 
you know, make a guide on how to unlock pet battling to help people get that set up. But as it stands, it's just nowhere near worth uh, going through all that explanation. Very thorough um, answer there, but it's a good question, and it's one that I've been asked a few times, uh, and I don't think I've discussed it in that much detail before, so I wanted to at least go through all of the, the reasons behind it. But good question, for sure. Um, yeah, Goose Comics said, takes a bit too much time to make it worth it. Uh, yeah, pretty much you know, what I said about requires specific pets. Uh, what would I wish for if Demon Hunter 3rd spec ever happens? Definitely a range DH. Something involving, like, uh, fell magic. Like, a mix of fell magic and glaive tossing, I think, would be cool. Uh, maybe, like, something like Survival Hunter, where they could play partially from range with, like, chucking glaives at the enemies and, like, using, like, fell lances and whatnot. But then they would go in with their glaives and do, like, a melee combo. Like, like I said, Survival Hunter or, like, Red Mage in Final Fantasy. Something like Red Mage, I think, would be very cool. Um, I also, I'm biased because I love Red Mage. So, <laughs> any sort of thing that would play like Red Mage in WoW, I would love that. Uh, so, of course, I'm going to say I wanted to play like that. But thematically, I think it could work very well. Um, rares, oh, I read that already. Uh, it's probably an unintended side effect that'll be nerfed if discovered. Oh, for the rares? I don't really think it'll be nerfed because the rares are actually working as intended. So what Goose Comics said, like, you know, the rare scaling, that's how it's supposed to work. The quests should be doing that as well. Uh, it's specifically uh, that they s promised these changes and they didn't implement it correctly. And um, yeah, it sucks. You move WASD to ESDF. Interesting. I don't think I've ever heard of somebody doing that. But like I've said before, whatever works. Uh, personally, I've always used WASD and like obviously mouse to turn, right? Stuff like that. Um, but hey, if it works for you, I am never one to judge somebody's setup. Uh, that's true. Thanks for elaborating. No problem. And then uh, I've caught up on chat. And the last thing in chat is my dad saying, Mighty Harlden, your boar burger with sliced potatoes is here. God, you're such a role player. Come up to replenish your health when you're done. And in fact, we, I mean, I have made it to the end of the stream. You also use ESDF? Oh, interesting. Um, I didn't know that was like even something that people did, but cool. But yeah, so no classic hardcore. Technically, it hasn't been a long stream per se. Uh, but because I can't really go super late because I have classic raid and like, or at least I have to start preparing for classic raid in an hour. Uh, and I don't want to be scrambling at the last second to like, you know, log over and get that all set up. We'll just be stopping it here. Once again, stream tomorrow as usual. Tomorrow's stream will be a 40 to 60 elemental shaman run. So after that, we will have covered every single Shaman spec. We did Enhance and Resto, like a mixed run, kind of like we did uh, Prot and Fury early on in this run. A mix of both is how it usually goes. So I already did an Enhance run where I did some Resto early on. And uh, an Elemental is the only thing that I have yet to cover for Shaman. So I'll be doing that 40 to 60 tomorrow. And then because the 40 to 60 runs always end up being much faster than the uh, 10 to 60 runs... There will be plenty of time after the fact for me to do Classic Hardcore, and uh, I plan on maybe trying a few dungeons. I haven't uh, decided for sure. So as we get closer to Classic Hardcore's release, I'm going to be doing a bit more Classic Hardcore stuff. Obviously, I wanted to dedicate all the streams this week to retail leveling because Darkmoon Fair is up, right? So tomorrow, we won't have Darkmoon Fair. So... I wanted to get all the leveling stuff in now while this is still active. And then once Darkman Fair is over, well, we've done a shit ton of retail stuff. Classic Hardcore is close. We can focus a little bit more on that. So I will be doing shorter leveling runs, probably only a single 10 to 60 run before Classic Hardcore launch, and then a bunch of 40 to 60 runs uh, with like partially, like at the end of the stream, we do a bunch of Classic Hardcore. And then of course, when Classic Hardcore releases on the... Uh, Thursday, the 24th, I will be streaming on that day. I will probably also be streaming Friday by, uh, I guess, necessity, because when I plan on streaming the launch on the 24th, it's just going to be like a 24-hour live stream, effectively. I'm not committing to a 24-hour live stream. If it is, it is. If it's not, it's not. But effectively, it is a, as long as I manage to stay conscious live stream, which is usually like what they are. So like, I was planning on doing one for Dragonflight launch, and obviously technical difficulties fucked that over, but I did like a 26-hour live stream on Shadowlands launch, so I've done it before. Uh, unfortunately, Dragonflight, I kind of got fucked over, so it'll be good practice doing another really long live stream. 
And as we get closer, I'll probably explain a bit more on how I plan on doing that with like splitting it up into multiple different sections. Um, but anyways, yeah, that is the current plan. So Elemental Shaman 40 to 60 with some bonus stuff. Next weekend, the 19th and 20th, uh, going to be another 10 to 60 run that will probably be pulled. And then one more 40 to 60 run with a decent amount of Classic Hardcore. And then, of course, this entire weekend is probably going to be Classic Hardcore only. I'm going to be heavily focused on that until either I die and I decide, fuck this, I'm done. Or, you know, if I survive and I keep going, uh, I'll go as far as I can. And then uh, this is obviously the release of 10.1.7. So as we get closer to that, I will do a few more testing runs for 60 to 70 and then a decent amount of testing after the fact. Uh, thanks for the stream. What time is tomorrow? Uh, ideally, I will always try to start my stream around noon. I have almost always started my stream late, though. So noon Eastern Standard Time is when I try to start. And uh, I don't know. I don't really know exactly uh, how late Classic Raid's going to go. So as long as it doesn't go super late and I'm able to go to bed at like, you know, 2 in the morning or something and be up like at 10 or so and I have like 2 hours to prep for the stream, I should start in time. But anywhere from 12 to 2 Eastern Standard Time is when you can expect the stream to be. Uh, if I'm late, it's usually only by an hour or two. So, yeah. Uh, but around that time. Uh, Matthew said... <laughs> Mighty Harlan Slayer of Mechanomes and Adorer of Coffee. Your stream has been uh, out most adequate and enjoyable. Now behold my gratitude. Awesome. Uh, it puts your hands where you would type from. You saw it on the Dungeon Coach. Interesting. Yeah, I've never uh, thought of that before, but that's, I guess, an, an interesting approach for Key of Bindings. Um, but anyways, that's it. Thank you all for coming to the stream. Big stream turnout today, so I'm happy with that. A lot of people apparently really wanted to see Fury Warrior, so I'm glad I did it. Uh, but yeah, doing another stream tomorrow. Hope to see you all there. Peace.